It is time for another one. Welcome, guys, to another episode of Wrong Side Simulations. Bringing the best content from the wrong side of the airplane in the right seat. And as always, my name is Blake, and I am a real world flight dispatcher aiming to bring you a little more context to your flight sim viewing experience. Today is going to be an interesting one. <clears throat> We're going to talk about some things that don't really apply to flight simming as a whole because this is more of a real life uh, kind of a topic. Um, we're going to jump into it. Jeff Cabana is going to know a lot about this and about how irritating that some of the stuff we're going to talk about can be. Um, but we're going to cover tunneling as an ATC constraint because it is actually going on right now. And it will apply to uh, this flight in real life. So we're going to do it how they would do it in real life and how I would plan this flight in real life. Also, haven't planned a whole lot of uh, tunneling flights because usually tunneling is over by the time I get to work. Another reason why I like my shift. But uh, nonetheless, we're going to jump into this one. <clears throat> but before we do, we got to do our due diligence and say hey to everybody in the chat. <laughs> so Avgeek, hope you enjoy your, uh, your meeting, dude. It seems like you're always in meetings. But enjoy that nonetheless. Doesn't sound like the funnest time in the world. Cabana, <laughs> looks like it's just you and me <laughs> with a nice smiley face. <laughs> False. Hey, Billy, what's up, man? Hope, uh, I don't know if you saw the uh, thumbnail that I just made for this, but tell me what you think about the thumbnail, because I think it turned out pretty good. I did a little border stuff that we were talking about yesterday. Uh, I stand corrected. <laughs> Let's go to the Cinnabon. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude, I love Cinnabon. Dustin, buddy, what's going on? Hey, hey, Blake, like we can't stay long, we'll definitely watch the replay. Sounds like a plan. It'll be some uh, a lot of good information. Um, for this leg, it's going to be primarily ATC constraints. And then looking ahead into the future at the current weather uh, map, when our next leg is going to be Lauderdale to New Orleans, it's going to be a lot of weather to uh, contend with on that one. So uh, <laughs> 1,000 all the way. <laughs> Pretty much. <clears throat> hey, at least it's the East Coast, though, right? Like, thousand feet might clear all the ter or all the uh, all the terrain. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> let's uh, let's turn this music down and we'll jump straight into it. Alrighty. Get a couple windows open. So I've got everything kind of pre-filled out. This is how we would typically see it in dispatch. We would have our call sign and flight number already, our city pair, um, what alternate the software thinks it wants to use, um, a ETD, we've got the aircraft in there, and then everything else is kind of variables that us as dispatchers would change. So <clears throat> there's going to be a few different things we need to look at, though. Um, when planning a flight, other than just weather and just looking at your weather radar map and kind of figuring out what the weather's looking like en route and with the tops and turbulence and all that stuff, there's there's a big constraint that dispatchers deal with on a daily basis, and that that constraint is air traffic control. Um, sometimes it's traffic volume, sometimes it's low staffing, sometimes it's weather in a particular center, and um, they're having to reroute aircraft around it so they're publishing reroutes. There's, there's several different things that ATC can do that would apply as a constraint and these are all um, factors that dispatchers have to take in consideration when planning a flight. <clears throat> so, uh, to start with, <clears throat> we'll just kind of go through the first part of the planning. We'll get kind of like an outline of what we want to do for the flight plan and then uh, from there uh, we'll start looking at the constraints. So let's get rid of my ugly face so y'all can see everything on here. And so to start with, uh, we're doing Charlotte to Fort Lauderdale as our uh, our first leg. It wants to use Fort Myers as an alternate, um, being that it's uh, summertime and there's a lot of thunderstorms down in Lauderdale this time of year, likely to keep that. Um, let's see, then we got our ETD of 1530 Zulu, which is uh, Time is it now? 1509. So yeah, that's not going to happen. Uh, so we're going to lay this out to probably, we'll just do 16. Cool. So we're already delayed. We'll just blame it on ATZ. Alright, so next we got an aircraft in there. Sweet. Say uh, 320. Da da da. 
don't care. Um, other than that, <clears throat> now we got our CI. We're going to leave that in auto for now. The rest of this we're not going to change. And now we've got our uh, departure runway. So we're just going to check the ATIS real quick. So we're going to find Charlotte. Charlotte is departing. Simultaneous departures in use. Expect runways 3, 6 center and 3, 6 right. Um, so <clears throat> just from knowing Charlotte, uh, 3, 6 center would give us a much shorter taxi. Although 3, 6 right, if there's a lot of departures, could probably be the more probable runway for departure that ATC would assign just because it's on the east side of the airport and we're going to be making an east turn um, on our climb out. So if we were all on 36 center and we had to make an eastern turn and we had other aircraft departing on 36 right, we would be cutting across um, their flight path. So I could see how ATC would possibly put us on 36 right, but um, Charlotte's probably not going to be that big of a deal. And as far as flight sim goes, doesn't look like there's going to be a whole lot of departures. See live traffic, arrivals. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eh, seven departures. Cool. So we're going to just keep uh, 36 center. It'll be a shorter taxi for us. Straight out, we can get all of our checks done and flows done and all that without having to worry about steering around a lot. Now, coming in uh, to Lauderdale. Let's check the Lauderdale ATIS. And most of the time, Lauderdale's landing on the 10s. Um, if uh, you're flying Spirit, Spirit typically would prefer to land on 10 right just because it's much closer to the gates. Now, if you're worried about weight or whatever, then maybe go 10 left. Um, but for today, they are currently arrivals expect ILS approach 10 left, GPS approach runway 10 right. So. Uh, we'll can go. We'll go uh, ten right. Yes. Uh, there is an ILS for ten right. I'm wondering if it's uh, notumed out. Pappy is out. Don't really care about the rest. Cool. All right. So now we've got departure runway, arrival runway, taxi out fuel. Uh, we're just going to leave that at twenty. It's roughly five hundred pounds. Um, for Charlotte, it would probably be a little bit less in real life. Probably like 400 pounds or so. <clears throat> and that is based off of a single engine taxi um, quantity. Now, per my company's uh, fuel policy, we always have 10 minutes of extra fuel below the line unless it's a tanker flight. So we're going to leave that 10 minutes in there. Altitude, we'll let this uh, select it, and then we'll go from there. 153 passengers, 6.1 on the bags. Zero fuel weight's gonna be an auto, and then got my name, El Capitan, and then just whatever pilot ID is in there. Um, so now, before we go change the contingency fuel and all that kind of stuff, we've already got our 45 minute reserves in there. Uh, we're just gonna calculate and let it do its thing, and uh, see what it puts us at. Alrighty, so it's got us at flight level 340, departing at 1600, hour and a half en route, total block fuel of 18.5, we've got our 10 minutes of extra fuel, um, let's see what that would put us landing at, remaining fuel of 8.9 roughly, which is fine, per uh, our company op specs where I work. If it's a 320 classic, minimum fuel we want to land with is 5.5 for planning purposes. And we're well over that, so not concerned there. So now let's just kind of go through the weather and ATC and all that kind of stuff and see what we find. So first thing, <clears throat> it's pretty apparent, is looks like there's a fair amount of turbulence uh, in route. Most of it being light. A couple moderate power ups, but that stuff will be to the west of us. We'll be coming straight down. The uh, east coast of Florida. I'm not seeing really a whole lot. I'm not really sure what these are. Oh, cloud cover. Nah, don't care about those. Hmm. You know they put cloud. So we don't, with our uh, our software that we use, we don't get all these 
weird little power-ups about cloud cover and stuff. Usually it's just icing and turbulence. Uh, yeah, so we're going to be to the east of most of this stuff. So we're not really worried about the turbulence for the most part. Might carry a little bit just in case. Weather doesn't look like it's much of a factor as of right now, although this stuff I'm sure is probably going to blow inland or develop inland with sea breeze effect throughout the uh, afternoon. Sea breeze effect, if you're not uh, if you're not familiar with that, it's basically you got winds blowing in off the Gulf and the Atlantic at the same time. Those two um, air masses collide in the, in the center of Florida, and weather kind of blows up. A lot of times it makes a pretty, uh, like a nice linear line of weather like scattered thunderstorms usually it's not solid it's just gonna be like scattered thunderstorms but you can when you're looking at the map you can definitely tell it's like pretty straight and that's from the uh that's what you call sea breeze effect pretty common this time of year in florida can be a pain in the ass to deal with so continuing on uh this is what's called the uh, current ops plan for atc now this is real this is live um but this is currently what either they're planning or what is active as far as ATC constraints. So for this flight, we're going to primarily focus on en route active. It's going to be this portion here. Um, so the first part that I like, my eyes are catching, is uh, Jack's capping tunneling. So see, it's currently 1516, right? And this uh, is well, this says it's active until 15. Um, so we're going to, for today though, we're going to pretend like this is going to drag out longer and we're going to have to abide by Jacksonville capping tunneling procedures. Uh, so basically what's going on is Jack Center is a little low staff today. Um, so to kind of spread out the workload amongst all the controllers, they do this capping slash tunneling um, procedure where basically you have to fly low. And when I say low, we're talking like 18, 20,000 feet kind of low uh, to spread out the traffic volume amongst other controllers that are at lower, um, that are controlling airspace at lower altitudes. That way, the guys for higher altitudes um, aren't getting uh, too saturated. So this will apply to us. Continuing on, Miami to Atlanta. Obviously, we're not flying that. We're not coming down to Chicago or anything. Ohio Valley to Florida. This potentially could maybe be us considering whatever ATC thinks that Ohio Valley is because they put Atlanta in the Ohio Valley, and Atlanta is definitely not in the Ohio Valley. So just from knowing that, we'll definitely go check. Uh, and then the rest of these are much later. They also have an en route planned. Um, so as a dispatcher, this is this whole report we're looking at when we first jump on shift, and every time a new one comes out, we're looking at it because it's going to tell us what to expect. Uh, throughout the rest of our shift and how to plan flights. Um, so en route uh, planned, Florida swap possible, Chicago Midway CDR swaps, arrivals possible, so basically just reroutes. Uh, Denver arrival routes possible, so they might do some swaps there. Uh, same with Minneapolis, this is kind of a big one. Atlantic routes and oceanic route closures possible, so likely there's some weather out over the Atlantic today causing some issues. <coughs> Aircraft can't deviate around weather as much when they're out here. Um, and especially when they're on deep waters, when they're on HF radio, they can't hear as well. So it's much harder for them to deviate around weather. So nonetheless, whenever uh, they close the AR routes and the deep oceanic routes, uh, we'll be routing all of our aircraft basically inland or close to it. Like this is, you know, we would consider this inland, even though it's skirting the coast. And then we also got Q100, Q102. And Gulf routes, which this will be applicable to our next flight, which is going to be Lauderdale to New Orleans. There's a lot of weather out here right now, so they're closing these routes. Uh, so typically that would mean that we're going to be routing inland, but we'll get to that when we get to it. So now we know that we're going to have to deal with the jacks capping and tunneling procedures. Continuing on, this is the uh, ATC OIS page. This will inform... Uh, dispatchers and anybody else at an airline about uh, flow control programs or um, ground stops etc nothing going on right now other than Chicago's got 15 minute departure delays and growing the plus sign means it's growing 
Uh, so if I was a dispatcher and I was planning on flight out of Chicago, probably going to tack on a little bit of extra taxi fuel just because they're experiencing departure delays. Now, current reroutes. <clears throat> so right now, Charlotte CDR swaps are, uh, are in effect, which basically just means some uh, reroutes coming out of Charlotte because uh, of something going on in Atlanta. Either it's going to be weather or staffing or whatever. So uh, if we are coming out of Charlotte, we could plan for a potential um, reroute due to whatever constraints going on. Uh, northeast of Florida, we're not coming from the northeast, so we don't care. Ohio Valley, this one we want to take a look at real quick, so we'll hit show advisory. And we want to make sure that if we're coming from any of uh, either the airports or centers that are listed in here, <clears throat> that we're going to be putting them on whatever route. So if we were going Atlanta to Fort Lauderdale, uh, we'd figure out which of these two are applicable to us and then connect it to whichever t these two portions. So it's basically it's like two halves and you kind of connect them and gives you the reroute. But I uh, don't believe that we are caught in this, um, in this advisory. So let's see, Atlanta, Cleveland, Detroit. Nope. We're not captured in this, so we don't have to worry about uh, any like filing this published reroute. Chicago again, don't care. Miami Center to Atlanta, don't care. It's not us. So, <clears throat> coming back over to our sim brief, let's go to edit flight. And now we're going to account for the tunneling. So, we want to file around um, 18, 20,000 feet or so. We're going to do 20,000 feet. Uh, the, the downside to this, other than just flying low, we're going to be carrying a lot, of, lot more gas, burning a lot more gas. It's expensive for the airline to fly flights this low because of the fuel burns. But the other thing we have to take, take into consideration as well is the en route weather. As of right now, it's not too bad. There's not really anything in our way, but all, obviously this stuff is likely moving I don't know if there's a if we can loop this stuff but um likely this stuff is moving to the east mm. let's see from 240 at 10 yeah so it's moving to the east mostly east tops above flight level 450 so for us being low, that's even more weather that we're not going to be able to get above, and that can cause problems for us. So we're going to tack on quite a bit of extra gas in the event we need to uh, deviate around any weather. So we're found it, or we got ourselves planned at 20,000 feet. Now we're going to add some extra gas. Uh, see for the weather, let's just call it. So for down low. We probably won't start seeing weather to start getting close to Florida. Let's just call it 20 minutes for now. And then I want to look at the arrival rate into Lauderdale. Also, again, this is live. This is uh, not going to be based off of flight sim. Although one thing that I will do is I'll go to Volanta and click on the airport and look at the arrivals and just see how many arrivals are, are planned to come in, which as of right now is six. Not too worried about that. Um, but if we were leaving at 16Z with an hour and a half, that puts us into Lauderdale around 1530 Zulu. Uh, arrival rate looks pretty low. So don't have to worry about that. They can take seven, and in that 15-minute block of time, they've got four landing. It's also low 15 minutes before and 15 minutes after. Obviously, right now, this is kind of an issue. <laughs> They're uh, almost double. The arrival rate they can take. So uh, we got our 20 minutes for the weather. We're filed low. Arrival rate is good. Ride should be good based off what we were just seeing. I think I'm good with this. We've got Fort Myers as our precautionary alternate. Just looking at the weather real quick. Um, at our ETA, winds are 170 at 8, greater than 6. A few at 3,000 feet, scattered at 5,000 feet. No big deal there. Later on, 18Z, which is going to be uh, uh, quite a ways after we get there. They're forecasting uh, vicinity thunderstorms. 
So we're not too concerned about that as of yet. And let's just check uh, Charlotte's real quick. Charlotte's good. All right, so I think we're actually going to get rid of the alternate plus the weather, and the alternate's not the best. Winds are 210, 15, gusting 25, 3 miles, rain showers. Then uh, around the time we'd be getting there, vicinity thunderstorms. So let's drop the alternate, and we'll generate. And again, to determine your alternate, you're going to be taking a look at an hour before, hour after your ETA, looking for... Uh, Ceilings that are below 2,000 feet, invisibility less than 3,000, or 3 miles, rather. <laughs> Charlotte CDRs better add some fuel. So, Jeff, would you would you go with uh, 30 minutes? Is 30 minutes okay with you being at 20,000 feet, 10 minutes below, 20 minutes above the line? What you thinking? In fact, there's, now that I think of it, there's one thing I'm going to change. We are going to increase the taxi fuel. So in if there's reroutes going out from Charlotte, likely we would not get the reroute until we push. And then we're going to be having to park off to the side somewhere, get the reroute, contact dispatch, let them know about it, get our new numbers and all that stuff. That takes a little bit of time. So we'll go 25 on the taxi. Whatever we don't use on the taxi will automatically be fed into uh, what we can use once airborne, which is always a good thing. So, Cabana, you you let me know. As a fellow dispatcher, would you uh, would you go with this? And while waiting on you, let's catch back up real quick in the chat. Chase, good morning, everyone. Just woke up. How are y'all? Chase, good morning, my friend. For whatever's left of the morning, I guess you're in uh, Chicago, so you got a little bit longer morning left than uh, than I do. Sasha, how's it going? Welcome aboard. Welcome to the Wrong Side Simulations channel. Happy to see you. Just going over some uh, flight planning stuff here. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Jacks or <are> Hollywood? <laughs> Not doing Hollywood. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Um, look at all those mountains. Oh, thank you, Hillbilly. I'm glad you like it. I thought it turned out pretty good. Pretend that Jack's AFP is in effect. Give yourself a three-hour wheels up time. <laughs> if that was the case, we'd be sitting. We would be sitting here for three hours without ever doing anything. Probably just, I don't know, I'd go take a nap. <laughs> uh, let's see. Let me look at the Lauderdale Taft. What's the ETA? So ETA, if we're out of here at 16, we'll be on the ground 1730. So I guess it's about 30 minutes before the thunderstorms are forecast to, to start. So yeah, we're going to put an alternate. But this is the problem of flying into Florida during the day is there's probably not going to be anywhere, not any alternate in the state of Florida that's going to be great. So yeah, I was kind of thinking the same. Um, all right, so here's the plan. We're going to use... We're going to use Fort Myers. Fort Myers weather is not great. But with the extra fuel that we have planned, if we need to change the alternate to Orlando or Tampa or something of that nature, then we will have the fuel range to do so. All right, so we're going to generate. And this should be our final product and be ready to rock and roll. So. Looking at the OFP. Starting with our fuel. Total gate fuel of uh, 21.5 gives us 635 pounds for taxi. We have our 10 minutes of extra fuel below the line. The line being the men takeoff fuel, which is 19.7. Then we've got our Fort Myers alternate burn of uh, 2.6 20 minutes of dispatch add which is 2.3 a reserve fuel 3.8 and all that plus our trip fuel gives us our total of 19.7 
and we are planned to land in Lauderdale with uh, 9.9 .9 on board. So that's good. Looking at the ATC strip, departing at 16Z, we are flying at 20,000 feet. Now here's the thing, and a lot of dispatchers, when, when the whole jack center topping capping thing came out, the first thing that dispatchers were trying to do was say if we were doing something a bit longer like Baltimore or somewhere in New York coming down to Lauderdale or Miami a lot of guys were trying to climb the airplane up to like 34 36,000 feet and then as they get close to Jack Center doing a step descent down to 18 or 20,000 feet to get below it the problem is there's, there's a few different problems with this ATC only sees this first altitude if we put step climbs step descents it does go into the strip and you'll see it in the route but ATC only sees the initial altitude so that's the first problem so if we have them filed at 36,000 feet on the initial climb with the plan of them step step descending later on then automatically that's going to capture um, the flight into in the airspace flow program um, so an airspace flow program is basically I don't know, it's kind of hard to explain so you got Jack Center right here the airspace flow program will show us on a map as like a line going across the map and if your route goes through the line then you're captured in an airspace flow program and you take a pretty hefty delay problem is a lot of times that line might be across the entire center so there's not a real good way to just like go around it. Plus there's military activity out here and out here. So you can't just like route off the coast. You can't just do willy nilly stuff to get around the airspace flow program. So it leaves you with either going low and going under it, or you have to come like all the way out to New Orleans across the Gulf to try to get around it or do some deep um, oceanic routing stuff, which still is going to make you incur a pretty hefty delay. Might be better than the airspace flow program delay <clears throat> so it might be an option but nonetheless it's not easy to do so the best thing is just to fly low but if you're starting off at 36,000 feet and with plans to go below well since ATC only sees the um, they only see that first altitude then boom they think you're going through the airspace flow program therefore you are captured in the airspace flow program and you take a big ass delay so you can't do a step you can't climb up and then do a step descent and try to get under it you have to fly the entire thing at low altitude which kind of sucks but and yes it will you'll fly a bit longer than uh, than if you're flying higher so earlier when we ran it at 34,000 feet it had our um, our total time our en route time at like an uh, hour and 33 minutes Going down to 20,000 feet, we're at an hour 35, so it literally only added two minutes. Not a big deal. We can also counteract that with uh, planning a higher CI. This one's got us at CI 56. Um, if we wanted to, we could go faster, although burning more gas. Uh, so we have to plan more gas and be heavier. Um, but nonetheless, we could knock those two minutes off if we wanted to with CI 99. But uh, anyways, so... 20,000 feet, we got our route, hour 35 minutes en route, got our alternate of uh, Fort Myers. Everything else looks good, so I think we're uh, we're about ready to go fly. What y'all think? Bring this back up here. Get this out the way. Cool, cool, cool. <clears throat> Channel revamp looks great. Thanks, Chase. Uh, good morning, Captain Mitchell. How's it going? Welcome aboard. Happy to see you. Nash, welcome, welcome. Thank y'all for coming to hang out with me today. Hope y'all are enjoying this uh, kind of in-depth look at uh, different constraints that we look at as, as flight dispatchers in, in the real world. This stuff does apply a little bit more to uh, real world than probably in the sim world. Um, but if you're trying to be ultra, ultra, ultra realistic, you could definitely... Um, you know, go look at these uh, these sources. I did put these sources in the uh, in the description below, so you're more than welcome to go take a look at those and save them. And if you want to uh, 
use this stuff to learn and to plan your flights in a ultra realistic kind of way in flight sim then uh, you can do that now if you're flying on bat sim ATC might ask you like yo um, why are you filed at 20,000 feet on an hour and a half long flight and then you can sound like a badass and tell them like well currently ATC is doing this and this and this therefore this is how I have to plan the flight but in real life ATC would already know so who's ready to go flying and as always here on the wrong side channel we start in the cabin in a cold and dark airplane and we walk ourselves to the cockpit just because we can and it looks cool <laughs> Alrighty, let's get this thing warmed up. Nope, that gummit. I did that last time. So freaking irritating. I think I get jumpy on the uh, on the old scroll wheel. While I'm streaming. For anybody else who flies Phoenix, does y'all do this? I have mine set, and it always goes back to the wrong. That's what we want to see. Alright. <clears throat> Let's get the get this thing boarding up I'm gonna do real time File this flight plan real quick. Cool. <coughs> All right. So we've got a, uh, our nav database is current, let's go over to init, and we're going to initialize there while waiting on that, ATSU, AOC menu, flight init, init there, we are NKS, uh, I believe it was 981, 681. Cost index 56, cruising altitude 20,000 feet, and in fact, let's uh, let's do this so y'all can see it. There we go. 20,000 feet. Temperature is minus nine up there. Flight plan. Here's our route. Charlotte departure. Off uh, three six center on the icons four nooks transition 
Insert. Uh, let's see. Continuing on. Lauderdale. Arrival. Isla's 10 right. Cuda 2. And Primus. Transition. Insert that. Let's take a look at this. Sid real quick. So this uh, the Sid is kind of an area departure to to an extent, basically departing on a heading and then Arnav into Gilfin. So we want to leave this discontinuity. Keep on going through. Check for any other discons. We're on the Cuda two now. And then the transition off of the star onto the approach. So we'll leave that. Secondary flight plan. We'll copy the active. And we'll throw in a hold at Gilfin if it lets us. Nope. Didn't think it would. Alright, so we'll do that. Hold at icons. Under red nav, uh, I don't know if Charlotte's got a. Boom, there we go. Throw that into there. In it, let's do our wind, and then we'll do our triple pause. Tropo is 52,800 feet, and again, that should uh, that should be a five-digit, not three-digit deal. I'll just throw in some other two random numbers. And then we'll go uh, to init, tab over, got our zero fuel weight and zero fuel weight CG. So we're just going to look at our OFP. There is a function in the, um, here in the Phoenix, you can't see it on the other side, but it gives you a preliminary load sheet. We don't really care uh, about that. We're going to use the OFP. So our plan zero fuel weight is 134 point, uh, actually it's going to be 135.0. Put in a standard CG of 30, just as a placeholder. And then our block fuel is going to be 20, 21.5. All right, taxi fuel now is a little bit different than what we used to do. Usually it's 500 pounds. Taxi today is <coughs> 600 pounds. Route reserve. We'll zero that out. That's more of a flag fuel policy function in the McDo. Alternate fuel is 2.6. And then our reserve fuel is uh, 3.8. Cool. Flight directors are on, get the constraints on, VORs. Well, let's see. Our transition today again is Nooks. And our top altitude is going to be 8,000 feet. And currently the altimeter is 3002. Before we move on, I want to see if we can find our alternate routing on the OFP. I haven't seen it before, so I want to see if it's if it's somewhere on here. Now it just gives us direct, but yet when we're planning it, it gives us a route.
So here's what we're going to do. Alternate. And we're going to grab this alternate route. Typically in the OFP you would have what's called an alternate summary. It gives you uh, all the details. Uh, it's like your routing, your altitude, the burn, the distance. Um, all the stuff you would need to know. Because again, if you're going to your alternate you're still having to you're having to put it into the airplane. I mean, if you're really close, then ATC could vector you, but nonetheless, it's probably better to just go have it go ahead and have it set up in the McDo. Um, so we're going to throw this to there. just weird that it like it even puts altitude auto here and tell it 13,000 generates might change the feel a little bit but it's not a big deal cool so now we should have remarks in here with the the routing for whenever we need it, which is right there. But yeah, at at work we've got we got a little bit more information on our OFP. Um, we got a function too, like for just for A cars for alternate stuff. We can send it'll show like the altitude and, and a few different things, even just like in the fuel breakdown. Cool. So now we're just uh, waiting for the passengers to get on the airplane. And then we'll be pretty much ready to finish up everything else there. Let me get some preliminary takeoff data as well. Charlotte off runway 36 center. Dry. Flaps optimum. Not toga. Any ice will be off. Packs will be on. And our planned takeoff weight is 155.8. And then put in like a 29.3. It's always just a little bit less than the 08 CG. See what that gives us. Sweet. So we're going to throw in these altitudes because those won't change. And we are connected to VATSIM. Radio is set. Cool. <clears throat> Back to the chats. That most of the SIGMETs are on the West Coast could probably get away with Miami to swap. Yeah, I agree with that, Jeff. Cat Mitchell, oh man, the classic spirit livery. Yes, sir. I figured I'd try to, to switch it up a bit because uh, I think the last two streams were um, both yellow banana. So uh, we're gonna do some Skittles. You know, we, we've had our we've had our fruit now, so let's get our Skittles. Look at the weather out there. Charlotte probably going to be red ramp and five. Really? And of course, what are you talking about? I don't, I don't see nothing on there. I'm 
We'll open up the handy dandy radar Omega app. This is um, Jeff, you must be talking about just looking outside in the sim and not in real life because there ain't nothing on radar in real life. Ain't a nada. Man, this is my go-to. The Melbourne radar station is my go-to, but apparently it's old. It's out of date. Now this is live. Let's see how this stuff is tracking. Yep. Blown to the east just like I thought it was. Then the segment said it was. Just some scattered isolated showers. Gets a little bit worse off the on the west side. Not a biggie. Let's see what the tops are. Charlie, traffic American 1180 crossing runway 23. On golf for Charlie. It's a nice little sail down here south of Orlando. Tops at 44,000 feet. High 30s on these. So essentially, blue is good. Green starting to get kind of high. And then yellow is real high. 38. And then the orange is the... Get nasty. 45,000 on that one. we just got some clouds in the area. But again, we are going to be flying low on this one, thanks to uh, the Jacksonville ATC capping and uh, tunneling procedures that are in effect. Flying at 20,000 feet around some weather. Be a good time. And you know, like a real life pilot, you got to get all your text messages sorted out before uh, putting your phone in airplane mode. And here, Bill, if you're still watching, dude, I appreciate all the work you've been doing in, in the Discord, getting it all set up, doing all that smart people shit that I have not a clue how to do. So, uh, buddy of mine, if, if y'all watched the um, the episode with Solid traffic, American before I was so rudely interrupted, um, yeah, if uh, if y'all watched the episode with um, me and Blue and XP and all, um, I referenced a buddy of mine who's a FedEx captain and uh, sent him the link, told him I shouted him out on there, and. Uh, he said that uh, his favorite part was the joke about the difference between the burrito and the dispatcher. And if y'all weren't there, what is the difference between a burrito and a dispatcher? Ten points for you if you can tell me in the chat. Overtime. Um, also, while we're waiting on that, just some uh, cool info for y'all. Tomorrow, I'm heading over to Jetline Systems, uh, which is a 
boutique computer company. Charlotte traffic American 1180 is lining up to take off from a 36 right to Bali for departure. Um, those guys built my computer. Um, awesome, awesome group of guys. If you're if you've been around the channel for a while, you've heard me talk about them before. Um, but yeah, they're a boutique flight sim computer company. They build flight sim computers. They also do a lot of um, like full motion sims and fixed base trainers and stuff like that for universities and flight schools. Um, but they uh, recently got a new partnership with a uh, flight sim space sim hardware company. Um, I'm not sure how much of this I can say yet. Um, so I'm just kind of leaving it a little vague, but tomorrow going out there and they've got, uh, some, some new, really nice, cool setups. Uh, so I'm gonna go out there and, uh, take some pictures and some videos and we'll, uh, show it on the channel. Uh, once I get it all put together, uh, they got some really cool stuff. Uh, especially if you're a DCS simmer, there's a lot of, of really neat things. Um, <laughs> well, Wes, I know that, uh. I know that you uh, watched the uh, the blue experience. <laughs> so Wes gets Tim's points. He is correct. The difference between a burrito and a dispatcher is the burrito will give you gas and a dispatcher won't. <laughs> the gaming channel, how's it going, buddy? Welcome aboard. Thank you so much for coming to stop by and hang out with us. We greatly appreciate it. Just waiting on the boarding process to finish, and we're going to rock it out of here at a solid low 20,000 feet. But, uh, but yeah, so I'm going to go over to, uh, to Jetline tomorrow and uh, take some pictures and some videos of all their new stuff and uh, show it off to y'all. So if y'all uh, like Flight Sim hardware, if you're in need of some night, some new Flight Sim hardware, then it uh, might be something y'all would be interested in. All right, how much longer are we looking on these passengers? Oh yeah, we're about close. Here we go. Let's mark it on that from a three six right. That APU started up. <laughs> then we'll do our engine one fire test. If you become available, we'll run the three minute warm up. So takeoff weight is uh, 2 so don't need that no more. Leaving that uh, preconditioned air plugged in until we get the bleed on so our passengers don't get hot. Alrighty, so Departure brief, it's going to be a right seat takeoff, it's a 320 for tail strike avoidance, there's no MELs or CDLs that affect the performance of the aircraft, it's going to be a single engine taxi out, our taxi route will likely be... Click the right button, there we go. 
so we'll just come straight out over to Echo. It'll be Echo all the way. Uh, we'll have one hot spot at uh, Echo and Sierra. And then from there, we're going to cross runway 5. Uh, as of now, weather's no factor. Train's no factors. And uh, if we have to abort the takeoff, it'll be my decision to abort. Uh, we'll come to a quick stop, set the parking brake, call the flight since their stations, call for any income actions or the emergency evacuation checklist as required. Engine out procedure is going to be a hold at icons. We'll speed up, clean up. Engine out is at 1700 even. Um, as of now, based on our planned takeoff weight, we'll be over max landing weight if we need to come back. If we come back, it'll be runway uh, 36 right. If all goes as planned, we're going to fly the Icons for departure. Top altitude is 8,000 feet. We're squawking 2,000 uncontrolled airspace as of now. Departure brief is complete. <clears throat> we're ready to go when you are. All right, sounds like they are ready to go. Let's get this thing buttoned up. All right, so actual zero fuel weight's 135.0, which was what is planned, and then our zero fuel weight CG, 30. Look at that. Don't even have to make a change. So wheat. So CG is 28.8. It gives us the same. So 155.8. 135.0 plan. Cool. We'll accept that. Perf. Recalculate. Just make sure everything is still good. Flaps 1, down 0 0.1, 54. And then it'll be speeds 41, 46, 46. All right, we're ready. Let's get that beacon light on. Lead on. Before start checklist, maintenance log tails, onboard check, copper pets complete, gear pins, covers are moon, signs are on, auto, eight ears are in nav. Fuel, min required is 19.6. We've got 21.5 on board. Altimeters, 3002 set, EFPs check, windows or slides closing on, beacons on, throw servers are in idle, parking brake is on, transponder is in auto. Before start checklist is complete. Wow, totally forgot to. Damn, I didn't lose points for that. Oh well. Not important to the stream. Alrighty. It's going to get. Brakes released and we're pushing back. Charlotte traffic. Spirit wing 681. Pushing back. Alpha 29. Charlotte. Rolling one.
Short traffic, American 150, left base, 36 center. Secure the mask with the elastic strap, although oxygen will be flowing the plastic bag we not appear too late. A crew member will inform you when it's safe to remove your mask and be sure to secure your own mask before you leave others. A life vest and 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 a life vest Focus on. AP stays on for the second engine start. At start, check the list. Engine NIS is off. The other is on. Red trim zero. At start checklist is complete. <coughs> Charlotte traffic uh, spirit wings 681. Tax room at 36 center via Echo. Echo one. Truck traffic, American 1150 turning final, 36 center. Once we get off the ground, we'll jump back into the uh, to the chat. Clear left, clear your right. Fire up number two. Yellow electric pump comes off and starting number two. Let's uh, turn that on. Eggs, toast, and bacon. How much uh, dispatch ad are we going with today? Today we're doing um, 20 minutes of dispatch ad, so that's above the line. And then our 10 minutes of fuel policy fuel that is below the line. Uh, plus we're also going to carry Fort Myers. So I'm um, not sure if you were here, but ATC is running uh, what's called the Jack Center uh, capping and tunneling procedures. Uh, so Jack Center is kind of low on staffing, therefore they kind of distribute traffic to lower altitudes to kind of spread out the workload. Uh, therefore, we're having to fly this whole route at 20,000 feet. Um, since ATC can only see what the initial altitude is, we can't really plan. Like, we can't start at 36 and come down lower once we get to Jack Center. We have to fly the whole thing. And this is a real-life uh, pain in the ass. <laughs> so we're flying at uh, 20,000 feet. 20 minutes of uh, dispatch ad for any uh, little isolator scattered shells that we encounter on the way. And uh, then we've got Fort Myers in the event of any uh, vicinity thunderstorms. Um, Charlie Traffic, American 1150s on short final, runway uh, 367. And um, yeah, and so in the event that we don't burn all of our 20 minutes of dispatch ad and we need to change our alternate. Um, we can definitely do that. We'll have the range for Orlando or Tampa or something of that nature. <clears throat> cool. So after start flow, boom, boom, boom. We start or reset our trim. Issues lately with FS Realistic not starting 
FS realistic connected. Charlotte Traffic Spirit Wing 681 crossing runway 235 and Echo. Charlotte. And then once we get past this, we're going to do our mini brief, flight controls check, before takeoff flow, before takeoff checklist, and we'll be out of here. <clears throat> This dude's landing. A little bit of a bounce. Trial track spirit wing 681 is clear, room a 5 at Echo. Alrighty, mini brief. Departing off runway 36 center, gross weight 156.4. <coughs> Fuel on board 21.3, flaps config 1 plus F. V1 141, V2 is 146. We are flexing 54. Top altitude is 8,000 feet, and our first fix is Gilfin. Flight controls check. Full up. Full down. Neutral. Full left. Full right. Neutral, rudder, full left, full right, neutral. Flight controls checks complete. Alrighty. Before takeoff checklist, gross weight comparison complete pitch trim is 28.8% uh, CG set V1 VRP2 flex is 141, 146, 146, flex 54, uh, flaps, config 1 plus F. Uh, see, flight controls check, or flight instruments check, flight controls check, ECM memo takeoff all green, ECM status check, predict the winters on auto, TCAS, cotet, TRK. Can't talk. I'm trying to go fast because I'm running out of time. <laughs> Cabin crews advised. Um, and mini brief is complete. We'll take a checklist to the lines completes. See, that's why I need I need two pilots. We, man, if we can get shared cockpit in this airplane, oh my god, what a day we will have. All right, hold short here. Finish up our checklist. All right, <clears throat> before takeoff checklist, blow the line. Takeoff runway is confirmed. Fuel. Min required is 19.6, and we've got uh, 21.3 on board. Engine mode, selectors, normal bleed packs are set. Before takeoff checklist, below the line is complete. Is this dude off the runway yet? He didn't call it. I wonder if he disconnected. Did he go around? I think he went around. Hey, uh, Americans and Spirit Wings, did you go around? Yeah, we're uh, making a pattern now. Roger that. I was looking down the runway, didn't see it, then I looked ahead and I saw lights. <laughs> All right, we're going to depart off runway 36 Center and get out of your way. Yep, you got time. Charlie Traffic, Spirit Wings, 681, departing off runway 36 Center, exiting the airspace to the south. Charlotte. Here we go. Got our three minute engine warm up. Sip of coffee.
Man Flex SRS runway author is blue. Spirit Wing 681 is clear, runway 36 center, X in the airspace of the south, Charlotte. Alright, positive trend on the airspeed. Russ Klein. Speed checks, flaps Charlotte traffic spear wing 681 is clear of the Charlotte airspace. Exit to the south. Everybody have a great day. Alright, now that we're clear, we can go direct Gilfin. Airplane in real life does not have brake fans. Nav and go around, yes. Don't have to do that, no. Man, this stuff is not ever safe. The last time I flew this airplane, I went and saved all this stuff. Never saved. Alright guys, sorry for the uh, ignoring the chat for a hot minute. Let's focus on flying. Alright, let's get that climb going again. Take it up to 19 start. Actually 20 because we're going evens. Thrust climb climb. And 20 blue. Cross check on this side, 20 blue as well. Now, take off checklist, landing gears up, flash retractor, blue pack set, APU is off. Have to take off checklist completes. So, back to the chats. Um, uh, packs. Oh, the gaming channel, cool. Microsoft Flight Sim, sweet. Do you ever, uh, do you ever stream Microsoft Flight Sim? Chase Phoenix is pretty dang good. Dang right it is. 
does the sim ever throw alligators or deer on the runway, etc.? <coughs> no, but that would be like, that would definitely be pretty realistic in Orlando. There's there's been quite a few times that like we've had departure delays because of alligators on a taxiway, and I do think there was a Payware Airport a while back. Um, yeah, I think it's for X Plane. They put alligators in the retention ponds. Um, in fact, just the other day when I flew, I was flying out. I think we went to Memphis, and uh, no, we were going to Punta Cana, and uh, I was in the jump seat, and we were taxiing by a little um, uh, retention pond. And sure enough, saw an alligator swimming around. Um, but no, Wes, that that would be that's actually really cool. Maybe we should pitch that to uh, like get on the forums or like to developers to. Especially if it's like a small little podon airport, like send a send a deer out. Uh, let's see what else we got. <clears throat> Good morning, wrong side. Enjoying your streams. Keep up the awesome work. Thank you, Vincent. I appreciate that. Very very kind of you to say. Greatly greatly appreciate it. And I will definitely do so. No deer, but it'll throw random trucks. <laughs> That's about right. Super accurate. Hang on, let me shut these dogs up. My dogs are barking. My roommate's boyfriend is here to help move stuff out of the house. Hey. Hush. Hush. Dang. Daggum guard dogs. Hush. <laughs> Random trucks. That's funny. <clears throat> Coco, what's up? I haven't seen your name in a little while. Hope all is well. Hope you're doing good. Welcome aboard. <clears throat> Hello from Pakistan. That's a long way away. A real A320 CO pilot. Oh, I'm a big fan of the streams. Never stop. Well, I hope I can. I mean, I'm not a real pilot. I'm just a flight dispatcher. But hopefully, uh, hopefully, uh, I can impress a little bit. <laughs> But, uh, man, that's awesome. Welcome aboard, my friend. Greatly appreciative to have you here with us. <laughs> Good deal's apology. Oh, Robert. Dude, what is up? Yeah, I didn't, uh, I saw, you know, it, it I did, like, kind of recognize when I saw the, uh, the eggs and toast bacon, like, it's like, I know I've seen that before. <laughs> but what is up, dude? Good morning. Are you, uh, probably not working if you're watching this right I would imagine being on the morning shift you'd be way too busy <laughs> yes yeah, so we are definitely doing the tunneling right now climbing on up oh thank you Coco appreciate the nice words Drew what's up man big up good morning welcome aboard Probably going to be a lengthy little stream today. Uh, so our first leg that we're planning right now is we're doing uh, uh, Charlotte down to Lauderdale. Next will be Lauderdale to New Orleans. And maybe after that, New Orleans to Dallas. Our next leg is going to be uh, a little interesting. We've got some, uh, got some thunderstorms en route to contend with. Whether it's going to be flying the inland route or the Gulf route, we'll see. But definitely got some weather to to work our way around on the next one. Um, you know, Wes, I don't know. And it's it's incredibly irritating, in my opinion. Um, I'm not a controller, obviously. I got some coworkers who are controllers. Um, that's probably a good question for me to ask them. But, um, but yeah, it's just, it's very irritating because when we plan step climbs and step descents, it goes into the ATC strip, but I guess they get a different format or something like that. So like they they only see the initial, which is just really, really weird. But um, but yeah, it's and it, when they first came out with this tunneling procedure, what all the other dispatchers did is the same thing I would have done. In fact, I mean, I've done some tunneling before when I was on a morning shift. That was, uh, I mean, it wasn't as prevalent as it is now. I think a lot of this is like post-COVID stuff. Um, but when they would come out with like an airspace flow program, 
often it would have like altitudes in it. I'm like, oh, well, pff, I'll just drop them low before they get to the airspace flow program. And nope. Nope. Never worked. And definitely wouldn't work now. All right, so super odd. But ladies and gentlemen, we have reached our cruising altitude of 20,000 feet. Speed Alt Star. It's been smooth so far. We'll turn the seatbelt sign off. Let these folks move around. I'm going to minimize the tab to play Microsoft Flight Sim so I won't be typing in the chat too much. Okay, no worries, Coco. What uh, what are you flying today? What uh, what leg are you going to do? And what airplane are you flying? About to make lunch in the movie with wife and kids. Sweet. What are y'all gonna watch, Robert? We just went and saw uh, Top Gun again for the second time a couple nights ago. <laughs> I fell asleep too, which was kind of sad. In the very, very beginning part, though. I have to say, very professional taxi and setup. Small thing is that Airbus pilots check 100 knots. Uh, so, Ashmir, for on um, for under my company's op specs. Um, they call out uh, 80 knots thrust set, um, and then they go neutral by 100. I, I do know what you're talking about with the 100 knot deal. Um, I know other U.S. companies do the 100 knots, um, but what the hell was that sound? Oh, I guess that was. Um, I'm using V1 Simulations uh, FS realistic um, profile, and I guess he's got ambient stuff set in there, so. I didn't know what I was hearing. <laughs> um, but yeah, so at my company, uh, they do call 80 knots thrust set. Um, and then they don't do the 100 knot check, but they do go neutral on the stick at 100 knots. Um, so that's just what, what our guys do. All right, I'm going to turn that off because that's I don't want to hear the, the laugh flushing. Nobody hears the laugh flush in real life unless you're like maybe have your ear up to the laugh door. Cabin ambience. Got those off. Yeah, I don't know what this would be. Oh, toilet flush. Yeah, I don't want to hear that. Turn it off. That's dumb. <clears throat> that I have not, biography. I have barely been outside of the United States, sadly. Um, I've got a good friend of mine that's gone just about everywhere in the world. I think right now he's in Bali, uh, one of my fellow uh, dispatch co-workers. Um, but no, I have not. I've been to Punta Cana, and I've been to Canada, and that's about it. <laughs> I've flown through some international places. I've been to like Bogota, Colombia, and a few different places, but nothing that I've actually stayed at. Oh, okay. 7.3 max. Nice. Wes, I have never heard of tunneling until today. It's definitely interesting. Yeah, it's not... It wasn't the most common until, I guess, post-COVID stuff. Um, it was, I guess, maybe a way that... I mean, something we could do every now and then when we had airspace flow programs, but nowadays it's turning into a very common daily thing that... Uh, we're having to plan during on the day shift, day and probably afternoon shift. Um, Robert, the uh, eggs, toast, and bacon in the chat is a fellow coworker of mine, and he uh, works the morning slash day shift, so he could probably speak a little bit more about it than uh, than I could on how often they're having to plan uh, tunneling procedures. But um, but I wanted to, I saw it was in effect, and I was like, you know what, this would be a, a good thing to show y'all. Uh, talk about so figure we'd do it. Mohan, I love your <laughs> Canada. Japan is I'm not sure if I can really understand what you're trying to say, bud. Yeah, Drew, I'm thinking the same thing. <laughs> 
Huh? <laughs> That's about right. About to take off. Bound to Washington. Sweet. Where uh where are you leaving from? Got a few friends flying around, Captain Nate. Bacon. Who else we got flying around? Cruz is he just took off from San Diego to Vegas. Actually, no, he's on probably descending now. So it's always kind of fun to look around Volanta and see your friends and where they're flying, that kind of stuff. <laughs> Guys, if you haven't yet, please like, subscribe, all that good, uh, all that good stuff. Uh, definitely helps out the the channel, and I love getting to meet y'all. And the more people that come, the better. It's nice to just hang out and. It's not about the numbers, it's about the individuals, right? So it's a lot of fun to, to meet new people and talk and talk different uh, aviation experiences and that kind of stuff. And I hope everybody's having a great, great Monday morning, I guess Monday afternoon if you're on the east coast of the U.S. So, I'm probably going to butcher this, but I'm going to try. Um, Hashim? Hashim? Is that how you would say it? But uh, what what uh, what time is it over in uh, Pakistan? It's probably uh, close to... Maybe close to tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow for me. Anyways... Oh, okay. So, if I had to guess, are you, Coco, are you flying as uh, United? It's Houston to Washington. Now, I guess, too, we have to know, are you flying to Washington, Dulles, or are you flying to Washington, D.C.? Okay. 9.30. That's not super far off from tomorrow time. Uh... So Robert says, I'm typically logging out just before Jax goes down the tubes. I haven't experienced tunneling in the last 45 plus days or so. Ah, huh. lucky for you. Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't seem like fun, and that's something I always struggle with too. On the like when I'm getting into the morning part of my shift, is they'll talk about it, you know, being probable in the current ops plan. But I'm like, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to turn these flights over to other dispatchers and leave them kind of stuck with a crappy situation. So like, when do I really need to plan the tunneling? Because it's not active yet. It's possible. Blah blah blah. So it makes me feel better that you're not typically seeing it because then it means the guys I'm turning over to, including you, Robert, uh, are not getting hit with the tunneling when I didn't plan for it. But yeah, Drew, definitely quality, not quantity. That is very very accurate okay cool Coco well hope you have a good flight let's see uh, weather wise looks pretty good all the way don't see not even a single isolated thunderstorm that should be a good flight called Skardu Airport and the runway is between a valley one kilometer apart. Damn! I bet that's a challenge. 
What uh, is it all RNAV approaches going into there? Sounds like that'd be a fun one to shoot. Oh, Coco, I thought you said you were going to Washington. Oh, that Washington. Okay. Got it now. <laughs> All right. Now I'm tracking. Now we're straight. Gotcha. That's going to be a lengthy little flight. So, all right. So now let's look at that way. And again, not a single isolated thunderstorm yet. Now, obviously, weather is dynamic and will build throughout time. But as of now, looks like you ain't got much to much to deal with on your way. By the way, your piece on the blue experience got me hooked on this channel. Awesome. Well, I hope uh, hope you enjoyed that little uh, little piece. That was a lot of fun. Uh, those two hours went by super super fast. And uh, when whenever after we got done doing it, we were already talking about um, possibly doing a uh, a part two in the future. Uh, so that'd be a lot of fun. There's, there's a lot of stuff that like going into it that I was thinking about. I was like, oh, this would be really cool to talk about. A lot of the stuff people don't, probably don't know about. Da, da da da. But then like when we got into it, man, I was, I was super nervous. Um, like in the beginning when I talked about, like I don't know why my heart's pounding. If it's coffee because I'm talking to them. I'm telling you, my heart was pounding. Pretty sure I was sweating pretty good too. But uh, but I think it turned out good, and, and I've made a, made a few contacts thus far, and people reaching out saying that you know they didn't know about the job, and and now they're uh, considering that as a possible career. Um, which, too, for anybody who's been watching my channel, um, you'll often see a name in the chat. We'll say EQ. His name is Jay, and uh, Jay and I met. And I think I talked about this on the um, on the podcast. Um, but Jay and I met through my channel and he used to be a storm chaser. He used to, uh, fuel airplanes in Chicago, that kind of stuff. So he loves weather. He loves airplanes. And through getting to know me, he found out about this job and, uh, we had a nice little long conversation on the phone one day and kind of told him everything like, Hey, if you want to go after this, this is what to expect. Uh, this is what school is like. Um, and you know, here's the process of getting hired at an airline and like what it's like to work at an airline, da da da. So I say all that to say this in less than an hour, Jay will be taking his ADX. The ADX is the dispatch version of a pilot's ATP written, and it is not easy, very hard, incredibly stressful. The training leading up to this is very hard and very stressful. Um, he's had some personal stuff going on that's made it even tougher for him, uh, just some, some distractions. Um, so big time, got my fingers crossed for Jay. Was in less than an hour, thinking, yeah, about 50 minutes he's taking his ADX. And if he passes that, the hardest part of the whole process of becoming a dispatcher is over. After that, he'll just do his um, oral and uh, practical exam with the FAA, which is not too bad. It's just you plan a flight, and then you go into a room with the FAA inspector, um, and they just you know ask you questions and just make sure like you know you're not a dum dum and you know what you're doing as a dispatcher, um, and then boom, he'll have his license. So hardest part for him is coming up, and let's all. Keep our fingers crossed for Jay, because uh, he gets past this part, he'll be a dispatcher. And uh, once he's finished, uh, over the next um, few days, he'll be starting his career at Republic Airways. He's been doing an apprenticeship with them. So uh, super, super cool to hear that he is an example of why I've been doing what I do, because I know there's a lot of people in this in who, who love flight sim and love airplanes and don't know much about dispatch and unfortunately there's people out there that can't pay to you know go to flight school or have medical and, or can't hold a medical to um to fly and that kind of stuff so i wanted to like really kind of reach out to those type of people and maybe make a positive change in their life and and go uh for an absolutely kick-ass career um so I'll let y'all know when I hear back from Jay 
I can't remember how long the test is. I think the test is like two, two and a half hours, something like that. So whenever I hear back from Jay, I'll definitely let y'all know if he uh, if he passed or not. But um, anyways, just wanted to throw that out there because super, super proud of him and and uh, the uh, the effort he's been putting in. Now, continuing on, Nicholas, <laughs> welcome aboard, buddy. How is it going? Hope your morning is uh, morning or afternoon is going well. Welcome aboard. Thanks for joining us on the Wrong Side Simulations channel. Drew Stone, definitely could have watched a few more hours of the Blue Experience. Now, that's awesome, dude. I, that makes me happy to hear. Um, you know, maybe if uh, maybe if you know more and more people go to the Blue Experience or Blue or XP and, and let them know, like, hey, we, we want to see a part two, then uh, maybe that will expedite that whole uh, process. But uh, if they have, if they would have me on, I would absolutely go back. And uh, then I try to, before I get stressed out being on their channel, uh, then I probably write down some some good stuff to talk about. We got an a cars message. That's who. Hopefully y'all can't hear my dogs barking. They hate my roommates. Four minute delay. Man, were we out? 16.04, really? Dang. Alright, let's do this. ADC delay. And delay allocation card. And we're going to call it an en route slot delay. <coughs> Which, with tunneling and active airspace flow programs and stuff like that this is a very very realistic uh, type of delay um, with an airspace flow program ATC basically issues everybody a slot and you have your wheels up time and that is what this would be now by tunneling we should be able to avoid the whole slot thing um, by flying low but you know that's what we're gonna blame it on so a TZ four minutes and then we're going to say Jacks center higher mo people please and we'll send that off Alright, back to the chat. Let me get this out of here. Received. Cool. Um, Chase, what's your pack setting if you don't mind sharing them? Captain sent you a DM. Uh, I don't even know how I'd share that, to be honest. So when you say pack settings, there could be a few different things. Like I know there's like um, aircraft cabin templates, stuff like that. Um, but I, I often change these settings. I have my crew volume set to three because the, um, the little pre-recording that I play is a lot louder than the default uh, flight attendant. Boarding volume at 23%, boarding ambience at 37 um, incident frequency, I turned it off for streams. Uh, whenever I'm not flying uh, on streams, I'll turn it on to um, uh, realistic. Have gotten a few of those before. Um, let's see. Blah, 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 blah. Boarding time set to realistic. I always do, if I'm planning on doing a realistic boarding time through Phoenix, then I'll set this to realistic as well. They both kind of run about the same pace. Um, that way, when the Phoenix is done, so is 
packs and it usually turns out pretty good seatbelt sign because i fly this airplane so much i turned it on to partial because the actual uh seatbelt sign switch doesn't work for packs so if you turn a seatbelt sign on an airplane it doesn't do anything to packs other airplanes in the past it would um unfortunately until they update packs it doesn't flight crew voice is set to first officer play the seatbelt chime just so i can hear it when i hit the button um i don't have i never do the hud because it's i don't know annoying i don't need to see that um seatbelt sign though i do bind it to my f4 key so i can hit that the same time i hit the switch in the in the uh cockpit and then yeah is this what you're talking about chase the export data to text files and then like send that to you or something let me know <laughs> and so again guys um if y'all see robert aka eggs and toast bacon says he uh evangelized the dispatch profession it's a great career so if any of y'all are thinking about it just definitely look into it uh yep it's rnav last couple of waypoints manual flying ah oh, sweet i like me some manual flying now that makes it a lot more fun and hand flying the the airbus is just oh it's the best and you gotta be it's not like 7-3 you know you're trimming non-stop and all that bs <laughs> wrong side and v1 on the same pocket oh that would be sick like oh you know that is a good idea i wonder if he would do that because like you could potentially see so like we we pitched some scenarios or something and like our dispatcher did this how would the captain rebuttal and then like we him and i have kind of a you know like a like a realistic conversation that we would have at work um so that that's kind of a that's a cool idea that's awesome uh let's see taxi observer we are as Drew Stone said, we are operating uh, Spirit Wing 681 from Charlotte down to Fort Lauderdale. Uh, we are flying a cruising altitude today of 20,000 feet. Um, since you're joining us a little bit late, uh, as one of the ATC constraints that we plan for is currently right now in the uh, ATC ops plan, so like a real life thing. This is more real life type scenarios than it is flight sim, but uh, uh, we're doing what's called ATC or Jacksonville. Um, center uh, capping and tunneling procedures where basically there's just not a not enough controllers and they need to distribute some of the workload and some of the volume different altitudes to other controllers so we have to fly the entire route at a lower altitude so that's pretty much what we're doing right now we wouldn't typically do this on a flight sim but it's for uh, for example purposes Let's see. The flight crew voice is... I haven't set the first officer because, you know, I fly on the right seat. So technically I'm a first officer, so I set it to first officer. <laughs> Look at those clouds. Awesome. Yeah. The only thing that's missing is... um. Like yesterday, I flew I flew through some uh, pretty gnarly weather on my way up to Charlotte, and the like the tops in real life, 45,000 feet on average, but in the sim they were like I was above everything at 32,000 feet. <clears throat> Is that Cumulus Nimbus down there? Uh, I don't believe so. We're not really in an area of too much too many CBs yet. Um, just based off of Atlanta. You can see we're we're up here, just off the coast, south of Savannah, and uh, starting to come into some areas of, of little isolated scattered thunderstorms or rain showers. So it does look like some of the tops are getting a little bit higher out there. So maybe that's what the sim is uh, trying to replicate. So yeah, then maybe there are some embedded cumulonimbus clouds out in that stuff. But we'll be skirting most of it, as you can tell. I'm going to be just off the uh, east side of everything. 
Looks like we got some uh, little cells over here in the Bahamas as well. These might possibly be moving west while these are moving to the east. That would be that sea breeze effect we were talking about earlier. Um, so maybe you know one or two of these might get in our way, but nothing a little uh, five ten degree deviation for weather can't can't cure. We'll move this up here and leave it for flight tracking pop purposes. Flight delayed, but hey. Oh, that's awesome. Nothing like watching a flight sim stream while sitting at an airport. I've done that a few times. People probably think I'm crazy. Oh, man. The one, the only, Fly Flaps 121 Simulations. Mr. Rio in the house. What is up, dude? Hope your Monday afternoon's going good. What'd you say? I I'll uh, rewatch a bro father duties now. Ah, oh, yeah, that's right here. I know your son was in town. Just got one more instant light. Well, dude, I appreciate it. Hope you have a good day with your son. Tell your son that that I said hello. We'll have to uh, we'll have to get some some flying in pretty soon. Maybe do some shared cockpit in the fly by wire. Dang, 336. Sweet. Oh, 337. <laughs> That's cool. I haven't looked in, in the past couple of days. That is awesome. Well, to everybody who has subscribed, I greatly appreciate it. Obviously, it helps the channel and all that kind of stuff. But uh, even more so for me, I love getting to know y'all and love hanging out with y'all. And um, I should probably like be outside running and working out or doing something more active than sitting on my butt. Um, flight simming. But, you know, that's just... It's my life. It's what makes me happy. I like hanging out with y'all, drinking coffee, talking to airplanes. What's better than that? And we're flying through fake clouds, so like you know, it's, if there's a a towering cumulonimbus and like we can't dodge it quick enough, like hey, it's not gonna jolt my chair around. <laughs> I was jump seating back to Orlando a couple weeks ago, and. Uh, we climbed above most of the, the weather. There's quite a bit of weather in the Memphis area. And we, we got above most of it. And so we're cruising all along. But then there was this uh, kind of towering cumulonimbus, like like a little a build up. It, it wasn't anything too crazy. But it was right on our right on our route. And uh, so we're as we're coming to it, Captain's like, hey, let's expedite and try to um, try to get above this. So he hits the little expedite button, it dumps the speed, airplane really starts pitching up. And uh, starts trying to get to, to, you know, climb as fast as it can. And, oh, thank you, Taxi. Appreciate you, sir. That's awesome. Um, so, yeah, so we're, uh, we hit the expedite button. We're trying to climb up, and we're looking at it, and it's like, yeah, I don't think we're going to get above this thing. So, Captain puts his hand on the heading knob. FO jumps on the mic, and he's like, center, looking for left, 5, 10 degrees for weather. And like approve, and as soon as they approve it, cap pulls heading, spins, airplane starts banking while we're still climbing. And then we're just like, oh, are we gonna, are we gonna get above it? Are we gonna get above it? No, there was, there's one little piece of the cloud kind of sticking out, <clears throat> and we're we're banking pretty hard left and climbing, and uh, we just kind of barely graze this cloud. And I tell you what, just. Like, I didn't think it was going to be much to it. it. I mean, in fact, the part we hit looked pretty thin. It's kind of opaque. We could see kind of through it. So it's like, yeah, it's not going to be much of anything. Boy, let me tell you what. The updrafts in that cloud, it, it it kicked us pretty hard. It uh made me kind of grip my seat a little bit. But it was just such a cool, like, sensation of, like, feeling the airplane, like, pitching up and banking and, like, watching that cloud. Like, oh, are we going to get past it? And, it was just, and then, like, as soon as we, as soon as we were past it, it was cranking back and then getting back on on route or back on course and all that kind of stuff so it was just it was a really cool sensation of just kind of cranking and banking and dodging and bobbing and weaving and it was a lot of fun really really enjoyed it <clears throat> so taxi quick question um 
what what does taxi stand for? When I see taxi observer, I'm kind of thinking like tactical air command controller air force type stuff. Can't wait to rewatch. Enjoy now. All right, all right, man. It was good to see you, Rio. We'll see your name in the chat, anyways. But I hope you have a great day, dude. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. <laughs> Don't think it'll ever happen, but if you're ever in Pakistan, I'd love to give you a ride in our full. Oh, dude, that'd be awesome. And a ride in the jump seat. I'm shifting over triple seven soon. Dang. What um? Well, I, never mind. I'm not gonna ask that question because you probably shouldn't say but I, I think I have an idea who you fly for um they got a pretty good idea because I know the airline I'm thinking of that operates there part of the name of the airline is that country operates both 777s and 320s so I think I know who you fly for but uh yeah absolutely man if I'm if I'm ever over there in fact I don't know if you have discord or not but um uh Feel free to join my Discord. I, uh, I should have a little invite in the description below. Um, but we can definitely stay in touch there. You can DM me and all that kind of stuff. And if, uh, if I'm ever out that way, I'll definitely hit you up. Because I got a lot of uh, a lot of buddies of mine that um, are big world travelers. And maybe one day soon I'll, uh, I'll go with them. And if we're in Pakistan, it's exactly who I thought it was. Yes. Sweet. That's awesome. It's cool that you can say it too. My company has social media policies, so I just play it safe and I don't don't say. Some people in the chat probably know who I work for, but but uh yeah, dude, hit me up in the uh, in the Discord if you have it. If not, we can probably figure something else out. That's awesome. <clears throat> Oh yeah, that's right, Chase. You're in Chicago. Yeah, you got some stuff coming at you. Yep, absolutely correct, sir. Tax stands for tactical. Meanwhile, the C is top secret. <laughs> gotcha. Got a. In fact, the guy that I, one of my best friends, who's a pilot that I went to go see in Memphis, his brother-in-law is a former uh, Tac P. And now he works for another place that I can't say. But it's pretty cool, though. Got to meet him over FaceTime once. Pretty cool, dude. Job former Air Force as well, so I, we had a bit to chat about. Shadow. What's up, man? How's it going? Welcome, welcome, welcome. As the great, the late great XP72 says. Every day's going good. Just cruising along at flight level two zero zero. All right, so here in the f about eighty five, no forty five miles. We'll be transitioning on to the arrival. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, kind of set up for arrival. I like to do this early. So I'll never get behind. So I'm going to put my range ring around Lauderdale Airport. I'm going to do five miles. So we'll keep it uh, probably 170 knots to five miles. Then we'll dump it and get fully configured. After that, let's see. Looking at my charts, I'm going to get my final... I'm just going to get the last fix on the approach, which is Zalel, Z-A-L-A-L, and then we're going to take opposite runway heading, which is 276, and that's going to draw my extended center line, so I'll always have that. And let's go ahead and get some weather data, throw that in there. I'm 
we'll refresh as we get a little bit closer. Winds are variable at six knots, ten statute miles, broken at thirty-eight thousand, or correction thirty-eight hundred, broken at five thousand, broken twenty-five thousand. Temperatures thirty-two, dew points twenty-three, nail temperatures two nine nine seven. So Hashim, where you're at, what's the uh, temperature like? A lot of times I feel like, man, you know, like 35 degrees Celsius, it's pretty hot. But I know there's other parts of the world that it gets real hot. So still those in. Wind's variable, so we'll leave the winds at calm. Temperature's 32, and then 2997. Radio altimeter, I believe the ILS 10 right, it's going to be 250 on the men's, it is. That's in there. And now let's just check everything, make sure that everything drew out the way we wanted it to. good so we got this disc con so we'll just kind of vector ourselves unless somebody takes over ATC we'll just vector ourselves to final <coughs> all that looks good flight plan we'll throw in the prog page Lauderdale we can do 10 right that'll be for our call outs And then we'll brief the approach here in a little bit. We'll get a little bit closer. Still got a ways to go. We are being St. Augustine, Florida, which is the oldest city in Florida. We got some cool stuff to do out there. Some nice places to get some drinks and some food. Great place in the Christmas time, too. They light up the whole city. Lots of cool stuff. They have this uh, one bar... It's like all uh, like chocolate martinis and like stuff like chocolate alcoholic martinis or something. I don't know. My girlfriend made me go and uh, not gonna lie, it was pretty good. I was the one guy in a cowboy hat. Y'all hear the accent, so you know. I'm, I like I like cowboy stuff, and uh, so we went out there. Christmas all dressed up cowboy, and then I didn't see nobody else wearing cowboy hats, so I kind of felt a little bit alone. But uh, drank some of them strong ass chocolate martini things, and I was having a real good time. Real good time. Oh, is it in the country? You might be right about that. Because when I said it, I was like, eh, that's kind of insignificant. That's what Google's for, though. Fact checkers. <laughs> St. Augustine City in Florida. Lays claim to being the oldest city in the United States. Yep, it's a pretty cool place. If you're ever in Florida, take a stop by down there. That's some cool stuff to do. Alright, let's see. Catching back up. Yeah, the link of the approach sent was actually posted by the company. Their pro oh, that's good. Pro social media is pretty cool, especially like you know guys like you can can actually talk and like share your story and what you do and all that kind of stuff. That's that's pretty neat. Things are seem to be a little bit more uptight here in the U.S. We definitely got some stuff starting to pop up. Getting a little bit closer to Lauderdale. This is... You kind of start seeing this line. This is likely sea breeze effect going into effect. <clears throat> Alright, we're now officially on the arrival. Uh, catch back up. Let's see.
Got to head back to the grind. I'll catch up with you later. Be well. You do the same, Drew. Hope you have a great day, buddy. Oh, my gosh. Mid-40s. Jesus. I mean, at least... And this is always, like, every person... Every person that lives in, like, the southern portion of the United States where it's really humid, that's how we always try to rebuttal. Like, oh, well, at least it's dry. This is... It's like here, it's super, super humid and very, very sticky. Um, but, ugh, that sounds kind of miserable, to be honest. <laughs> God, was wrestling a bear? <laughs> That's hilarious. Is there any place I can send you the video right now? I don't have Discord. Oh. I have Telegram. Tony, what's up, dude? I was telling everybody about my special little trip that I'm taking tomorrow over to Jetline Systems. Um, yeah, told them there's going to be, uh, I'm going to be taking some uh, some pictures and some videos and stuff on there, and upon y'all's approval, I'll be showing them on the channel to kind of get some of the word out, and if there's any cool new hardware that anybody wants, hit y'all up. But welcome, dude. Always great to see you. And, uh, hey, Tony, you get a lunch break, right? If you get a lunch break, um, maybe tomorrow we'll go grab some lunch while I'm over there. Um, but, yeah, so I've got Telegram. Um, but other than that, I don't think there's going to be any other way. Triple Seven be flying to Chicago and JFK. So if you are there, maybe we could. Okay. Yeah. Chicago's probably the more likely. Um, how long until you're on the uh, 777? <laughs> Mr. Google knows everything. Yep. Including what's all in my Google Photos and everything else probably shouldn't, they shouldn't know. My travel tendencies via my Google Maps history. <coughs> Highly recommend St. Augustine, nice little area down next to the next to the Castillo de San Marcos. Yeah, it's really cool area down there. A lot of fun stuff to do. Cool, following the coastline is one of my favorite routes, though. Yeah, I do. I like it too because it's definitely more scenic, especially than like going like on the AR routes or deep oceanic. There's just a lot more stuff to see. In fact, since you said that, uh, let's do this. Let's go. The Phoenix is weird on our cameras. I can't turn. If I wanted to go like to the opposite side of the airplane, if I turn my camera, it just pops back over. See, just like that. So I've got to go camera, instrument. And let's go right. Let's go right forward. There we go. And then, it, but it keeps the view like this after doing that. There it goes. <coughs> cool. <laughs> uh, this month's my last month on the 320. I'm pretty sure you're excited about the 777, right? But if it were me personally, and they, and I even talk about this just on a flight simming, like a sim desk kind of a level. I wouldn't be too excited about having a yoke in my crotch all the time. Um, and that's kind of how it is when I fly Boeing, even on my desk, because the way the, the my Boeing yoke, as you can see back there, mounts to the desk, it's kind of in my crotch and it's in the way. And I can't kick back and relax. Whereas with my Airbus setup, where I have my whole desk, comfortable. So that's probably the only part that sucks. But the 777 is awesome. Do you, which triple seven variants do y'all have? Y'all probably have the three hundred, right? Have <laughs> geek, I'm back. Meeting went well. Well, good. It's always good when things in general just go well, right? Myself and um, Robert, that was in the chat a while ago. Him and I are both uh, transitioning over to dispatch manager position um, 
in about five days. So I don't know about him. I think he's a little more versed in this kind of stuff, but I'm a little bit more uh, nervous about it. My strong suit is going to be helping the dispatchers and doing dispatch stuff, but there's also going to be some admin things uh, thrown my way as well. So I'm going to have to learn some Excel and PowerPoint and some computer program stuff. So just kind of that, that, that new role is coming upon me pretty quick. So naturally, fear of the unknown, a little bit nervous, but it'll be good. It's going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> Did you gain like 40 subscribers over the weekend? Absolutely killing it. Um, I think. So, Tony, um, last Thursday, before I went on the X, the uh, Blue Experience with XP72 and uh, Blue Games, I was at 213, if I remember correctly. And now, whatever it says I'm at. Um, but a lot of that, like pretty much all of that, is really just uh, the exposure that Blue and XP gave me by allowing me to speak on their platform. Um, and I think it was kind of interesting to, to some folks. So fortunately, was able to, um, to, to get a, a few more subscribers, which is always awesome. I like reaching out to folks and teaching what I know, which is little. <laughs> but uh, yeah, man, I'm trying my best, just trying to trying to put out what I know and, and what I can. Do you speak Portuguese? Uh, I do not. Um, I know what Portuguese sounds like. Like I can identify Portuguese, but I can't speak it like at all. But uh, my best, fr my girlfriend's best friend is from Brazil, so she speaks Portuguese. We were the first airline. To oh shoot, that's cool. Launch customer for the. Oh wow, that is sweet. I was on the ATR and the 310. I got used to the yoke. <laughs> so how was it going from a yoke to a side stick? Now, obviously, I know there's, like, especially with the yoke, like, having, like, force feedback and and that kind of thing is, is one part of it. And, obviously, the side stick, you don't. It's fly-by-wire and, and it's pretty sensitive compared to the amount of, of motion and force you put on the yoke. But, like, other than that, just the general, like, comfortability of going from a yoke to a side stick. Like how did you, how did, did you like that or... taxi observer it's like we're in a real flight what a stunning view show sure is yeah Florida gives some pretty nice coastal views I kind of prefer the uh, the panhandle and the Gulf Coast view just because I prefer that side of Florida a little bit more um, since I grew up over here in Northeast Louisiana I always went to Gulf Shores Alabama and Destin um, on vacation so this is kind of my happy place and I just like flying over my happy place being down in this area well that just means work for me usually but I live up here now which this doesn't look great I don't know how recent this is but my house is like right here so that's cool let's uh Look at live what live radar. And so, guys, the other thing to take in consideration when we're flying this low, we're going to be in cruise for quite a bit longer. Start our descent a little bit further or a little bit closer to the airport than we would if we were higher up. Is this thing coming or what? There we go. Yikes! Yikes! Yep. There's all kinds of stuff by my house. So this is the house. I got it marked with home. And uh, that's that's fun. Oh, I think we are flying past the Cape. This is Cape Canaveral. Sure is. Look at that. Where SpaceX always launches. This is where the uh, space shuttle used to land. Now, if there was a rocket launch, we definitely wouldn't be flying here right now. They would have us quite a bit further to the west. 
I just watched a uh, SpaceX rocket launch a few days ago. Turn the volume down so I don't blow your ears out. Alright, so one thing we need to do though, uh, since we've been flying low this whole time, when we get to Jipod, I want to do a fuel check just to kind of cross check our fuel burn, make sure everything is burning as planned. I'm going to find it on my paperwork. So, Jipod, we should have. 11.8 and we're gonna have a hell of a lot more than that this thing's getting fuel burn is like a neo we're at 14,000 pounds right now doubt we're gonna burn 2200 pounds in 27 miles but I guess we'll see finally at Seattle sweet and Coco, if you want, um, you can add me on Volanta. Um, wrong side sim, no spaces, is my Volanta name. Feel free. Yeah. It's pretty sensitive to... Pretty much the perfect balance for me, but they think 20 is so different. People think in little aspects. Yeah. Yeah, I could imagine. I had a buddy of mine that flies for uh, Delta. He was on the 767-400 for a long time and then just moved over to the A330. And they've got the A330-300, I believe, and the new uh, A330-NEO. Um, he said he's he's loving the um he's loving the Airbus so far. Twenty miles from Jipod, and we're at thirteen eight. But you know, under burning on the fuel is never bad. Oh, sweet. Now, are, um, are you in this video? Because if so, that's, it's, uh, that's 20,000 times cooler. And, uh, are you cool if I play this on here for everybody else I know you said they're very pro social media I just want to make sure with you before <clears throat> I learned how to request current position data via a cars for calculating burns adding alternates holding last week or <laughs> relearned it anyway eye-opening awesome so helpful oh okay yeah so I did a, a comp check with um, with Tamara Actually, I've done it with her the past two years, and she showed me a way where it'll do the, the position check, and it'll work every time. For the rest of y'all who don't really know what we're talking about, we have an automated way of being able to ping the airplane and request fuel on board and all that kind of stuff. Um, but most of the time when we would do it, it doesn't work, or the position check is like a little bit too far back in the... Uh, in the route compared to their present position, uh, so usually we just have to ask them like, "Hey, oh, what's your what's your fuel on board?" But so Robert, I will be getting you to run me through that so I can learn it, and we can push that um, pretty heavily in the new guys in our new role to try to help them out. Damn, that's awesome! All right, here we go. We're about to play some oh. Jipod 13.6. Cool. So we're like. Shoot, 1,800 pounds under burning? I'll take it. All right, we're going to turn all this stuff off. And 
and we're going to play this. All right, so everybody, uh, if you haven't been reading the chat, uh, Hashim in the uh, in the chat is the first officer in this video. Dude, this is sweet. And guys, I just want to say this too. Notice the beards. Almost all the pilots in the U.S. would be so jealous because they get to have beards and U.S. pilots don't. Although that's maybe changing or has changed very, very, very recently. But nonetheless, they'd be very, very jealous. Sorry, I didn't know the volume was that low. <laughs> Dude, that is awesome. <clears throat> Definitely gonna keep this up. We'll come back to it on our next legs. I think we're getting close to. No, we still got a little ways till top of descent. Um, real quick before we continue with that, let's just kind of brief the approach real quick. Kind of take a look at everything, and then with a little time we got left, we'll jump back on that because I definitely want to finish watching. So, all right. <clears throat> Real quick, 
uh, charts. Alrighty, so we are planning the ILS runway 10 right. Uh, our ILS frequencies 111.75 as we got in there final approach course 96 this says 97 I don't think so let me change it uh, 96 yeah didn't think so but whatever it's fine final print final approach fixes lorry 1800 feet decision heights 250 feet off the ground touchdowns on elevations 14 feet we have a standard three degree glass slope. Approach lights, Pepe on the right. If we go miss, we'll climb to 800, climbing right turn to 2000. And since it's uncontrolled airspace, I'll just box it back around and try her again. Uh, to shoot this approach, we need 250 foot ceilings, three quarter mile visibility. Looking at the current METAR in Lauderdale. That y'all can't see right now. Uh, winds are 130 at 13, 10 statute miles, broken at 4,000, broken 25,000, temperatures 32, 2.24, all temperatures 2996. So let's get this updated real fast. Perf, next, next. And so the winds, 130.13. Temperature is the same. And all temperatures 2996. Aircraft is slowing down with speed constraint. Keeping this uh, little brief going. So uh, definitely got the weather for this. Not a big factor. Or not a not an issue at all. Um, why hasn't... Oh, I bet I know why. Damn. Okay. Um, so I'm waiting for I've been waiting for an ACARS message from V Spirit to let me know where to land. Problem is, um, I originally told it I was gonna be cruising at like 34,000 feet, but because of the examples that we were showing, that changed. Therefore, it's not gonna send me the ACARS. I don't believe. Soon it gets a little bit closer. We should have had it by now. Anyways, uh, usually it would tell us what gate to park at. We would include that in this little brief, but whatever. All right, so on runway 10 right, we have high intensity runway lights, approach lights, Pappy on the right. It's a three degree glide slope on the, uh, or glide path on the Pappy. It's grooved, RBR is reporting, and from the glide slope, we have 6,952 feet of usable runway. It's 150 feet wide. Once we land, it's gonna be a left hand turnoff. And uh, if I had to guess, we'll probably be turning off at Juliet 9. Come down the hill. There's a legit hill right here. We'll taxi on down, make a ride on Hotel 5, Tango 8 to the ramp. And we'll park probably G7 or somewhere around over here. It's typically where Spirit parks. <clears throat> now, since it is... An ILS. We'll go ahead and arm our ILS push buttons. We're going to go auto brake low. And uh, other than that, if you have any questions, throw it in the chat. Back up to the chat. Okay, and we're going to, um, like I said, we're going to get back to that video here in just a sec. Uh, deaccelerate. Why does it tell me to deaccelerate? It's in manage speed. Oh, shit, I missed the top of the descent. No wonder. All right. Mm, and we got a speed constraint. I was going to show a cool little technique to really expedite the descent, but... We're not gonna be able to do it with the speed constraint in front of us. Prog page. 
we're roughly 1700 feet high throughout the boards but for anybody who uh, who likes to fly the Airbus if you need to come down quick uh, what you can do is push to level level the plane off bleed off speed to whatever at whatever speed so I don't know like 240 250 and then dial your altitude down go into open descent and then spin the speed up and select its speed and that'll make the aircraft pitch for speed and it's trying to accelerate so it'll be a pretty uh, pretty steep descent rate there's 18,000 altimeters 2996 and that starting to catch up with that glide path a bit Five hundred feet. Go back into managed. Descend. And stud those boards. Aircraft's gonna start pitching up. Cool. Alright, let's get those seatbelt signs on. Status page check. All is normal. And approach checklist. Briefing is complete. Approach stable by 1,000 feet. Ecom status is checked. Seatbelt signs are on. Minimums 250 set. Engine nice 1 and 2 is off. Altimeter is 2996 set. Approach checklist complete. Yeah, um, when we fly the next leg, which you might actually be flying by then, but we're going to get back to that video and uh, definitely want to see the landing. That'd be, that's going to be pretty sick. <clears throat> But dude, thank you so much for sharing that with us, man. That's that is awesome. It's like I've I've gotten to share a couple of videos before with like XP and Blue and stuff of other videos where I was jump seating. But it's a whole different deal when, um, you know, you like you got an actual video of you flying the airplane. Like that's that's pretty badass. Thirteen, so eight will be bottom altitude. Forty-five miles. All right, so while we're coming down. I'm going to delete the secondary. I'm going to put in our alternate routing just in case something happens. So init, do K, F, L, L, K, R, S, W. So if we go miss, and we end up needing to divert, we'll just activate this. Uh, we'll do cost index 15, 13,000. Just let it put whatever standard temperature in there secondary flight plan Lauderdale departure be nice one it's an interesting Sid Mercs cool and then secondary RSW arrival RNAV to four no star Sweet. I need to learn more about the alternate stuff. this whole function here enable alternate like I'm not gonna push it now because I don't mess stuff up but I'm not really sure what it would do although I'm sure it would somehow activate to go to the alternate I don't know if it would how it would do the routing and stuff
Lardell traffic, Spirit Wings uh, 681, 35 miles to the northeast of the field, and we're planning uh, ILS from a 10 right, Lauderdale. We got another guy out ahead of us. It's also coming into Lauderdale. When you do check out the landing, let me know how you liked it. Would love your opinion. <laughs> now your turn. All right. And I got, <clears throat> I got one I can share with you um, on Discord. I got to go to uh, our training sim in my first year at my company, and uh, I was able to do um, a short but complete flight. I told the guys like, hey, uh, you know, put the airplane in like a, a turn configuration, and I want to see if I know what I think I know, and I want to program the airplane push, taxi, take off, land, taxi, shut down, I want to do it all. And uh, they let me do it, and it worked out pretty well. I got a nice little uh, video that I made of um, all the like different phases of the flight. This was about five years ago. I know about 30 times more about the airplane than I, uh, now than I did then. Um, so if I ever get the, the uh, chance to do it again, I would love it, because I think I would do a lot better then than I do now or uh, now than I would then be in the background again still got to wrap a few things Sally no worries Chase if you need to go down quick just push forward on the stick <laughs> that works too <laughs> dive him <laughs> pickle pickle yeah, that's funny. The Stuka approach, yep. Then they're dive bombing. Then at 2,000 feet, pull pull back on the stick and go into a flip. <laughs> I've done that in a sim. Didn't go well. <laughs> Wait, you went to the sim? That was when I ran them. I didn't approve that. <laughs> I don't need your approval. <laughs> oh, that's funny. All right, 8,000. I kind of want to go, I want a shortcut and go straight to Warner, but this guy's out in front of me somewhere, so I'm not going to, not going to do that. Potentially cut him off. Alt star. And let's go selected speed. There's no further constraints. And uh, we'll go ahead and Activate approach phase. Above three. Five. Thrust idle descent. Wes, we are here uh, pretty, pretty quick. Just going to fly the downwind, and then we'll turn base. And again, after this, we're going to uh, head over to New Orleans from Lauderdale. And we're going to have to uh, take a nice look at this one as well when we flight plan this one, because we're going to have a, a couple, we're going to have a pretty crucial decision to make. But we'll get to that when we get to it. Jet blew out ahead of us. Would you like to show the portable table? It reminds me. Sure. Talking about the tray table, right? This little deal.
Come on, bro. And there's a lot of, uh, let's see, American, JetBlue. Yeah, there's some, like, there's some private planes. Full load traffic, JetBlue 6103, five off on a runway, uh, 10 left, full load traffic. Lot of traffic. Spirit Wing 681 is uh, seven miles north of the field on the downwind. We'll call base and uh, JetBlue, we got you in sight. We'll maintain visual separation. Lauderdale. All right, we can see him. Well, we're we'll seeing him. Where'd he go? Dude, this is annoying. Oh, there he is. For some reason, when I zoom in, it doesn't show him, but he's at, right out there. He's no factor for us. He'll be on the ground well before we are. All right, let's go ahead and slow her down to 210. Flying an Airbus is like riding an automatic car. Everything is so simple, isn't it? It is, especially... And I, I think I get on this tangent every time um, we compare, like, the Airbus to Boeing. I just think the Airbus is such a, a well-thought-out airplane um, where, like, oh, yeah, I just turned those off. Whoops. Um, man, like, just a quick little example. If you're flying in heading mode, you go into the Boeing's FMS, you put in direct to whatever fix, as soon as you insert that direct you still have to like look up and hit L nav and tell the plane to go L nav whereas in the Airbus go oh, flaps one we're being eight plus ten so flaps one um, in the Airbus when you hit direct it automatically goes into nav mode and it starts tracking direct to the fix just little things that that reduce the the workload make it very enjoyable to fly It's coming down a little bit faster. So, Jeff, me and uh, Robert will be heading down to this part of Florida in a couple oh, weeks. Hey, he's on 10 left, too, so he's definitely no factor for us. So as y'all can see, we got the extended center line. I like doing this for this very reason right here, that we're going to keep going out a little bit past Warner just to bleed off some altitude. And then I can just very quickly look on the ND and see where my extended center line is, or where the center line is. Now the only difference is that the airplane thinks that the course is 097, so it's one degree off, which means we need to subtract a degree if we're trying to be like super precise let's go fix info over uh, there we go now it's perfectly aligned all right Vinny plus tens flaps two speed checks flaps two and we'll go heading mode and let's go 185 on the heading. We'll on approach. And we'll slow her to 170. Pretty day down here. So far, we're flying over Weston. This is uh, Weston, Florida. Used to live out here. 
a few years ago. This is an RC uh, airplane park. A little deal here. There's the mall. Turn left. <laughs> Pretty much. All right, Dak Talk. Yeah, we'll uh, I'll definitely take a look into your your channel. All right, man. Have a good flight. Safe travels. Talk to you soon in the Discord. We might still be flying by the time you land, depending on how long your flight is. Look, star. Traffic, American 943, departing 8 right via the drop and arrive departure reason the twin direct flight back. Miami traffic. All right, so the last two streams, my landings were pretty Miami terrible. Traffic. Let's try to change that with this one. But see, that's the problem. Like on stream, I'm trying too hard. I'm thinking too hard. I'm getting nervous. Ooh, three and a half hours. Yeah, it's possible. We might still be flying. And you guys gotta get it right. It's not Miami traffic. It's Miami traffic. Okay. <laughs> Lauderdale traffic, Spirit Wing 681, 10 mile final, runway 10 right, Lauderdale. All right, speed, glide slope, look, glide slope, dual, autopilot 1 and 2. Looking good. And we're just going to keep on riding the ILS down. We'll uh, stay 170 until 5 miles. And then we'll finish getting configured. Go around altitude. 2, it's 2,000. We'll get that set. There we go. And we'll say we've just been cleared to land. Get the mole lights on. Now let's see how bad I can screw this one up. The last two have been pretty terrible. Also, I changed the source that my overlay detects instead of SimConnect. Now it uses FSU IPC. So maybe we'll get a more realistic reading on the uh, on the touchdown. All right, we gotta be uh, we gotta be stable by thousand feet off the ground. Miami traffic, American 943 departed eight right. Uh, climbing 2.5. All right, here we go. Man to speed, off. geared down. Yeah. <laughs> Spoilers are on. Flaps three. Oh, I think I started something. And flaps full. Speed check, flaps full. Landing checklist. We can't see it. So over here where the sun's not as bright. Maybe. God dang it. Can't see it here either. Anyways, landing checklist. Cabin cruise advised. Auto thrust speed. Auto brakes low. EKMMO landing all green. Land checklist is complete. And we are stable at a thousand. My airplane. Gusty. <laughs> he did it too. Let's go. Come on. Four hundred. Dang them winds. Hundred above. 300. Minimum. Continue. 
200. One hundred. Flight slow. Forty. Thirty. Twenty. Retard. Five. Again. Spoilers. Reverse green diesel. 60 knots. Water Dell traffic. Shoner 0 Victor. X ray. Taxi runway 10 left from Shelter. Going to be on Echo and uh, Charlie. Water Dell. Water Dell traffic. Spearman 681 is clear. Runway 10 right. Water Dell. Set the prong brakes here. Clean her up. And after landing checklist, exterior lights are set, flaps tried to cast to standby, engine mode, selectors, normal ground spoilers disarmed, radar temperatures off. And welcome to Fort Lauderdale. Spent way too much time of my life in Fort Lauderdale. Now I don't have to spend as much of it down here no more. It's just not my scene. Miami traffic, you're making 14 for the long time. We're working on the line behind for it now. 330, the funny way to the south. I saw it, Miami. Miami. Yeah. Having a. Haven't flown into here since the new um, world update. I think some of these taxiways might be a bit bumpy. And in Lauderdale, if you're on the radios, you'll typically hear um, like exit 10 right at whatever. Taxi down the hill. Turn right on Tango 8. This is the hill that they're talking about. We are making our way down the Yeah, there's definitely some changes. After world update. <clears throat> right, there's three minutes. Yellow electric pump comes on, and we're gonna shut down engine two. So on this next leg, we'll uh, we'll take a quick break while I just kind of get everything reset up, get V Spirit going, and then uh, we'll start the boarding process while we're planning the. I guess it's, I guess we can't really start the boarding process while we're planning the flight because we need to know the fuel load and the passenger count and all that stuff. So disregard. But yeah, we'll definitely take a quick little break. While we deplane, and uh, then we'll get back to it shortly after.
Name the captain do the next landing. True. Encounter zero Victor X ray taking off from only one zero left half or two departure to the southeast. Uh, Got some birds. I'm gonna get ingested. And we'll just park next to this other ring, K. There we go. Brake set. APU's on. Shutting down one. And I forget that every time I shut that yellow electric pump down before we shut down engine one. Oof. Man. So Valanta says negative 266. I'm not sure what the overlay said. But, uh, yeah, not great. Alright, parking checklist. Slides are disarmed, engines off, seat belts off, exterior lights uh, are set, ice protection's off, fuel pumps off, yellow pump is off, chalk signals received. Parking checklist is complete. Get that door open. <coughs> I appreciate it. <coughs> Taxi. Nice of you to say. Pisses me off though if I get anything. If I, if it's 200 or greater, I'm, it pisses. It just straight pisses me off. If it's um, I usually aim for. I mean, I think we all right, but I think we usually aim for um, you know, less than 100 feet on our landing rates. And if I don't get that, it pisses me off. But I do think the good part of that landing was I'm pretty sure we were in the touchdown zone, which is honestly better than being like ultra smooth. We don't want to float forever just to get a smooth landing. So, all right. Leg one complete. Let me file some pie reps and uh, I didn't change my altitudes on anything. All right, let's see. Give me them sticks. Want to meet up in Atlanta? Um, sorry, man. Our next flight's going to be... Uh, I'm just going with my schedule that's in a pilot's life. Um, we're going to be heading on over to New Orleans. So if you want to fly with us from uh, Lauderdale to New Orleans, man, you are more than welcome. That's uh, where we're going to head. Appreciate that. Thanks so much, Tack. Once I landed with negative 400, 
in real life, my neck might have been dislocated. Yeah, <laughs> I could imagine. It's, it's a little firm. Definitely not the worst, but it's a little firm. Alrighty. Move this over here. Cool. Um, so I'm going to go use the bathroom real quick. Run up to the terminal, a.k.a. my bathroom. Take a quick quick piss, and then we'll uh, we'll be ready to keep it going. So, guys, be right back. See, flying right now, BB to Atlanta, then then to Dallas, then back down to Orlando. Okay. Uh, so we're going to do Lauderdale, New Orleans, then New Orleans to uh, Dallas. So maybe, if we can time it right, maybe we meet up in Dallas and uh, fly from somewhere. Oh, that's going to be a long day. It's already 2 o'clock. It's probably going to be at least two hour, hour and a half, two hours en route to New Orleans. Probably an hour and a half. Yeah, maybe we can time it right. I'm going to go use the bathroom real quick. I didn't mean to push that. And uh, then we'll plan the flight and get underway. So we'll be right back.
All right, guys, so here we are, ready to plan leg number two of the day. Got everything pre-filled as we would typically have it done on the dispatch desk. So next flight, Spirit Wing 657, Lauderdale to New Orleans. No alternate yet. <clears throat> Departing at 1845, um, and everything else is just normal. We do have our 10 minutes of dispatch, um, or not dispatch ad, but our uh, extra fuel that goes below the line with our 45-minute reserve. That's what we want. Cool. So, let's jump into it. First thing, Lauderdale departing off of uh, 10 left and 10 right. So, we've got 10 left in there. We're going to be uh, leaving the airspace to the north. So, we'll depart off of the north end of the field. And then for New Orleans, New Orleans does some kind of weird stuff. I, I mean, they should have Natus in here, but I don't know if this website's going to. Yep, they got it. Cool. Uh, info Alpha, winds are variable, 10 statute miles, 33, 26, 2987, cool. Arrivals expect GPS runway 2 approach. Alright, so we got runway 2, it's already in there, sweet. Sometimes, pretty often, uh, the ATIS will say, um, arrivals expect ILS runway 11, except arriving from the north through the southeast, expect runway 2 or 20, depending on the winds. Um, so you kind of have to figure out based on the direction where you're coming from, which uh, runway to plan on. Um, but for this one today, it looks like they're just landing on runway two. So, cool, makes it even easier. Taxi out. Let's check our OIS page. Uh, oh, look at that. Um, Orlando. Hey. My dog hates my roommate's boyfriend, I think. So, dude, she don't ever shut up. So we've got, uh, this is pretty interesting because we just flew by here. Um, so Orlando is in a ground stop right now uh, due to the thunderstorms that we were seeing on Valanta. Uh, I just took the dogs out a minute ago. Um, ground was soaking wet. It's actually sunny outside, but I could see that there was a, a pretty dark um, cell to the north. It just dumped a bunch of rain. I almost slipped and busted my ass on the tile on the back patio as I was uh, taking the dogs out. So that was fun. But Orlando is in a ground stop, so all aircraft that are in Atlanta Center and Jacksonville Center are not allowed to leave. And the next update is at 18:30 Zulu. Um, so at 18:30, ATC Command Center will kind of reevaluate everything and may extend the ground stop. So this has a medium potential of extension. And if uh, if they extend it, this will likely go out to 1930 Zulu, and aircraft will not be able to leave. So anybody <coughs> flying from Atlanta to Orlando right now is not allowed to leave. They will uh, once the update is issued, this will either go back to, uh, usually another hour, or if they get rid of the ground stop, then here we'll see a, uh, a flow program issued. And that's when ATC starts um, issuing wheels up times to kind of sequence all of the aircraft because if everybody just left at once there'd be an influx of airplanes in the Orlando airspace controllers would become uh, oversaturated not be able to um, handle them all so ATC command center will issue wheels up times and aircraft will be sequenced so first nobody's allowed to leave once the ground stop is canceled then they go into usually go into an airspace flow program and um, that's when they're given their wheels up time and uh, aircraft are told when they're able to leave. Usually, in my airline, we usually push out of the gate about 15 minutes prior to that wheels up time. That way, it ensures that we are out of the gate and ready to catch our slot. If we miss that slot, we'll take an even bigger delay. And then this, this is the um, uh, the Jacksonville Center flow control area or airspace flow program type thing. Uh, this is what will kick off the tunneling that we just did so if we flew low like we just did coming into Lauderdale we could avoid this whole program and not accrue a delay uh, if we don't fly high then we get caught into this um, into this airspace flow program and as you can see if you basically if your route takes you through this line at all you are hit or you're captured in the delay and you'll take a huge delay so as dispatchers we try to route around it uh, so we'll either come down through like New Orleans and come through here and try to miss it. Although the Gulf routes I think are up closed, which is what we're about to look at. So the Gulf, Gulf routes are closed. We can't come from the west. So the next best is going to be AR routes coming down, but they likely may not allow that either. So 
really the only option you're left with is to come in from below. So the program starts at 1700 Zulu, ends at uh, 1200 Zulu, sometimes they might change this. Um, the floor is from 17,000 feet to 60,000 feet, so we probably have to go at like 16,000 feet to avoid getting captured in the program. So kind of cool this popped up. This uh, kind of shows you what it is that we look for. When we see this, this is when we activate our tunneling procedures to avoid this stuff. It's just hard though because sometimes this happens like last minute and we plan flights two hours ahead of time so uh, we'll still get captured but anyways that's what's happening right now um, what I'm worried about refresh this is uh, I want to know what they're doing on the Gulf routes because our route uh, we would like to plan across the Gulf so let's see Foreign ops plan current ops plan today maybe why does no work there we go is that the current one okay I'm assuming yeah because it's until 19 sweet um, right so in route active this is what we're kind of looking for for our routing stuff uh, as of yet they still don't have the Q100 <coughs> Q102 and Gulf route closures activated yet they're probably trying to hold off on that as much as they can because if they don't then aircraft are like a lot of lot a lot of airplanes are going to get caught in this flow program and again if you go through this line you're gonna make you're gonna your flight is gonna take a huge delay so they're probably trying to leave these routes open as best as they can to avoid uh, this whole area this little airspace flow program but again these route those routes might still go through it and still may not get you out of the woods I'd have to look at the routes overlaid with the uh, airspace flow program but this is the biggest part that I was wanting to look at for this route that we're about to fly is are the Q routes and the Gulf routes still open um, which they are and as you can see over here maybe it might be really small text um, but this route takes us on the Yankee 280 Redfin to the Q105 um, so we are at least this is wanting to go across the Gulf uh, here they just have Q102 and Q100 we're on the Q105 but we might could still potentially get impact with this if we were flying this in real life. Uh, let's see, AR route closures, don't care, never, floor swap, blah, blah, blah. Cool. So, because if we if we don't cross the Gulf, it's going to take us a lot longer to get to New Orleans. Uh, so we're going to plan this over the Gulf, um, since it's not yet active. And they say that en route planned until 2300, so it could go active at any time. Because um, there's a difference between after and until. So after means it likely wouldn't start until after 2100, whereas until means it could happen at any time and last until 2300. So what I will do in real life is I would select an inland route, which should be this one. Yep. And then I'm a fuel for this route. So if we were to fly this route, this make sure this is still good all right so we got some scattered thunderstorm cells we'd have to deviate around we got even more up in the panhandle area coming all the way through because there's always the risk that ATC might still leave you or they might reroute you back on the inland if they were to shut down these Q routes and that's why we fuel it so if they were to reroute us on the inland route we have the fuel to do it we don't have to go back to the gate so uh, we're going to plan some fuel for weather deviations around these scattered thunderstorm cells. Turbulence doesn't really look like an issue. Tops, 43,000 on that one, 45 on those, 45 on those. So obviously we're not going to um, top those. And again, one thing I just thought about too that I didn't clarify. Um, the, the airspace flow program, so basically if you're going through this line, this only really affects you if you're going southbound. 
if you're going northbound, as far as I know, and if Jeff or anybody's in the in the chat, feel free to correct me, because I don't have to deal with this stuff very much um, on my shift. But um, it's mainly for the southbound flights, I believe. So we'll play a normal altitude coming out of here, and uh, we'll just rock and roll with that. So let's see. So we got weather. Rides are good, from what I see. Now, if we come out across the Gulf, it's going to be the same thing. We've got weather, 45. Tops are at 48 on those. 45. <coughs> so we'll definitely still want to have uh, plenty of fuel for deviating around stuff out here. Now, if we're if we're fueled for the inland route and we get the Gulf route, then we're already going to have a lot of gas because the inland route's a lot longer. So we don't really have to plan much extra for the thunderstorms we'll already have the gas. So now the only other thing now to really consider is going to be, you know, this stuff's not too far away from New Orleans. It's lingering just off the coast. If I could loop it, that would definitely help. But uh, being that it's this close, this stuff can definitely get blown inland and impact uh, New Orleans terminals. So we'll, we'll want to carry an alternate for sure. Probably look at uh, Houston. Pensacola is an option, but again, sales are pretty close. So... Houston looks better as of now. We'll have to look at their tap and go from there. So, <clears throat> back up into here. Uh, let's plan CI-99. So if we got the Gulf route, that's going to put us behind schedule, so we'd want to fly CI-99. 10 left, runway 2, taxi out, 500 pounds, that'll work. Um, now, with having, having these thunderstorm sails around, that could potentially activate some miles in trail coming out of uh, Lauderdale. So probably is a better idea to tack on a little extra um, taxi fuel. So we'll do that. Betterman's got our 10 below the line. Now contingency fuel bobbing and weaving around all these little scattered cells all the way up through here. We're going to tack on 30 minutes. And now for the alternate. I'm going to come down here to the customize and let's take a look at Houston. And again, if you missed the last episode for the flight planning stuff, airlines have a list of approved airports that they can go to. God, dog. Oh. <clears throat> so, that's part partly the reason why I'm not selecting like New Orleans or Lafayette or Lake Charles or Alexandria or like other airports, smaller airports that are closer. Because um, I'm just going based off of my company's op specs. And in our op specs, um, Houston is approved, Pensacola is approved. Um, we got some other alternates that we could list, like Alexandria, but if we were going to divert, if there's a real possibility of diverting, we don't want to go to an offline station. Pensacola and Houston are both online for my company, so we're going to go probably with Houston. Um, let's see, it's currently 18, is it 18, 18 Zulu? Should be. Yeah, 1822. Uh, 6, 22, 19, 20, 22. So they're forecasting vicinity thunderstorms by the time that we'd be headed to uh, to Houston. So we're not going to use them. Let's take a look at Austin. And Austin looks pretty solid throughout the day. So we'll go with Austin. Analyze this little route so it'll take. Cool. And I'm going to take this route, put it in the remarks so I'll have it. I think we're ready for our first calculation. So we'll generate. Now this is one of the things that I wish we could change. <laughs> could do Memphis. True. That's a long ass way though. Um, one of the things I wish that was different with SimBrief is I wish I had the ability to like tell SimBrief, hey, I have this much gas on board. Because right now what I want to do is I would want to take this 25,800 pounds of gas and I'd want to like make... Um, I would want to make SimBrief keep that. I don't want this to change because this is me routing for the inland route. But we're about to switch the route and put them through the Gulf. So, uh, yeah, dude, Austin. I mean, where else? Where else would you go? Pensacola's probably gonna have some thunderstorms. 
There's Alexandria, but they're offline. I don't know which one's closer. I guess we could look. But yeah, we'll, we'll look at Memphis. Um, hour 44 en route. Sweet. So, 25.9. Is what, I'll, is what I'm going to try to aim my software at. Um, but yeah, in real life, we could tell it to block the fuel at that fuel, and it will not change. So anything that's left over, that's not in contingency, that's not in the trip trip burn, is just going to go below the line, and that's going to be uh, kept on the airplane. Um, but SimBrief doesn't have that capability. And that's a pretty basic function that I wish it had. So... Now, what was it, 25.9? We've got to keep that number in mind. We're going to put it back, the CI back down to, let's just say, CI 30. It's got us a 340. Keep that. And let's switch it back to the Gulf route, which we have. Let's look at the alternate real quick. Austin, does it tell us the 300? Oh god, yes, yeah, 300. That's a long. Let's look at Memphis. Yeah, Memphis is not much different. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. And so we, we try not to put alternates that are that daggum far, especially this being a precautionary alternate. Is that our ETA? They're just calling for vicinity showers. All right, so because it's not forecasted thunderstorms, we're not going to tack on such a far alternate. Let's do... Nope. Alexandria. And... Now we'll go PNS. See, and now you're kind of seeing the, the the sporadic thinking of a dispatcher. There's so many things to consider. So we're just going to go with Pensacola since it's a precautionary alternate. It's not required. Uh, vicinity thunderstorms or thunderstorms are not forecasted as of now. So we're going to use Pensacola. It's almost 200 miles away. Um, or the route distance is almost 200 nautical miles. Plus, with all the extra gas we'll be carrying, we should have the range for something better if we need it, like Houston or... Austin, and if we don't have the range, we can go to Alexandria. It'll be an offline diversion, but we'll work through it. So, <clears throat> now here's going to be the trick, is coming back and putting the extra gas needed um, for to have that uh, 25.9 fuel on board. Throw on ATL collar today. I've <laughs> seen that done before. Uh, Alright, so this is giving us a fuel of 21.6. We need a little over 5,000 more pounds of gas to take that inland route. So we'll just do that in the extra. Let's go pounds. It's already almost 1,000. So let's go 65. Yeah, it's a lot of gas. But this is the kind of thing that dispatchers have to do. And obviously, the more gas that we plan, the um, you know the more it negatively affects the airline. Dude, does my math just suck or what? And this is something that we do over and over in uh, in dispatch. We calculate and calculate and calculate. All right, 25.6. That's close enough. That'll uh, that'll put us near. We'll be able to take the in route for sure if we need to. Cool. We got our alternate routing here in the dispatch mark. So we're going to be cruising at a solid 36,000 feet. Hour 35 in route. And uh, we're about ready to start getting this uh, flight underway. G 
27. What are these departure gates? This is horse shit. And just getting everything set up in uh, V Spirit. Cool, that's done. Let's file sim brief with Bat Sim. New Orleans Tower is online. Cool. This is. It's ready. Overlay. gas we use less we get on our fuel bonus <laughs> the fuel bonus that does not exist <clears throat> I think we're just about ready to start prepping connect to fat sim connected charts This time we're going to make it a fast load. All right, so no, ar no arrival, Arnav, runway two. Cool, those are set up. Bam. All right. <clears throat> ready. go. Leg number two underway. Altitude for light level 360. Temperature is minus 46. Flight plan Lauderdale departing off 10 left. Be nice one at the Dolly transition. And 
insert. Nolens, arrival, no arrival. Um, they got. The uh, left to nine is closed. Got to get three Alice not available. Alice from a two is out of service. Okay, that's what I figured. So we're gonna do the R nav two. And there is no star. Secondary copy. YOLO hold <clears throat> compute. Sweet. Red nav. Lauderdale in there. Init. Wind uplink. Triple pause is 51,800 feet. Traffic jump 2528, short final for one zero left. Plan zero fuel weights, uh, 130.0. Standard CG of 30, block fuel 25.6. Cruise flight level above max. Interesting. Must be heavy. Zero point, uh, It's going to be 700 pounds of taxi. Route reserve is zero. Alternate, 3.7. Um, and then reserve fuel is 3.8. We're gonna have a lot of extra gas. Total extra should be let's see fifty minutes plus or thirty minutes. That's yeah, still a bit more than what we'd likely have in real life. Because <coughs> it's gonna be a fort a fast board with that APU on. Got all those bots out of here. Sweet. Thank you, Chase. Appreciate you. Does the Gulf have a tropical storm in the making? Mm, I don't believe so. I think it's just the typical Gulf weather. Let's run a three minute warm up timer for the APU. And just kind of wait until we get that load sheet to get our actual numbers, and then we can throw everything into uh, the McDo, have everything planned, solid, ready to go. To show y'all our route in relation to uh, to the weather, obviously doesn't look great. 
this stuff won't be too big of a factor. And all, honestly, though, with the way that Microsoft Flight Sim has been recently with the tops of the weather, like, we're going to be way above this stuff. Oh, really? So, guys, I don't know if, uh, I, I highly doubt any of y'all know this, but, so Dustin, in the chat, is a real-life meteorologist. So, <clears throat> I think we, it's official. We can say that the Wrong Side Simulation Channel now has a meteorology department. So all weather questions can be directed to our meteorology department. Thank you. <laughs> um, that's uh, that's that's not great. So Dustin, are you familiar with Ryan Hall Y'all YouTube channel? Um, been watching his stuff for a little while. Several of the guys in the uh, in my um, channel have turned me on to him and I believe his video not too long ago it was like maybe five or six days ago he was saying that there's uh, no chance of any kind of tropical development but that was like probably like four or five days ago and the next three to five days is obviously outside of that time frame alright jet bridge has been pulled why are my frame rates dying I think we're uh, pretty much ready to go. Just waiting to get those last numbers. Oh, my load sheet. Damn it. Hmm. Alright, so I guess... Uh, go with this this is not this is preliminary as you can tell prelim it's not actual but it's not giving me the option to select it so we're going to run these numbers as if they are actual 31.3 on the CG and then under the perf See, 10 left, it is dry. Flap config is optimal. No toga. Any ice off. Packs on 153.0. Oh, so it looks like something did change. It's just not sending it to us. Our actual takeoff weight is 153.8. Planned is um, 154.8. So we're actually a little bit lighter. Mac toes 28.5. Damn. On my last. Sticky note. Sorry, right, I got a bunch more. Um. <laughs> Plan take off the four eight. Actual would be 129.0. Then Tosi G is 28.5. First fix. In, take off 19 uh, 9 sweet all right so for our numbers flaps one flex 58 or 
correction 56 145 146 and 148 thrust reduction acceleration climb altitudes 1010 engine outs 1010 I found a, uh, a McDo, like an actual physical McDo that plugs into the computer. Uh, I think I'm going to have to get one of them because all this clicking is kind of old and annoying. Flight directors, all this is good and set. Like it. Fuse on and running. Mini, buck, or correction, departure brief. It's going to be a right seat takeoff aircraft types at 320 CO for test strike avoidance, no MELs or CDLs. Uh, it's going to be a single engine taxi. We're going to uh, taxi over to 10 right. Not going to care to look it up. Uh, weather is a factor. Terrain is no factor. We do have some uh, thunderstorms that look like they're starting to edge a little bit closer. It'll be on our um, climb out portion of the flight. Um, no hot spots, no runways to cross. Um, before V1, it'll be my decision to reject takeoff, come complete stops at the parking brake, call flight attendants for their stations, analyze. Uh, the situation, call for any ECAM actions or merge evacuation checklist as required. After V1, we're going to go flying. Engine out, we're going to hold at uh, YOLO, and we are over max landing weight. We'll speed up, clean up. Engine out is 10-10 uh, off the ground, and we'll come back to runway 10 left. Um, if all goes as planned, we're going to fly the B Nice 1, and our top altitude is 4,000 feet. We're squawking 2,000. Before start checklist. Main stock and tails, onboard and check, cover pets complete, gear pins, covers are removed, signs are on auto, ADRs are nav. Uh, fuel min is 19.9. Uh, We've got 25.6 on board. It's a pretty big gap. Um, altimeters 2997 is set. If we check, window door slides closed, arm beacon is on, throw servers are idle, parking brakes on, transponder is in auto. Before start checklist is complete. Let's release them brakes. Start the push. Bye, Mr. Pushback Tug. Leave him without you. Roll in one. Let's check this message. It's probably the actual takeoff numbers that didn't come. Oh, Spirit Ops. Jesus. One minute late, man. We suck today. Load sheet, there's the actual 128.90 fuel weight. Yep, that's what I got down there. So, 123.8, 29.9, 25, all that cross checks. I like it. Lauderdale well, traffic, Spirit Wings, 657 is pushing back, G7, Lauderdale. I got my coffee. Clock and brake set. Good start on one. Have to start flow. Engine mode set normal. Arm the spoilers. Reset rudder trim. Flaps one. Our trim is 0, 0.0, so we don't have to mess with that. We are in auto, TA, yellow electric pump, and leave the APU on. I don't keep hitting that. Damn it. Let's All right, after start checklist, engine analysis is off, the electric pump is on, rub trim zero, after start checklist complete. I don't know, I actually had to do it hooked up. Oh well, bye! We're out.
auto traffic spare wing 657s taxi and runway 10 left 10 left via tango tango charlie lauderdale We'll start that second engine once we get on the straightaway. Thanks, lady. What should we name our flight attendant? I think we should name her. We should be humans and say, hey, um, thanks, Kathy, or whatever. Karen. Alrighty. Rolling number two. Back's getting stiff. Clear left, clear right. I'm not familiar with him. The area of low pressure over the southeast will move into the Gulf later this week. That could develop. It's pretty low chances right now. It will be rainy and stormy for the Gulf. See? It's freaking awesome. We got our own meteorologist. Uh, but yeah, dude, you should look up um, look up Ryan Hall. Uh, or his channel's called Ryan Hall, y'all. He's another meteorologist. Uh, has a huge live streaming platform. Um, he makes live weather analysis, like, super fun to watch. Um, start that timer. <coughs> uh, I would highly recommend him. Um, he's got a team of storm chasers like uh what's his name um daggummit reed uh, anyways got some legendary storm chasers on his team um like somehow makes weather analysis and like live storm chasing fun go have storm chasers like the other couple months ago we had a dude chasing a, a tornado that literally like it developed 50 yards in front of him like you can watch the dirt and dust and everything getting sucked past the guy and like in his car and so he like backed up let the tornado like go by and then just like followed it down i mean it was it was unbelievable developed on camera live super cool 
Um, definitely check out Ryan Hall, y'all, because it's, it's, that dude just makes weather fun. And he does a lot of good things for people. He raises a lot of money through his channel, and he, and he helps out people who are impacted by tornadoes and stuff. Um, so your views also go to a good cause. Anyways, uh, so let's see. We just did our after start flow. Now, mini brief. We're departing from a 10 left. Gross weight is 155.4. Planned was 153. That doesn't line up. We're supposed to be lighter. How's our gross weight higher? I guess we haven't burned all of our taxi fuel. Um, yeah. Planned takeoff was 154.8. Actual takeoff was supposed to be 153.8. That's weird. That doesn't add up. Anyways, gross weight uh, is 155.4. Fuel on board, 25.4. Flaps, config, 1 plus F, B1 is 145, V2 148, we're flexing 56, top altitude is 4,000 feet, and our first fix is elbow. Flight controls check, full up, full down, neutral, full left, full right, neutral. Flight controls check is now complete. All right, <clears throat> before takeoff checklist to the line, gross weight comparison is complete. Pitch trim is 28.3% uh, CG set, V1, VR, V2, flex. Looking at 145, 146, 148, flex 56. Flaps config, 1 plus F. Flight instruments are checked, flight controls are checked. Economy mode takeoff all green, income status checked, winters on auto, tick has code set, TRA, camera crews advised, mini brief is complete. Perfect timing. Hitting at three minutes now. Uh, let's see. Takeoff runway is one zero left. Confirmed. Fuel min required is nineteen nine. We've got uh, twenty five three on board. Engine mode selectors normal. Bleed packs are set. Before takeoff checklist below the lines complete. Who's ready to go? Auto traffic. Spirit wing six fifty seven is departing off runway ten left. Exiting the airspace to the north on the B nice. One departure. Lauderdale. We ready. We ready. What? What? Two nine nine seven was right. I wanted to go to two nine nine four. Flex SR short out there's blue. Hey, Knox thrust is set. There's V one. Rotate. We got positive rig gear up. Nav, disarm spoilers. Acceleration climb altitude, nose and her down, look positive trend on the airspeed. We got it. Thrust climb climb. Flaps one speed checks, flaps one. Let's 
that going flight direction won't stop bouncing around. Adult star. Carry down up to flight level two zero zero. All constraints. Lot of traffic spare wing six fifty seven is clear, runway ten left. We are exiting the airspace to the north. Final call, Lauderdale. Four thousand all the way to Myrno, Reno. What's this guy doing though? He's climbing out. Got him right there. Not sure who he is or what he's doing. Weird. Every time you zoom in, you can't see it. So I'm, uh, we're going to run through a little scenario <clears throat> that we would do in real life. Jay, dude, I don't know if you've texted me or not. All right, Jay, let me know. Let me know. I want to know. We were talking about you at the beginning of the stream about the test you were taking. Let me know. Spirit Airlines plane caught fire due to one of the brakes overheating after a flight from Tampa. Spirit should have brake fans installed on all the planes. Man, 
like we're never gonna get to this but anyways we're gonna do a little uh a little live exercise all right done with this we're not staying at 4,000 all the way across the daggum Everglades that's stupid Thrust climb, up and climb. Jim! Welcome, buddy. Stopping in for a quick hello. Millions of things to do. Enjoy the stream. We definitely are. And, guys, I'm going to get back to the um, Reed, Reed Timmer. Thank you, Brian. <laughs> yeah, so, Dustin, Reed Timmer is the guy I was trying to think about. Um, yeah, he's got Reed Timmer on his team. Who through one of Ryan Hall's streams, I watched Reed Timmer chase a tornado through my hometown. Like he legit drove right past where my cousin and my sister work, and they were there when he drove by. Um, so it was kind of cool. I was able to like give all my family a heads up. I was like, yo, Reed Timmer's in town. That's not good. Um, yeah. Let's see. Just kind of catching up in the chat real quick before we go through another little little dispatch scenario that I'm going to run y'all through. <coughs> um, let's see. Went storm chasing once in college. It was kind of cool, but also boring. Reed Timmer is very well known. Yep. Also streams a lot on YouTube. I'll have to look him up, Vince. I think I've heard the name before on, on uh, Ryan's channel. Seventy three. Okay, so Jay, what's the minimum um what's the minimum for passing? Seventy five? And here comes ten thousand. Shut those lights down. Shaq, what's up dude? Welcome. Zach came in new to the stream, found out about your stream by watching the blue experience. Glad to see the flight sim community growing. Awesome, dude. Well, I'm so glad that you, you found me that way. I was trying to, to reach people who may not know about Flight Dispatch and might want to chase it as a career or something, as uh, as Jay is doing. Um, if you watched the whole stream, I did talk about Jay, which is EQ in the chat, who uh, just took his ADX today, which is the written, um, or is the, the dispatch written that's uh, pretty much the same as the ATP written for pilots. It's the hardest part of the entire process of becoming a dispatcher, and he just passed the damn test today. Congratulations, dude. You are over the freaking hump. Life is about to get a lot easier. Knock out your oral. Knock out your practical with the FAA. That won't be nothing for you. You'll be just fine. And then, dude, you're off to the dispatch desk. Congratulations, man. I'm so, so, so excited for you. Freaking awesome. Congratulations, man. Oh, that is great. I got chill bumps. <clears throat> Go. Happy, happy, happy for you. All right, so um, let's take a look real quick at uh, let's look at Balanza. All right, now as dispatchers, we're kind of looking at this stuff. We're looking at the active route. Um, right, anyways, sorry Zach, I didn't mean to like. But anyways, dude, uh, I mean, welcome to the wrong side channel, where we fly on the wrong side of the airplane. But we're happy to have you, dude. Welcome aboard. Uh, make yourself at home, and uh, yeah, maybe maybe we learn something. We're always talking dispatch on this channel. Uh, at the very beginning of today's stream, we we dispatched the first flight, which was Charlotte down to uh, Lauderdale, ran through some uh, Jacksonville Center capping and tunneling procedures, and now we're about to uh, now we're about to do a reroute. Um, so when we planned this flight, um, we. We planned it with a lot of extra gas, with the possibility of the Gulf routes closing because the weather's looking like that. The current um, the current ATC ops plan is showing possible Gulf route closures. So um, we planned the gas for an inland route, but um, we are planned over the Gulf, or we filed for over the Gulf. But now we're going to say ATC just. Uh, just rerouted it. So I want everybody to take a quick look at Balanta real quick, kind of look at our route. It's kind of coming up over to Dolly, crossing the Gulf. Obviously, this stuff's pretty nasty. This is probably the worst of it. Um, so we're going to act like we just got uh, a reroute. So next thing we're going to do 
is edit route and shack this is a this is probably a good little tutorial for you because I know last night you were like canceling the flight and da 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 all this kind of stuff so all you need to do to change your route is just hit these little but buttons up here hit edit route and then it'll bring you back to this kind of add flight plan screen hit the flight plan we'll do that bam look at that our route just switched to the inland route so now we need to switch it here on the uh, in the airplane I've actually never done an airborne reroute in here uh, so we'll see how this goes um, we're gonna go direct to smells get us going in the right direction insert and then we're gonna get rid of the rest of this in fact you know we could probably just do this let's go delete secondary secondary flight plan secondary net I don't like this. It's got all this other crap. Present position to smells, then uh, airway Q116. So imagine like ATC reroutes you airborne. You got to go and do all this BS, and then you got to go type out the whole route and send it to dispatch and let them know that you got rerouted so they can ruin your burns. Return, turn. Cablo Defund J2 to SJI Arrival RNAV 2 Slide 2 SGI transition Return And then we're going to go secondary Activate secondary Yep, put us back into heading mode Which is fine I don't even know why I'm doing this. So I can just go direct, smells, insert. Now we're on our route. Nav. Let's keep it going up to 36. Sweet. Thrust climb, open climb, nav. And so now we would have to go type out the whole route. Ugh, this is stupid. Um, so now we have to text the whole route to dispatch and tell Mike, yo, present position, direct smells, and then the rest of the route. Dispatch would come back. They would we'd tell them how much fuel we got on board. So we'd say, yo, we're uh, uh, 10 miles 
a beam LBV fuel on board is 22.7 we send that to dispatch dispatch would go put in uh, LBV smells the rest of the route and then uh, from there um, Naked found your stream. <laughs> yeah. Naked finds my stream like all the damn time. That's so stupid. Um, so yeah, so then the dispatcher would put in LBV, direct smells, rest of the route with the fuel on board and the planned altitude or the current altitude, whichever of the two, calculate, send the burns to dispatch. So or to uh to the flight. Um and that's a function that we can't really do with SimBrief. SimBrief doesn't have the ability to calculate en route uh, burns, which most people like would probably never care to. Um, but in this event, like I wish we could, it'd be kind of nice. Uh, but the total trip burn on this route from uh, Lauderdale is 10.5 compared to whatever the other one was, which is probably far less. But yeah. So it's kind of hard to do numbers but nonetheless we would want to send the numbers if we were dispatched we'd want to send the numbers to the crew and be like hey here's what your burns are looking like it ate up this much gas you've got this much left because it's a much bigger route now per my company's um, COM uh, which is a different manual um, if the route is whoops, if the route is over 100 nautical miles in total distance or lateral distance from the original route, um, then we require an amendment. So we would send the pilots an amendment saying, hey, amendment one, the time is whatever time it is, 1916 Zulu, my initials are Bravo Romeo, ATC route over 100 nautical miles laterally. Send that off to them, good to go. So now, <clears throat> in a wicked turn of events, we are flying the inland route, which will probably take a little bit longer. Wheels up to wheels down to hour 46, so it's really actually not a whole lot longer. Just a few minutes. But yeah, so that is, uh, that's an airborne reroute. And they're really annoying. Like, sometimes I get, I get legit mad. The uh, I'll plan a route, and then ATC is like, nope, we're not doing that, and I'm like, bro, and they'll like sometimes put my flight into worse weather than what I planned them in. <coughs> like my route might not have any weather. Like it just happened to me last week. I think it was uh, Newark to Houston, and uh, put them on uh, the ATC preferred route so it was like the the route that they would prefer you put them on had no weather on it and then they rerouted them a little bit further north and put them through weather I'm sure there's a reason for it but it still pisses me off so uh, back further up <clears throat> back to Zach I've looked into dispatching after uh, hearing your story I do have my FA part 107 drone license that's cool so I'm already somewhat familiar with weather, aviation, airspace. Sweet. Yeah, man, you should definitely look into it. Um, if you can read METARs and TAFs, like that's that already makes dispatch school a little bit easier for you. <coughs> that's one of the things that like it just takes time for your eyes to get acclimated to. So if you're if you're already acclimated to that, then stuff like the one two three rule when determining if you need an alternate or not, um, like that will come very easy for you. Um, so yeah, dude, you should you should definitely look into it if you. Uh, if you don't want to go fly real airplanes, but you like aviation and you want a super cool job, then fly around for free and ride in the cockpit and lots of great <clears throat> benefits and good pay and that kind of stuff. Check out Dispatch. Man, I'm so happy I'm going to go home and drink for you. You know, I'm going to drink too. I ain't doing shit today. <clears throat> so much pressure released, I bet. Now you can go home and just kind of chill, maybe get you a couple flights in on the flight sim. That's awesome. 100 pounds lighter. Shoot, I'm surprised you don't feel 1,000 pounds lighter. I think you answered this, but is an alternate airport always one the airline flies into? Not always. Um, so there's there are there's a list in the company's op specs, operation specifications, that tell 
what airports are approved and then in within that list will also be like what airports are um, regular airports so a regular airport is going to be an airport that we like we have scheduled service to then there's going to be um, alternate airports so there are airports that are only strictly used as alternates they're not we don't fly there like as far as scheduled air service but it is approved to be an alternate and then thirdly we've got fueling airports so those would be airports that like we need to make a tech stop like we're approved to get fuel there um, but again still don't have service scheduled there and then lastly is going to be a provisional airport so it'd be an airport that like um, I'm trying to remember the exact definition of provisional basically like we're we're flying into I don't know um, like we if we go to Washington Dulles but for whatever reason like the airports closed we can go into DC or something like that let me Google the exact so I don't want to lie uh, so provisional airport is an airport approved by the administrator so like the airline for the use by a certificate holder okay the certificate holder is the airline for providing service to a community when the regular airport used by the certificate holder is not available so I don't know like we typically go to LaGuardia, but uh, LaGuardia is not available, so we go to JFK. Something like that. Um, so we have a list of those airports, of what, which ones are alternates, which ones are regular, provisional, and fueling airports. Now, we try to go to airports that we have scheduled service to, because if we have scheduled service, that means we've got, um, we've got you know, ground handlers we've got operations agents we can print paperwork we can get fuel fast you know we we have direct numbers we can call and talk to whereas if we go to an offline station we don't have those we don't have an operations office to call we don't have people there you know all that so it's a lot harder for us to like get paperwork uh, for the diversion recovery so like the leg to go back to the the destination uh, or the original destination um, so it's just hard for us to get service and a lot of times diversions are just a fuel and go so we land get gas get new paperwork and go um, but you know if you don't have people there just getting the minimal amount of services like paperwork and fuel will be pretty hard and, and will result in a much longer delay on the ground than if we went somewhere that we have people at so um, we definitely try to go to an online station if at all possible but sometimes things happen and we can't always uh, do that how often do they reroute? Um, all the time, but a lot of it is kind of on the dispatcher too. If if you got a good dispatcher that's kind of used to trends with like weather in certain airspace and being able, being able to identify like okay, usually when this weather happens here, this will force reroutes. Um, so a lot of it comes to the dispatcher and just experience as well as being on top of the pages that we were looking at a while ago, like the current reroutes and the uh, planned possible reroutes and stuff like that. Um, if the dispatcher is good and on top of things, then it will happen less. But it's very often that ATC will like publish reroutes at the last minute. A lot of times they try to give us a heads up and they say, "Hey, like at 1300Z, very high probability of doing the Ohio Valley to Florida reroutes." Cool. So we know like if we're departing at whatever time to do the reroutes. Um, but sometimes, you know, weather pops up faster than forecast or whatever the case may be. And then, like, we have little to no notice. And then they start rerouting airplanes. You know, we're not ready for it. The worst case is they reroute airplanes and we don't have the fuel for it. And then we got to go back to the gate and get gas if we haven't, if we've already left the gate. So it, it happens pretty dag. I mean, at least, like, daily for, you know, airlines. All airlines are getting hit with reroutes every single day. Uh, but a lot of it's just how well the dispatcher can can see those reroutes coming <laughs> I got back in time for those boys <clears throat> but I seen you got them already <laughs> yeah yeah we got them we sniped them I studied the shit out of weight and balance and didn't get one freaking weight and balance question oh that sucks dude I wish I wouldn't have gotten weight and balance I hated it I set myself up to purposely miss the weight and balance because uh, I knew I wasn't going to get those Hypothetical here, if unfortunately another event like 9-11 happened again, 
and all aircraft were to be grounded, I assume it's dispatcher's responsibility to get all their flights landed. Yes. Um, yeah, so the, you know, like we talked about in the podcast, in fact, actually we may not have talked about it, but, or like to the full extent of, of operational control, but the dispatcher and the pilot in command have operational control. Um, operational control is basically having the authority to initiate, conduct, delay, and terminate flights with joint responsibility. That's going to be with obviously the pilot in command. So when something like that happens, we're going to be the first ones to be able to get to them probably the fastest, as far as like by the masses. Um, you know, ATC obviously can talk to them a little bit faster if they're airborne. Um, but, uh, but yeah, you know, we have the ability to just like we, I probably type up a message and copy and paste it and send it to all my aircraft. I have to do it one by one, but I can do it to actually, no, I do have a way I can send it to multiple aircraft. Um, but anyways, yeah, we would have to, um, get them on the ground and in that event, uh, it's more than likely going to be divert to the nearest like suitable airport for the most part. Um, I try to take in consideration when I'm diverting an airplane, um, altitude and like how long it takes to come down. So for example, if I got a medical diversion, my flight might be like right over Kansas City going to the east, but to get down from like 36,000 feet, we're going to have to spiral and bleed altitude, right? So that's not really convenient. I would rather just send them to St. Louis that's, you know, 120, 150 miles away, and that's roughly how long it takes to get an airplane down. It's, I mean, I think the fastest you're going to look at like 90 feet if they're really like, you know, trying to come down, or not 90 feet, but 90 miles. If they're trying to come down really fast. But nonetheless, like, we want to take into consideration their altitude and, and the distance needed to get down um, instead of just like, oh, they're over Kansas City, so spiral all the way down. So that's probably one of the things I would take into consideration uh, when telling those guys. Um, so that would make, you know, diverting a bunch of flights that are airborne kind of hard and trying to coordinate all that stuff. But um, in that kind of event, man, it's just like, hey, go where you can go. Like, let's try to go to an online station, but you might have aircraft that are like in an area that we don't have an online airport for four or 500 miles. Like they might be sitting somewhere not great for a while. But yes, it is our responsibility to make that stuff happen. All right, so we're at a cruising altitude of 36,000 feet. Let's get those seatbelt signs off. Let the folks move around. Curious, to, I, I want to know what kind of weather we're going to come up or an encounter on this flight because Volanta looks pretty nasty. Like as, as we get a little bit further up into the panhandle, we're going to really start cruising around some nasty stuff. But in recent recent time, I've noticed that the the tops on the weather are not nearly as high as they should be. Like, not even close. Like, you don't even have to try to dodge a single thunderstorm, so. <clears throat> Hello, just got through in the car now. Couldn't wait for the stream. The flight's three and a half hours both ways increase you. Oh, in case you were wondering. Had an uneventful flight up. Until minimums, bird hit just under the nose. Ah, oh, that's a bird strike. Nothing serious, as our airports are even closed at 5 a.m. to 8 a.m. with a low-level bird activity. Wow. Never heard of airports being closed for bird activity. That's different. Huh. But, man, I'm glad, uh, glad nothing serious happened. Is there even a reason, say, an aircraft up north would be diverted into Canada? Or is it always U.S. airport? It depends on the reason for the diversion. Um, if, you know, it's like a, if there's some sort of an emergency, then emergencies dictate for a diversion to the nearest suitable airport where a, sa where a safe landing can be made. Um, and that's pretty much like the verbiage from, like, the FARs. So, um... You know, if you got a, an emergency, especially like a life-threatening emergency where, like, you're having a a critical failure, 
on the aircraft, like you lose an engine or, you know, something crazy, then it doesn't matter where the hell you're at, you're going somewhere. Um, but now if, uh, you know, if it's not an emergency, then, um, you know, preferably you want to go somewhere that's, like, for example, I don't know, if we're doing, hmm, trying to think. Let me look at a map. Um, so, for example, if we're going to Cancun, Cancun has thunderstorms over the field, can't get in, then it's likely, like, we would probably try to maybe go to, we could go to, I don't even know how you say this, Meridia, um, but that would be an offline station diversion, so that might not be optimal, so in the event, we might decide to go to San Pedro Sula, because that is an online station. Um, we'll have people there, but it's a different country from Cancun. So usually in that scenario, if I, if I remember correctly, we're just going to keep all the passengers on the airplane. We're not going to deplane. Um, get our gas and then new paperwork and try to get out of there and head back up to Cancun as long as the, it was when the weather allows. Um, so the main part of that, just because of customs and immigrations and all that kind of stuff, we'll just keep everybody on the airplane. Um, I've even known that at times they've done this, they've had to keep the plane like isolated to an area um, just because, you know, it was unscheduled and it's, um, you know, it's not a, it's full of people that weren't, you know, from other countries that weren't supposed to come to this country. Uh, things get a little bit hairier when you start mixing like international um, stuff. So optimally, as far as customs immigration goes, it would be better to go to Meridia. But nonetheless, because it's still an international flight coming in from the U.S., we still probably wouldn't deplane. We'll keep everybody on the airplane and then just head to Cancun when we can. Um, so for the most part, tr try to like, like... It's definitely better if we left the U.S. and we came back to the U.S. Like if we're halfway en route, something happens, um, it's probably better we just turn around and go back to Lauderdale since we left the U.S. But if we were going to Cancun, we were too close, and we didn't have the fuel to go back to Lauderdale, then, you know, it's just, there's so many different factors and, and variables. Um, plus, I got people I can coordinate with, my shift coordinators, so I can hit them up, say, yo, uh, we're probably about to divert. We got the gas to go San Pedro Sula, if that's better, since it's an online station. Um, but if not, you know, we can go to Meridia and sit there. What do you want me to do? And they can give me input on the logistics of what they want. I'll take that in consideration and, and go that way. So it's just it's just a lot of different factors to that scenario. It's not like a real clean cut. <clears throat> if last week Etihad had 787 hit a flock oh flock on taxi. <laughs> well, that's a I've called that the bird's fault, man. If airplanes taxi and like the birds need to just go on and get out the way. Stupid birds. I will admit the tops do look quite a bit higher out ahead of us. So one reason, one thing that makes flying this route and planning this route kind of a pain in the butt is that all through here is a lot of military uh, and warning areas. So you can't like just cut straight across where there's no weather and come in. You pretty much have to stay on route. We can like once we're over land. Whoa, I didn't. I mean to hit that. Anyways, once we're over land, um, we can kind of start skirting some of this stuff. So we might go through like, uh, I don't know, around the Tallahassee area, maybe cut over towards Destin, and then ride the coastline here, and then kind of turn back on course when able. Um, if this weather's like, you know, high and in our way, I doubt it will be. But realistically, on a real life flight, we're not, you cannot cross out here at all barely skirt the coastline at best um, so we might look into that depending on what the weather does out ahead of us if the warning and military areas are closed or cold then ATC can reroute them straight across it but we cannot file it and also look at this thunderstorm starting to pop up around the New Orleans area so it's a good thing that we threw on an alternate problem is right now our alternate 
has a thunderstorm next to it. So, out of uh, out of curiosity, let's just take a look and see what. Actually, I guess we don't need to do it there. We can come here and see what it's showing. Huh? <laughs> actually, the weather's good. Zero eight zero at five knots, ten satchel miles, clear skies. Temperature twenty six, two point twenty four. Altimeter thirty oh five, or thirty thirty fifteen, not thirty oh five. Wow. That's what you get when you try to talk cool. Um, let's look at actual radar. This radar on Valenta, I don't know how how behind it is. Oh yeah, no, there's. I'm just going close. PNS is over here, so that cell is just to the west of Pensacola. I'm surprised it's not saying um, like lightning distant to the west with all these lightning strikes. It's not showing anything right now. Keep an eye on that. We need to change our alternate. We will. But it is an isolated cell, so it could potentially get out of the way and, and not be affecting the airport around the time that we would need it. Because you also have to factor in, too, the time it takes to, like, you take into account your hold fuel. So if we've got an hour of hold fuel, we get to New Orleans, can't get in, hold for an hour, plus the en route time it takes to get from New Orleans to Pensacola, which would be... Uh, 35 minutes so hour and a half total so yeah like Pensacola might be getting hit with a isolated thunderstorm but is this the sale is probably not going to be there an hour and a half later so you know take that in consideration when looking at the alternate now if the alternate goes illegal based off of the um, based off the, the visibility and ceilings and such that's a different story but as far as just an isolated thunderstorm on the field as long as it's, we don't think it's going to be there when we actually get to the alternate then don't really care <clears throat> I sometimes go plane spot at Cincinnati and they sometimes have truck going around with propane cannons shooting off when birds become a problem it's pretty cool to witness and hear oh that's that's neat I didn't know they did that <laughs> give me that job I saw a video on YouTube. There's a guy's job that like uh, there's a very poisonous, like old rock quarry full of of like water. It's like full of poisonous water, and birds will land in it, and it can kill the birds and, and cause a lot of issues in, in the environment. <clears throat> so this guy has a job of just sitting with a rifle and when a bird lands, pops a shot off, makes the shot land, you know, kind of close to the bird but not super close. To scare the birds off. Give me that job. Just sit around and shoot at water all day. <laughs> Easy job. The engine any ice on as we're getting into some of this visible moisture. Uh, we are going to simulate real world weather. Yep, right now we have on real world weather. Now, I use that term lightly with Microsoft Flight Simulator because it doesn't seem to be very real world in my opinion. Like right now, we should be seeing, um, we should be seeing some pretty high tops around over here, and uh, they, they don't look very high to me. They almost look, is that like snow down? No, it's just the sat textures. But yeah, we should be seeing some pretty high tops and some some nasty weather out ahead of us. Like that stuff out there might be a little bit of it, but uh, yeah, it's just, it hasn't been painting the tops as high as it should be. Now I sent a thing in to the uh, Microsoft Flight Sim forums showing I was cruising over a thunderstorm tops up to 55,000 feet. And I was right over it and it was like a beautiful day. There were tons of other cells around me at 25,000, 35,000, 45,000, 55,000 feet. But everything was mighty low. It's a little irritating. But we'll see what some of this other stuff does as we get near uh, a Bing Crestview. 
sent you a pick on Discord, Raj. Oh, wow. Oh, no, down. You're going to take off. Dang. Dang, they even went to, went back to the terminal. Or if they they probably went to make sure they didn't ingest anything. Oh man, that's a delay too. They left they left or they returned back to the gate at five thirty three and didn't depart again until eight oh three. That sucks. Yeah. Daggum birds. So this aircraft does not have ice detection system, so we'd have to look. Uh oh, Jack Center online. They are not gonna like that we are rerouted. Uh, let's go pre-file. Blah blah blah. Gotta refile this. Gotta change the departure time. What time is it now? 19:41. Actually, we'll just leave that. I don't know if it's going to file since it's like it would technically in real world to be invalidate a flight because it's old. Be sure you are stationary on the ground. Try again in 96. Oh, yeesh. All right, this is about to get interesting. Jack Center. 3592. Jacksonville Center, Talent 42 is with you, flight level 42 Jack Center Squawk 1060. Good day, Jacksonville Center, Air Canada 1081 with you at flight level 330. Missed my hold. Air Canada 1081, Jack Center Squawk 1067. 1067, Air Canada 1061. Canada 1081, we're in contact uh, with the VIAP intersection. Um, maintain flight level 330. Maintain flight level 330, Canada 1081. Talent 42, uh, south altitude. Currently on flight level 146. Talent 42, Roger, VFR. Correct, VFR out to the Gulf boat. Okay, Talon 42, Roger, your radar contact. I, I didn't realize you were VFR. I just clicked on you because I did. You're, you're not. I think you're squawking. I don't think you're squawking VFR. Are you squawking VFR right now? Um, currently, I'm squawking code that you just gave me on Charlie. What were you squawking before that? Uh, previous from flight following. Okay. All right. Yeah. If you weren't squawking VFR, that's why you got a ping from me. If you're squawking VFR and you don't want services, just squawk 1200. I'm not going to bother you. Uh, did you want flight following? Stand by, guys. Wait and talk to this dude. <clears throat> Sorry, who is it? United uh, 1296. United uh, 1296, Jack Center, squawk 1040. 1040, United 1296. Jack Center, Jackson, United 1032, uh, flight level 400. United 1032, Jack Center, squawk 1030. 
United uh, 1296, right of contact, two zero miles southwest of the Charleston VOR, maintain level 340. Point two four two four zero. You might twelve ninety six. Thank you. At a ten thirty two radar contact, uh, four zero miles north of the Columbia VOR, maintain level four zero zero. Ten four zero zero. You might twelve ninety six. Jack Center Spirit Wings six fifty seven crossing Georgia. Uh, we are on a different route than what was filed doing a live stream, and we were mimicking a uh, reroute due to Gulf route closures um, in real life. So I can shoot you that uh, reroute if needed. Okay, those two guys at once, the guy who just spent a lot of time on frequency, what's the call sign? Spirit Wing 657. Spirit Wing 657, Jacksonville Center, Squawk 1046. 1046, Spirit Wing 657. And there was somebody else chiming in, who was that? American 103, right there. We got a 103 Jack Center Squawk 1073. Roger, 1073 in the box. Throwing 657, we're contact, 300 miles southeast of the Seminole VOR, maintain level 360. Are you just going, uh, you just going over SJI for the slit? That is correct, Spirit Wing 657. Right, 657, clear direct to the SEM VOR, Sierra Juliet, India. Clear direct, Sierra Juliet, India, Spirit Wing 657. Cool, well, I just gave us a direct. Uh, you know, 1296, uh, I just saw the weather and it looks like we have something up in front of us. Is it possible if we could get back around it just for, uh, yeah, All right. I'm sorry, man. I was typing. What was the call sign again? Uh, United 1296. Okay, United 1296. Uh, what do you want? Right deviation? That looks good out ahead. Get the engine uh, yeah, off. If you get a right deviation if possible, that'd be appreciated. Thank you. All right. Uh, do you have the. Uh, yep, Chase. The weather was at 55,000 right, feet. We see that pretty deviation often approved. as do dispatchers. You the, do you have any of the stars going into Tampa? Are you are you RNAV capable? Are you uh, fully capable of Slant Lima? Oh, yeah, we're fully capable. Uh, Turn this guy down. Give us an arrival, but um, we're, we, could, we could put one in. Okay, just let me know if you have the day date. Uh, dates eight, yeah, affirmative, we have dates eight. I guess it might be dates nine, now let me look. Which, which dates do you have, the eight or the nine? No, we have eight. Uh, let's see, if they had you, right, for you here in a minute. dispatcher, they would have reached ahead of time. Yeah, <clears throat> and that's always the thing too, is like, in the real life, obviously if ATC gives you a reroute, then all the other controllers and the following sectors will have your current route. For this situation, he doesn't, um, just because uh, obviously I did the right, reroute, well, not I him. The, uh, Banff transition on that. For everybody else who, uh, everybody else who wouldn't know, obviously you would know. I assume. Uh, is that Bravo Alpha <laughs> November Foxtrot Foxtrot Banff? Bravo Alpha Alpha Mike Foxtrot. Uh, so Wes, we are going uh, by yeah, real world yeah, we weather, so whatever Microsoft yeah, Flight they, Sims they, they, interpretation yeah, of they, real life weather is, somewhere. is what we're going to be landing in. Uh, affirmative, we have JJ. So Chase, how long does it take you to make a flight plan on Simbrief? Um, depends. Depends on how realistic I'm trying to be. If, um... If not, you know, like, super realistic, like, going, digging through, like, all the reroutes and ATC stuff and weather and whatever. If I'm just kind of like taking a quick look, yeah, you, know, you know, maybe like three minutes or two minutes. Like, you know, SimBrief is so quick and easy. You can you can generate a flight plan so fast. It just takes a minute or two. <coughs> um, so what's the specialty being shown in today's stream? So, Jay, on the first leg today, uh, we flew Charlotte to Lauderdale. And on that one, um, demonstrated what capping and tunneling is. So typically, post-COVID, Jacksonville Center is uh, is pretty low-staffed. So 
they will uh, initiate what's called um, capping or uh, or tunneling, which basically means there's an airspace flow program. We'll see if it's still active, and if it is. This is good for you to know as you're about to start the role of a dispatcher here soon. So this is uh, the JAX. Say the FCA JAX, because this is a pretty normal one. Sometimes they put numbers in it. Um, so this whole little line here is represents the airspace flow program. If you're going southbound and you cross through this line, uh, you will get hit with a huge delay, be given a wheels up time, and your flight won't be able to leave until they get close to that wheels up time, and then uh, they'll be allowed to take off. The way to avoid this, because this line extends so far, it's pretty hard to route around. You either have to go to Gulf, uh, to the to New Orleans, like if we're coming south, go out to New Orleans, and then go south of it, or go out over the Atlantic routes. Which also, usually when this is happening, they also put out a they put out a notification that uh, AR routes are not allowed to Orlando, Tampa, Fort Myers. So then this whole this whole part of like trying to route around is taken away from you. So now you're forced to go through this line. The way to avoid a delay is to do tunneling or capping, which means you have to go below it. So the altitudes on this uh, on this airspace flow program is 17,000 feet up to 60,000 feet. So we have to be 16,000 feet or lower to stay below it and avoid delays. Problem is, you have to fly the entire route at that altitude. The whole route. So if you're coming from Boston and you've got to go through here and you're going to Orlando, you got to fly 16,000 the entire route. <clears throat> that can cause weight and balance issues, or not so much weight and balance, but just weight issues with taking that much gas, flying that low for that long. Uh, might have to kick some passengers for that. Um, but yes, that's that's tunneling or capping. So we flew our first leg at 20,000 feet because this actually this whole flow control program wasn't issued yet, therefore we didn't have the altitude, so we just flew at 20,000. Um, so that's what we did for the first leg. This leg we're discussing. Oh hey. New Orleans Approach is online. Um, yeah, so now for this leg, um, we were doing, we did reroute. Let's see if I can find the current reroutes. Uh, we processed, what? I've never seen this message before. We're, so for the current reroutes, it says error. We're sorry, but the request cannot be processed. The application is currently busy. Please check back later. That's weird. Anyways, um, ops plan. If I can refresh this current ops plan. All right. So this is the thing that we were looking at for this flight going across the Gulf. So en route planned uh, was the so they, they actually they just changed it. So it was Q100, Q102, and Gulf routes possible. I mean probable. Now they just changed it to the Q100, Q102. So they're just two specific airways, not just all Gulf routes. And they're probably trying to keep some of the Gulf routes open so they can avoid, like aircraft can avoid that um, Jacksonville airspace flow program we just talked about. But, um, let's see, en route, constraints, I don't care, en route active. Yeah, so it's not on there. Um, so anyways, so we planned the this flight. We initially planned it across the Gulf. It was like, you know what, though? If we were to get airborne and get a reroute, back inland instead of crossing the gulf we definitely want um the fuel to fly that route so we then put the route inland <clears throat> determined how much fuel that would take to fly that route and then came back switched the route back to the gulf but put as much gas as it would take for the inland route so then we took off we we're flying and we we're about to go out to the gulf and then i simulated that we just got a reroute so then we plug the reroute into the airplane turn northbound and now as you can tell we are northbound originally we were going to come straight out across through all this weather but then we pretend like we got a reroute and then boop here we are and now we're just cruising on along so the next flight i don't anticipate any issues um as you can tell it's pretty clear between new orleans and dallas 
There shouldn't be a problem there. New Orleans approach is 25-5. Uh, we'll wait because we're going to be in uncontrolled airspace for a little bit. We'll be on Unicom. Boom, 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 boom. Say 69 Echo or 68 Echo. Either way, he's talking about one of these two. So we got these two convective segments. Um, So anyways, he's just talking about this is uh, current. I don't know how pilots who are airborne and don't have Wi-Fi are able to look this stuff. The dispatcher can send it to them. Um, each dispatcher is a little bit different. Some dispatchers just copy and paste the SIGMET. For me, I will tell them where the weather's at in relation to their route, how it's moving, and how they can get around it. I try to paint the picture with my words instead of sending this because then they have to take this and plot it on the ND, and it's a pain in the ass. Most of them won't even do it. So... Uh, I don't. Uh, I don't even. Uh, I don't send it to him. <laughs> what the hell is the point of that? Um, so the point of that J is uh, they're trying to distribute some of that traffic volume to other controllers at lower altitudes to reduce the workload on the controllers, and they're able to handle more aircraft. So they'll do the low altitude stuff, and when we put aircraft down low, that'll put them into other controllers' airspace, and then they can handle the traffic, and we don't have to uh, take a delay. Unfortunately, got to head out to a dentist appointment. Oh, that sucks. I hate going to the dentist. Here shortly. Hope to catch some more live streams from you. Thanks for answering all my questions I had. You're absolutely welcome. Have a great stream. We will do our best, sir. Thank you for coming and hanging out with us, and, and I do look forward to seeing you on, a, on the next one. Spirit Wings. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> What's up? We are flying Spirit Wings today. Spirit Wings uh, 657. Uh, with the amount of knowledge you have on navigation, we'd love to see you try that manual RNAV approach sometime. Yeah, absolutely. Let's see. Yeah, if you can um if you can send me like info just the name of the airport and and like the you know, like whatever I would need to know to do it in the uh, Discord uh shoot it to me and um I'll definitely definitely look into that or do it more than more than likely Well, we will be doing a uh, an RNAV approach into New Orleans. I don't know as much about the RNAV approaches. I know how to shoot them in the airplane, but as far as like properly briefing an RNAV approach on the plates, I don't know as much about. So my uh, and look at this stuff. So on Volanta, get rid of this bat sim. So all this stuff that we're essentially flying through here tops are up to uh, 45,000 feet. I don't see no 45,000 feet. All that looks like maybe 20, 25. I mean, it's down there. So it's pretty irritating. Should find a good RNP approach with mountains and hazards. Well, that's what Hashim's uh, offering us. Sure, I'll do that. Even I still don't <laughs> have that approach unlocked, but managed a good landing in, in the vid. So the one that's in the video, 
uh, that we didn't finish. Um, that's the same one you're talking about me doing, correct? Just saw your merch. <laughs> Crack me up. <laughs> Shaquille O'Neal. Dude, he's got he's got some of the best. Shaq's awesome. I got a shirt of his in my closet, actually. Um, speaking of merch, good friend Hillbilly Gypsy, who's been helping me out with the Discord, uh, also started just kind of tinkering around with some uh, t-shirt ideas. Let's see if I can find the one he came up with. So if y'all were there for the podcast with me, Blue, and, X- and XP, the Blue Experience, uh, that was on a few days ago, I uh, mentioned the words <laughs> Feel Good Fuel. Which uh, has somehow taken off, and uh, a lot of people found that phrase to be funny. Uh, in the dispatch world, that's very much something we talk about all the time. Like, oh, they, you know, it's just feel good fuel. We don't need to put that fuel. It's not going to be burned. It's not for any constraints. It's just feel good fuel to make you feel better because you got more gas on it. So I mentioned that. Blue and XP thought it was hilarious, and um, Hillbilly liked it as well. So he put it on a. Uh, on a shirt, uh, which this is obviously this is just mock-up stuff, um, and we're gonna take more of a look into this um, later on. But maybe someday there'll be merch on the channel, maybe. But this is kind of what he uh, put together. So we got feel good fuel on the chest. So we'll probably make it some sort of a phrase like "Where's my feel good, feel good fuel?" or um, you know something like that. And then obviously uh, the new logo on the back. Um, so we're just kind of taking around with some ideas and that kind of stuff, but uh, I thought y'all would find this funny, with the whole feel-good feel. Feel-good feel is a very real thing. Smooth rides, good weather. I don't want good weather though. Like I want weather to deviate around and like actually fly like it's summertime. Okay. The one in the vid is the same one. Okay. Sweet. Um, so, probably something like the t-shirt I'm wearing. This was just a, a mock-up that one of my coworkers put together. He's into graphic design and stuff like that, and he had some t-shirts laying around. So, he uh, he put this one together for me. Put the wrong side simulations and, like, little logo stuff that I had. Um, so, anyways, he, he put it together, and uh, it was just in time, too. It was just in time for the little uh, um, podcast. So super uh, super happy about that. Got us an A cars message, um, but likely they'll they'll probably be pretty different if we really wanted to. I'm sure um, I'm sure I can get my buddy David at work to to make a bunch of these. And this, in fact, it's probably hard for y'all to tell, but this shirt is actually brown, which doesn't go with the color scheme. Uh, but again, he just had shirts laying around. This is what he chose. So um, yeah, I'm sure we can make something. If if somebody really wanted to buy a shirt, I'm sure we could come up with something. But uh, we're still pretty early on in that process. I mean, we've got, you know, what, just north of 300 subscribers. I don't think people are usually, like, pumping out merch until they have, you know, a lot more subscribers than that. But, again, it's about y'all. It's not about me. If it's something that y'all want, then, you know, I aim to please. Uh, so we are going to be arriving at Charlie 16. Charlie 16. Hopefully I can remember that. Keep APU shut down when able you don't tell me what to do. I am captain. I really I'm the first officer. I'm not the captain. Repping the three stripes, baby. I'm that senior first officer that was like, nah, I'm not going to upgrade. I don't care for the responsibility. I like my schedule and I make enough money. We're good. I'll stay in the right seat. <laughs> Got feel good fuel? Keep calm and get some feel good fuel. I like that. I like it. In fact, maybe we should start a, a channel on the Discord for feel good fuel suggestions or something like that. Because uh, I am not the most creative minded person in the world. 
There's nothing wrong with making or with doing it early. Make a new normal. I like that. Make a new normal. That's probably a pretty good uh, like life phrase, depending on what the new normal is. A new normal could be something bad, I guess. Let's see, New Orleans. Rivals expect GPS runway to approach. Still cool. <clears throat> what did you miss? Um, I don't know. I don't know when you when you left. Probably not much. If you missed my landing in Lauderdale, you didn't miss anything because it, it was quite bouncy. Um, but I will show you this because Shaq, you you got a pretty good creative mind. Um, this is what I was just showing on the channel. So Hillbilly was coming up with some uh, shirt ideas, and I mentioned Feel Good Fuel on the. Um, d darn, didn't mean to delete my own messages. <laughs> Um, anyways, we're looking at putting some sort of phrase about um, feel good fuel, and uh, like I need my feel good fuel or where's my feel good fuel, which is a phrase I mentioned on the podcast. So uh, just kind of tinkering around with some ideas and stuff. So if you have an idea for a good phrase that involves feel good fuel, then uh, feel free to pitch it. And I was saying I might need to create a channel on the discord for feel good fuel phrase suggestions Jeff give me a give me a suggestion for a, a good phrase that involves feel good fuel because you're such a creative troll I'm sure you can come up with something funny <laughs> but yeah dude we're still going we are uh, Lauderdale to uh, New Orleans we probably would have been there by now had we not rerouted ourselves but we simulated um, ATC, ATC shutdown of Gulf routes. So we rerouted ourselves airborne. And now our flight's a little bit longer. After this, uh, we're probably going to head on up to Dallas. And then I guess we'll be done for the day after that. Dallas. Nav. <coughs> be El Nav B Nav. Boeing 657 off long radar services terminated frequency change approved. Have a good night. Over to Unicom. Thank you for your service. And you have a good night as well. Spirit Wing 657. Yeah. Pow. And then approach is gonna be. Oh, we got tower and approach. What you know about that? 25.5 Hold that shift button down and it goes a lot faster. 25.5 Alright, uh, let's see, we want Povey, P O VVI I want to shoot that off of 196 cool perf next next three ten at six Temperature 34-2983. And the decision altitude is 377. Isn't nice. Boom, boom. 
boom, boom. So we do not have FLS installed on this aircraft. FMS landing system, which will make an RNAV look like an ILS on the PFD, but it's still just uh, an RNAV. So <clears throat> the ILS push buttons will remain off. Let's see. The only thing different in the vid is I hand flew it a bit longer. Ah, I got you. Okay. About 50 miles out. So again, everybody, if you're unfamiliar, <coughs> Ashim in the uh, in the chat is flying this flight. Can you imagine? coffee <clears throat> you know it Jeff uh, the feel good feel we're talking about actual gas Jump Sater just say, watch it, bro? Pretty sure he did. Watch it, bro. <laughs> watch it, bro. <laughs> That's what it sounded like. Yeah, it's 
disregard, disregard. Terrain ahead. That is freaking. I would love to jump seat on that. That is, <clears throat> that is awesome. So again, anybody who didn't follow, um, Hashim in the chat was the fo, <clears throat> the fo in that flight or on that video. That that approaches. Freaking sick. Alrighty, start looking at some landing stuff. Again, I'm not very good at uh, briefing up an RNAV. Uh, giving my my best. So we're on our descent now, coming on the slide uh, slide to arrival, bottom altitude for turbojets cross uh, slide at 11,000 feet. So we got 11,000 in the FCU. We are planning the RNAV to runway two. So now that's what's in the uh, in the real ATIS. I don't know what... I should probably listen to the ATIS. We'll see what they're going to do, but for now we're planning on um, RNAV 2. Final approach course is 16 degrees. Final approach fix is POVI 2,000 feet. Uh, for the LNAV VNAV, decision height is 337 off the ground. Touchdown zone elevation is 2 feet. Uh, we have a standard 3 rear glass slope. Uh, approach lights, or no approach lights. Pappy on the left, uh, climb to 3,000 on the go around. Direct Pepu. And uh, minimums again, 377 off the ground, and then uh, one mile visibility. Weather is plenty good enough for that. Off runway two, high intensity runway lights, single line lights, uh, approach lights. Uh, what is L? I don't know what this LDN is. Whatever. Pappy on the left, grooved R RBRs are reporting. Um, three degrees, glide path on the Pappy. Uh, 5,932 usable feet. We don't have a glass slope because we're not on the ILS. Disregard that. 150 feet wide. And uh, it'll be a left hand exit, probably on Tango. From there, we're going to, I think it's to Charlie 16. This is going to be the first concourse once we exit, which should be at the very tip. Just cross check that with the A cars real fast and then check the ATIS.
Charlie 16 it is. Cool. Alright, uh, let's, let's see. Adis is going to be 27.55. Pick up the digital ATIS. Now that I think about it. Um, arrivals expect GPS from me to approach. Nice. Info Bravo is current. Cool. Over to Gulfport, Mississippi. Weather well, definitely looks like it's kind of building up out ahead of us. Might make things interesting. Plane won't feel good without fuel. That's about right. <clears throat> but now, feel good feels kind of like uh, an expression we use if, like, a captain calls and wants gas that he we don't think he needs. We're like, ah, oh, it's just feel good fuel. Like, you're not gonna need it. You're not gonna burn it. Just want want it to make you feel good or feel better. <clears throat> awesome, dude. I appreciate that. That'll make uh, doing that approach a lot easier, for sure. But Chase, no, I, I was not jump seating. That was uh, Pakistan International Airlines. And uh, Hashim, the guy in the chat just below you there, uh, he was the one flying. Lead in system. Ah, see? I mean, for the most part, we kind of don't really need to know that unless it's like, unless it affects the minimums. I guess so I'm kind of uh Yeah. So I guess the minimums are the same either way. If the Elden lead what was it again? Lead in system. Yeah, I know dum dum. Muda slide to Dang it. If I can't hit the right buttons just... good afternoon New Orleans approach spirit wing 657 at flight level 210 crossing mood on the slide 2 with Bravo Rookie mistake. No one's approach. Good afternoon. Spirit Wing 657. Just crossed through flight level 200. Uh, five miles from Celery on the slide to arrival with Bravo. During 657, the uh, one's approach, how you doing? I don't know. There's a flash from Spirit Wing 657. Spirit 657, you're better contact position as a port of in case level 190 and descending. Welcome. This is from Checks. Thanks for having me, Spirit Wing 657. Turn that up. He's not very loud. Spirit 657, the New Orleans, uh, it is information Delta is now current. The New Orleans altimeter 2983. You can expect vectors on a Yankee runway to approach. 2983, and we'll expect vectors on a Yankee to runway 29, Spirit Wings uh, 657. Runway uh, 2. 
Uh, roger that. Runway 2. Thanks. That's what I thought. Zero, 618, you're climbing out of my airspace. Houston Center is offline. You're ready to service terminate. Frequency change your drives through. You have a great rest of your day and enjoy Orlando. Thank you. Um, over to you and come for 618. Have a good day. Alrighty. All them damn instructions. Delta 2983 2983 and 2983 cool status page check and approach checklist brief is complete approach stable by 1000 feet econ status is checked seatbelt signs are on minimums uh, 377 set. Engine and ice, 1 and 2 are off, and altimeters 2983 set. Let's check this complete. Alright, so next is going to be New Orleans Tower 195. Approach is uh, Spirit Wing 650, 657. Spirit Wing 657, New Orleans Approach. I was just about to call you for descent. Descent, I maintain 6,000. Down to 6,000, Spirit Wing 657. Got a quick question for you. Shoot. Uh, looking at my charts, don't have an RNAV Yankee to runway 2, just have RNAV. That works. Uh, if I said RNAV Yankee, my mistake is, yeah, the only issue with approach. Uh, the island is absent. No worries, just want to make sure uh, I wasn't missing some things. Yeah, no, I'm thanks. Alright, so we will be expecting vectors to the RNAV runway 2, which we'll need because we've got this real ugly acute angle turn, and airplanes don't do very good with acute angles. So we're going to plan auto brake low. Spirit Wing 67, fly present heading. We'll fly present heading, Spirit Wing 67. Thrust idle, open descent, and heading. I don't want to. I guess it has to go into. Moving off at 10,000 to slow this baby down. Yeah, I guess the uh, airplane can't be in descent mode if we are in heading mode. Bearing 67 flighting 200 vector for final, or vector for, yeah, something like that. <laughs> 200 vector for final, spear wing 657. Vectors for downwind. Vectors for the downwind. Spirit Wing 67.
Hey, we got uh, descend and maintain 4,000. That's right down. Then 4,000, get right down. Spearway 657. And open this end. Well, we got some bugs on the windshield. So I was thinking the special part of of, two, of your channel is based off the right seat, so instead of the addition of feel good fuel, why not have your famous quote flying from the right side? You look at the shirt <coughs> from the front, <coughs> you see the wrong side on the back, and flying from the right side. <laughs> kind of like that. I like that little concept. And the beauty, too, is, is we can always make more than one shirt, right? So, you know, we can always have a bunch of different ideas and a bunch of different shirts. Tell you what, you look down there, you might find your Cajun boy on a P row. Going down to go catch some alligators and some crawfish, you know. Go make some jambalaya. All right, man, have a good one. And again, safe flight, safe travels. Speed on star. Stone the boards. Alright, let's go selected speed. Approach phase confirmed. Strong fifty seven descent and maintain two thousand. Then turn right heading, or correction. Turn right heading uh, 290, then descend and maintain 2000. 290 on the heading, and then down to 2000, Spirit Wing 657. I'll do my best, buddy. I, again, I appreciate it. I'll definitely have to probably practice that a couple times before going on stream. Now, the last time I flew in the New Orleans, I think I had the same approach controller. And then tower... No, actually, I had a female approach controller, and I think he was tower. I guess we'll see what happens this time. It was cool having a, uh, a lady controller don't hear pretty voices on the radio very often. 2,500. Alt star. B and E plus 10, so flaps 1, speed checks, flaps 1. Do this first. Missed approach altitude three thousand.
Maps 2. Uh, 657, you're two miles from Royal, turn right, heading 360. Maintain 2000, still established on the final approach course. You're cleared on that GPS from my two approach. 360 until established on the RNAV 2. Or maintain 2000 until established on the RNAV 2 final approach course. And uh, was there anything after that? Spirit Wing 67? Cleared for the approach. Cleared for the approach, Spirit Wing 67. <clears throat> Alright. App Nav is armed. Looking good so far. Steering 657, the power is 19.5. Thanks for telling when I turn you to. Thanks for turning when I tell you to, and you have a great day. I do my best. Thanks for your services. Over to Tower 19, 5 Spirit Wing 67. Mm. Rollins Tower, Spirit Wing 657, RNAV 2. Really 657, Rollins Tower, hello, runway 2. Wind 3 1 there at 6, clear to land. Good land, runway 2, spare wing 57. I'm not sure what really went wrong there, but uh, airplane didn't seem to capture final lap. Now we're about to get busy. Some hand flying and I need to manipulate some other stuff. Make it work. Manage speed. Get her oh, down. Tower, this is Southwest 644 in Texas. Southwest 644 information Delta, runway 2. Taxi via Golf, Foxtrot, Echo, Sierra. Cross runway 2, Niner at Foxtrot. Call Foxtrot and give me that last one. Golf, Foxtrot, Echo, Sierra. Alright. Foxtrot, Echo, Sierra, cross runway. Let's see how this runway. goes. Bubba bar 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 is the word. Yeah, I don't really know what's up with the, uh, the GPS stuff on the, on the plane. Haven't had this issue before on our nav approach. So when in doubt, just disconnect and hand fly. Yeah, that vertical deviation should be right on right now, and it's it's not. Hundred above. Four hundred. Left quarter Minimum. headwind. Continue. Three hundred. Two hundred. One hundred. Fifty. Forty. Thirty. Twenty. Retard. Five. Let's go, let's go, let's go, engines. Come on. Positive rate, gear up. This one's spoilers, flaps three. Rolling Tower, Spirit Wing 67 going around, runway 2. The Wing 6, 57, fly runway heading, climb maintain 3000. Runway heading 3000, Spirit Wing 67. Uh, confirm, 44 clear across 2 and a half via function. Oh, 
Southwest 644, cross runway 29 or at Foxtrot. So let's climb altitude. Bird Week 657, contact New Orleans approach 125.5. One two five point five. We'll talk to you soon. Spearing six three seven. All right, flaps two. And flaps one after the takeoff. Gears up. Flaps track. Feedback set. APs off. After takeoff checklist complete. Let's go. Three thousand. New Orleans approach, hello again, Spirit Wing 657, went around runway 2, floated a little too far. Spirit 657, New Orleans approach, you're better contact, there is the ground. Uh, we, uh, we floated and uh, used about half the runway, so we went around. Currently on runway heading and at 3,000 feet. And here I was thinking you were good at this. Spirit Wing 657, turn right heading 110, maintain 3,000. 110, maintain 3000, Spirit Wings 657. Thanks for hitting my ego. 110. <laughs> and 3000. Alt. That's a pretty clean missed approach, though, right? I mean, other than the engine's taking forever to throttle up, which is a little scary. <sighs> yeah, <clears throat> I kind of I pulled back a little hard, like I was I was coming out the ground a little a little quick, and I pulled back pretty hard, and that uh that made us float. And from the get go, like. Those last 100 feet, I was like, there's something about this approach I'm not liking. So, uh, Shaq, we're going to gate Charlie 16. God, we got plenty of gas, though. Jesus, we got 16,000 pounds of gas on board. Well, we can go miss, like, 20 more times and then go to Pensacola or Houston or something. Shoot this off to the. Bearing 67, turn right heading uh, 200. 200 on the heading, Spearing 657. Spearing 67, you can expect the RNAV GPS from it too. We'll expect the RNAV GPS from it too, Spearing 657. Good day, this is Southwest 644, with you out at 2200 MSL. Southwest 644, New Orleans, departure, you're ready to contact, climb, maintain 15000, Quadrac Lafayette, BOR, how you doing? I'm still 15000, Direct Lafayette, we're doing good at you. Doing great. Go to ten, get back down to flaps one. Spearing six fifty seven. Heading your on the vector through the runway two nine of the laser. And say that one more time, please. Six uh spirit wing six fifty seven. Heading your on the vector through the two nine of local laser heads up. Ah, Roger, gotcha. Spirit wing six fifty seven.
<laughs> Normally I try to land. Uh, Wes, I guess the weather did. Um, there are some isolated cells around New Orleans, but nothing over the field. They're both kind of on each side of Lake Pontchartrain, uh, which has kind of been out of my out of my way. So yeah, so far, weather has stayed away. Nothing like a good go around to get the juices pumping. <laughs> Kiwi controller, what's up, dude? Yeah, um, so what happened on that was uh, my airplane didn't capture the final app on the GPS. And so it flew past the final approach course. So I had to like hand fly. And from there, it just kind of broke down. I got in a pretty good position, but then like the last couple hundred feet, is like, yeah, I'm just not really, really liking the approach. And uh, came down a little quick. Ground came at me a little fast. Flared a little too hard, floated, so we actually go around. So uh, that's what had happened. We're glad you're here, though. We'll try this app nav stuff again. Let's go. We are selected speed. Go activate approach. excuses <laughs> I mean it's what happened it was my fault that over flared it's all on me roger that we'll go down 2000 we'll expect the approach a little further out spirit wing 657 and maybe this time the airplane will behave slower down to 180 It's a pretty day up here. Just sent you the VFR charts for the airport and our special company approach procedure list. Awesome, man. Thank you. That'll make for a fun stream. All right, 2,000. We're going to get her on the ground this time. Even we got to slam it on a little hard, but we're going to get her on. But again, we got a ton of gas. On star. This airplane, I don't know, I, I mean, it burns like a Neo. Spearing 657, the oh. vector for final from red heading 290. 290, vector for final, spear wings to 657. I'm using my mouse and my push to talk. Jack, he may not be on anymore, but uh, he's oh, beating plus 10 flaps 2. Um, he flies for Pakistan International Airways or Airlines, whichever one it is. Uh, he said earlier he started on the ATR, then went to A300 or 310. I think A300. Now he's on the Airbus 320, about to go to 777. set us up perfectly this time airplane better do what it's supposed to do a while ago we were on the glide path like two red two white and we were still showing high on the vertical deviation yep good old PIA absolutely <laughs> Drew yeah we're still flying I'm trying to finish leg number two but it's kicking our ass and now it's showing vertical deviation low Six, 
57. Let's give this one another shot. Turn right at a 360. You're two miles from Royal. Maintain 2000 till establishment of final approach. Course cleared on out of GTS for my two approach. All right, 360 on the heading. Maintain 2000 till established on the approach. And we are clear for our nav runway two approach, and we'll try to get it right this time. Spear wing 657. I suck at instructions. Let's try this. I wonder if this will help. No nav intercept. Let's try this. Povey direct. Povey. Should. There we go. App nav. Cool. That helps us out. Make app happy, would you? Yeah. So we're in app nav, looking for app final. That should happen once we cross Povey. Five. It's a different guy, so don't be surprised. Don't mess this one up. Take care. <laughs> we'll try our best. We'll go to 19.5. Have a good one. Spirit Wing 657. Tower, Spirit Wings uh, 657, crossing Povey on the RNAV 2. Spirit Wing 657, part 2, electric boogaloo, runway 2, clear to land. Clear to land, RNAV, runway 2, Spirit Wing 657. Final app, finally, here we go. Man of speed, gear down, spoilers on, flaps three. And flash full. Landing checklist, cabin crews advise, auto thrust speed, auto brakes low, ECMMO landing all green. Landing checklist is complete. All right, Blake, don't suck. <clears throat> this is two days in a row I've had to go around on a live stream. This is the 1225, type Airbus A320, <clears throat> flying through your airspace. Okay. EV1225, New Orleans Tower is who you're talking to. Is that your intention to be speaking? Because I don't see my scope here. Airplane. We are stable. I believe I am nearby. I am um, on my way to um, Alpha um, Atlanta. Okay, EV uh, 1225, uh, go ahead and contact New Orleans uh, approach slash departure on 125.5. I can't see you on my scope, so you must be above my scope. Go ahead and contact me there. Going to 125.5 for E1225. Retard. 
time. Spoilers versus Green Diesel. Seven, welcome to New Orleans. The left one able and stay parking. Going over to Charlie 16, Spearing 657. Spearing 657, over to Charlie 16 via Sierra Hotel and Golf. Sierra Hotel Golf, Spearing 657, thanks. Alright, let's hold her here real quick, clean her up. Probably gonna get a hot brakes on that one. Uh, let's see. that and on otherwise he won't be able to see us flight directors off not really sure if I like uh, v1's profile on here feels like it, it kind of exaggerates the touchdown although I don't know how hard I hit oh my god negative 263 A little bit of a firm landing, but again, like on the ILS, like 5,900 feet of usable runway, pretty short. Probably should have been in a uh, medium brake on that one. Speaking of, let's check brakes. That's wheel. Okay. Good as of now. Sierra Hotel Golf. Confirm engine two, engine two confirmed. Engine two shut down. We got birds on the taxiway again. I didn't feel nothing. <laughs> That's it, slam it. <laughs> Not gonna lie, I'm gonna miss flying on the right. I get promoted to captain in APL. You know, I'm gonna get promoted to captain in APL here pretty soon, ish. Um, when I do, I'm still gonna fly from the from the right seat. I'll just take. I'll just be a, a right seat pilot with the captain's pay grade. Now, can you imagine if I had to go fly in the right seat? Like how much that would just throw everything off on the channel like the whole branding is is based off of flying in the right seat New Orleans Tower 655 Papa Delta request November 655 Papa Delta go ahead I would like to depart VFR to the west uh, 655 Papa Delta November 655 Papa Delta Roger say aircraft type Cessna 152, uh, 655 Papa Delta. Can't tell what that one is. That's 16. November 655 Papa Delta for departure's sake. Do you have a destination in mind or are you just going west? Give me one second. I believe I have an airport selected. Uh, I'll get back to you on that. 655 Papa Delta. 655 Papa Delta, Roger.
Alright, <clears throat> parking brake is set. APU is on. Engine one shut down. Wait, New Orleans like... Tower, 655 Papa Delta. I'm going to George Bush Intercontinental uh, in Houston, Texas. 655 Papa Delta. 655 Papa Delta, Roger. Are you got a specific cruise altitude or you want me to assign you one? Uh, whatever you got for me for 655 Papa Delta. 655 Papa Delta, how does 85 sound? I can work with 85, 655 Papa Delta. 655 Papa Delta, expect Negative 263. Yeah. I'm gonna mess up my average landing Roger rate. V Spirit. Uh, five, 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 five. <laughs> Parking checklist. Slides disarm. Engines off. Seat belts off. Exterior lights are set. Ice protection's off. Fuel pumps off. Yellow pump is off. Chalk signal is uh, received. And parking brake is on. Parking checklist is complete. November 655 Papa Delta, you requesting flight following? Well, that's number two. Yeah, two of three done. Five, five, Papa Delta. Maybe this kind of gives y'all an idea of like what uh, what it's like whenever you know, pilots have to fly like a three-leg day. Like, this is a relatively long day. My girlfriend's going to be calling any minute, too. All right, November 655 Papa Delta, VFR clearance ready. Oh, wait, she already copy. did. Ready to copy, 655 Papa Delta. All right, let's... Let's kill this real quick and we'll uh, just kind of briefly overlook a couple pie reps and then uh, we'll get set up for our final flight which should be the fastest one it'll be the fastest to plan the fastest to fly quick and easy Nola to Dallas And let's file a flight plan with Huh? Oh. Out to ten feet. Uh right now it's vertical speed, negative six. Oh okay, that's the go around. Bad spirit picked up uh negative two sixty five on touchdown. But hey, you know, short runway like that. You ain't, you ain't trying to grease her. And we were we were dead on in the damn touchdowns on that one. So say what you will about how hard. I don't care. I was in that touchdown zone like a pro after going around. <laughs> like not a pro. All right, let's see what, uh real quick, what Pilot's Life says, how it scored us. Long book. Oh, not a hundred. We got a 96 out of a hundred. What do we, oh, and it does this every time on go arounds. It's a so probably can't see this, but so on approach because it's because we haven't landed, it still thinks we're in approach phase when we go around. So max pitch angle, obviously on the climb out, you're going to exceed 15 degrees. So that's a fail. And then indicated airspeed. Because obviously we're flying faster than 200 knots on a go-around. Those two were failed. So really, in all essence, nothing was done wrong. Um, but that's just the way that a pilot's life reads. Because it thinks that we are in approach. And it, I don't think it can compensate a go-around. So, whatever. Live with it. And then V-Spirit. <sighs> V-Spirit, I got burps. I don't know why. Uh, let's see what they scored us as. Now I know there's going to be a few things that... I usually get points for that. I didn't get points this time because we uh, we didn't like give the full amount of time to board. We did a fast board. Um, you get extra points if you you know, have 25 minutes or more on the on the uh, pre-flight stuff like that. Let's see what we got on this one. So here was our filed route going across the Gulf. Obviously, we re rerouted ourselves to simulate a uh, an in route reroute. Um, this is obviously well over 100 nautical miles lateral difference, so if we were dispatchers, we're definitely going to be sending that amendment to the, uh, to the crew. Uh, let's see. Single engine taxi arrival, we got 10 points for that. Connected to the network, 30 points for that. Single engine taxi departure, 10 points. Engine shutdown in the gate, 10 points. Uh, a fair landing, 20 points. Good, you get just 10 more points, would be 30. Engine start sequence, 10. Uh, and then... Between the flight time was between an hour and two hours, so we got 20 points for that. Total of 210 points. 
Usually it's gonna be like between 210 and 250 or so. Roughly what you typically get. We'll move this back up here. And uh, yeah, so now would be a good time to take a little break. I'm gonna go call my girlfriend real quick. I'm gonna pee, for those of y'all who need to know. Um, and then we're gonna jump back into it and we're going to uh, head over to Dallas for our final leg of the day. And again, tomorrow for anybody who's just uh, just joining, uh, please like and subscribe. Uh, obviously, it helps the channel and all that, you know, typical good stuff. Um, but uh, on top of that, tomorrow going over to Jetline Systems, I'm gonna go pay my boy Tony a visit and the other nice folks at Jetline. They got some really cool new hardware, some flight sim hardware that I'm gonna go uh, play around with and uh, take some video and pictures of. And uh, upon their approval. I'm going to show all that stuff on the channel. Um, so if you like, especially like DCS stuff, like they, the stuff that they have is phenomenal for DCS. A lot of like center stick, fighter type stuff. Um, not so much of uh, the airliner type stuff, although there's a few things I got my eyes on that I think would, would complement my setup pretty well. Um, so if you're interested in that, subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell so that you make sure that you're uh, able to catch that when we get that on. And uh, other than that, give me just a few. Obviously, the passengers got done, and uh, we'll plan our second flight. Should be a pretty quick and easy flight plan uh, session, and then we're gonna uh, get to going. One thing I do want to do though is I want to recycle my eight air. So, so we're gonna let these kind of chill for a second. When we come back, we're gonna realign. Uh, it's, that is a thing that they do in real life. You want to recycle your eight ears every. Uh, couple of flights or so just to get everything make sure you're, you're still aligned and got your got your GPS accuracy sweet all right give me just a few and I'll be right back to you guys where's the be right back button there it is
All right, <clears throat> let's plan our our last flight of the day. Plug my iPad in. This thing is going down. Resetting the sim. Nice fresh start for it. Seems like it does better. Once I go a few different legs, it starts to uh, drop on the frame rates and stuff. So while that's resetting, we're going to plan and spatch this flight. <clears throat> Alrighty. So we're going to be operating Spirit Wings 2868 New Orleans to Dallas. Uh, we're going to be departing, what time is it now? It's 21.17. Let's just call it a solid 22, hopefully before that. Nice. All right, <clears throat> so this should be a pretty quick and easy one to, uh, to plan. Oh, we got Dallas Center online. Nice. Cool. So, <clears throat> to start off with, um, see, I never want to leave it auto. We'll calculate that once we come back to it if we need to. So, starting now, we're going to go off of departure runway. Obviously, from the inbound, we know that uh, they are on single runway operations, uh, departing off runway two since 11 uh, is closed. So, got two in the box. That works. Now, let's take a look at Dallas. DFW, arrival. And they're reporting simul, simultaneous visual approaches to runways 13 right, 18 right, 17 center, 17 left. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to plan, I prefer 17 center. So what we'll do is we'll plan 17 center and we'll also put 17 left in the secondary if we need it. Yes to that. Uh, we'll call it 15 minutes on the, part, on the tax out. It should be roughly 400 pounds. Got our 10 minutes of fuel below the line. Uh, let's see, V Spirit's calling for. Uh, we got 148 passengers booked. So I'll throw that in there. And then I'm just going to get my calculator out. And 148 passengers times 40 pounds a bag gives us uh, 5.9 on the freight. Got that in there. Cool. Now we'll just do a quick little prelim run. See what that's looking like while that's going. We'll just take a quick little look. Oh, looky there. Low level wind shear. Dallas Love. 600 feet. 737 reports low level wind shear plus minus 10 knots on short final runway 13 right. Interesting. So we should definitely take a look at um, 300 time and route is an hour. That's a good altitude. It doesn't usually pick a good altitude for short flights. Um, so the weather in DFW, we depart at 22, we're getting there at 23, and they got a one line TAF. Winds are 100 to 8, greater than 6, and few at 8,000. So good, good weather. I'm not really sure why they got low level wind shear in uh, Dallas Love. Usually that's going to be associated with gusty winds, and we don't even have that. So it must just be a, a freak little incident or isolated little occurrence. <clears throat> cool. So let's, uh, I like 30,000. We'll lock that in. Um, got 100 point. So what else we got? Check the OIS page. Make sure nothing else is going on. Shouldn't be out that way. Nope. No ground stops. No flow programs. That's good. Uh, let's see, en route active, just Ohio Valley 1 to Florida. We're not coming from Ohio Valley, and we're not going to Florida, so we don't care. Northeast of Florida, so we don't care. These we pretty much see almost every day. Um, AR route closure is possible. doesn't matter because we're not out there. Gulf routes, don't care. Florida swap, we're not in Florida. It's pretty much all this we don't care. Denver, none of these. Just nothing. Cool. Staffing trigger. I don't know. Button. Current reroutes apparently doesn't work. Let's take a look at uh, Dallas's um, arrival rate.
Charlie 16. All right, so for landing around 2300 Zulu, this is, uh, here's 2300. They can take 30 aircraft in a 15 minute block of time, and they have six arriving. A little bit higher before, <coughs> a little bit lower after. Um, if we were to be an hour late, uh, we could run into some issues. As you can see, they got a nice spike in arrival demand, and it's over their max arrival demand. So that could uh, potentially cause some problems, but we should be landing about an hour prior to that, so not really worried there. Uh, so really no, other than the isolated scatter thunderstorm cells that are en route, nothing to really worry about. We'll tack on a little extra gas because there's any weather deviations, uh, and also probably if I suck again and need to go around. Uh, so we got our 10 minutes below the line, 45 minute reserves, we'll throw in a little contingency fuel, we'll call it 15 minutes generate see what this gives us for our landing fuel and let's see <clears throat> so just looking at the summary oh we got okay so we don't need that get rid of the alternate don't need it generate yes cool all right New Orleans Dallas no alternate cruising 30,000 feet hour and 10 minutes en route uh, block fuels 13.4. Oh, that looks good. That's got us landing width 6.2. Minimum landing fuel for planning purposes is 5.5 in this airplane. And we are above that. So we are ready to rock and roll. Overlay back up. There it goes. Overlay. Just kind of getting everything uh, back in line. Cool. And we'll do. Yeah, I'm gonna try and get this overlay to pop back up. There it is. Pow. Sweet. All right, guys. Sorry to ignore the chat for so long. Back to y'all. Uh, do I see anything at Charlie 2? Let's take a look. I right, need to actually connect first. Connect. 2868. Connect. Uh, see a jet blue. Let's see what we got. It's Bravo eight, Bravo six. Oh, what we got over here? Oh, I see an American airplane over at Charlie two. We got Frontier. Got all, all kinds of folks. Yes. All right, let's get out of here quick. I know y'all don't want to watch pre-flight shit for a very long time. I'm at 30 and pre file flight plans filed booking what oh yeah none Charlie 16 
refresh. Got it. Start flight. Cool. Flight started. We're going to roll fast. Alright, aircraft is boarding. At to AOC menu, ATC request, pre departure clearance. Can we get it? Uh, let's see, KMSY to KDFW. NKS2868. Call sign Charlie sixteen. Adis. This is the first time I tried doing this online, so I'm curious if this is gonna work. Uh, D Adis info echo. A three twenty. Station KMSY, I guess. How sick will it be if we actually get a PDC like through the CPDLC? That'll be that'll be sick. Flight of nets. Pre-departure clearance. What have we got? Clearance request received. Standby. We'll see. I'll be surprised. Okay, a net. Yeah, clear, clear. Flight number NKS twenty eight sixty eight. Wow. CI five. Jesus. Nope. We're gonna go CI twenty five. Cruise out to three zero zero. Temperatures minus thirty two. Flight plan. New Orleans departure. It's going to be direct Alexandria off runway 2. And then DFW arrival ILS uh, 17 center. BRE 1. And peanuts transition insert. Cool. Looks good. Secondary copy active. I'm going to do DFW, arrival, ILS, 1-7 left. All that looks right. We'll have that in the backup in case we need it. Uh, let's see. 
three minutes left on that. Let's go ahead and get this going. And that's uh, so wind up plink. And then tropos, top two two. Clear. Net. Five to two. Smokes. Tabin over. Zero fuel. It's one thirty three point eight. Planned. Slash thirty for the standard. Block fuel. We're looking at thirteen four. Taxi zero point four is good. Route reserve zero. No alternate. Reserve fuel, 3.8. Looks good. Altimeter is 2.981. Just bear with me, guys. Trying to get all this set up so y'all don't have to sit there forever. I'm watching a whole bunch of nothing. Towers 19.5. Two. Busy B4, Area 41, Roger. Are you taking the intersection departure? No, nope, we're going to full length. Alright, Busy B4, 41, Runway 2, line up and wait. Runway 2, line up and wait, Busy B4, 41. Jet Blue 2520, departure, see ya. Contact departure, good day, immediately. All right, on the uh, we don't have a sit, so I'm just taking whatever they give us. Constraints, constraints. Boom, boom, boom. Hello, Tower. Spirit Wings 2868, looking for PDC you enable. I'm right, heading to Clear for Tag. I'm busy B441. Hello, Tower. Spirit Wings 2868, looking for IFR or uh, PDC actually you enable. We have info echo. Fairwing 2868, uh, expect PDC for IFR clearance to down forward. Cool. All right. Uh, plan takeoff weight is 146.8. Fuel weight, uh, 337, 338. Sweet. Good afternoon, Tower to 2293, radio check. Busy B441, over to departure, see ya. 441, see ya. Last aircraft calling, uh, say again. Tower, good afternoon, Delta 2293, radio check. Delta 2293, I uh, hear you 5x5, five five. how are you reading? 5x5, five five, thank you. Take off, it's 12-1. Oh, pretty message. Load sheet. We need the actual. Mass, let's go. And load sheets. All right, 133.8. So it's as planned. 
Takeoff weight's 146.8, so as planned. This is a 2CG. North Tower, front 240, 1967, IFR clearance to Las Vegas. And a... Frontier flight 1967, IFR clearance on request number one, standby, expect PDC. 291. Sorry guys, been ignoring the chat, trying to get going. To dry opt. November Mike Lima 2A to expect delay, stopping departures. Stopping departures, interesting. Critter 533, uh, GPS runway 2. 1. Fast aircraft calling, see call sign. Critter 533. Critter 533, sorry I didn't see you there. Uh, New Orleans Tower, good afternoon, runway 2, clear to land. Tell you what, we're going to do a toga takeoff with the isolated sails around. We can catch some wind shear. So let's go. November Mike Lima 2A to expect delay holding departures per departures request. One of flex 20 40 40. Requesting push and start facing south. Southwest 1703, the push to start is at your discretion. 10. Push and start at discretion 1703. Alright, that's set up. Now let's take a look at the PDC. Oh, uh, let's see. Squawk 2765. Good afternoon, Lawrence Howard, up to 2293. Echo, request to an iPhone through an international airport. Um, so 2293, uh, no flight plan file, please refile. Sorry about that. Initial altitude now, cruise flight level 300. Good afternoon, New Orleans Tower, American 1675, RNAV runway to approach. Uh, American 1675, runway to Cleveland. Cut land runway to American 1675. Tower Spirit Wings 2868, got a question? Uh, Spirit Wings 2868, uh, go ahead. On the PDC, initial altitude says now. Uh, doesn't have an altitude. Can you give me an altitude we can expect, please? Spirit Wings 2868, weird. We must have refreshed our files. Uh, you can expect initial 4000 and then your final intent. Roger, 4000 and final intent. Spirit Wings 2868. Pow, pow, pow. Critter 533, welcome to New Orleans. Left one able and say parking. Left to Charlie All right. and we're <clears> going <throat> to the gates. Critter 533. I think we're pretty much ready. Critter 533, Roger. Thanks to the gates via Sierra Golf to any gate. Turn that down. Golf, uh, to the gate, Critter 533. All right. <clears throat> Departure brief. It's going to be a right and seat takeoff. Three. Aircraft type is a 3. That's loud. Flight Aircraft type is a 320 for tail strike avoidance, no MELs or CDLs that affect the performance of the aircraft. It's going to be a single engine taxi. Taxi route will likely be Hotel Golf Sierra to runway 2. We have to cross runway 29. We got a hot spot at Sierra. And uh, Spirit Wings 2868, uh, or sorry, it's, no, I had it right. 2868. Uh, I have a quick little correction for you whenever you're available. Roger, ready to cup. Spirit Wings 2868, additionally, the, uh, I guess the PDC is just broken today, so I'm going to stop using it. Uh, it says your departure frequency is still with me. Uh, departure frequency is on 125.5. Hmm, are we on 19.5? All right, so departure frequency you said will be with you, which is 19.5. What was it about 125.5? Is that no longer going to be departure? Uh, no, Spirit Wings 2868, the departure frequency is uh, 25.5. It says in the PDC that the departure frequency is with me, and that is incorrect. 
Ah, copy that. Okay, I'm tracking now. So we'll, uh, we got it. Thank you, sir. Spearman's 2868. Cool. Frontier Flight 19. Thought he had a, a reroute. Um, right. So, uh, no terrain. Weather may be a factor with the isolated scattered sails in the area. Um, before V1, it'll be my decision to reject the takeoff. We'll come to a complete stop, set the park and break, call the flight since their stations, analyze situation, call for an ECAM action, or emergency evacuation checklist as required. Um, after V1, we're going to go flying. Our engine out procedure is going to be, uh, we'll just vector ourselves on a heading. We'll speed up, clean up, engine out. Altitude is 10-10 uh, off the ground. We are just over max landing weight. By the time that we would burn some gas, we should be able to come right back. And landing room would be runway 2. If all goes as planned, we're going to fly uh, our vectors direct to Alexandria. Top altitude is 4,000, and we're squawking 2765. Departure frequency is complete. Get everything buttoned up. And I think we're good there. Before start checklist, maintenance on tails, onboard and check, copper press complete, gear pins, covers are removed, signs are on, auto, ADRs are, nav, min fuels, uh, 12.1, and we've got uh, 13.4 on board. Altimeters 2981 is set. IFP check, windows or slides closed, arm beacons on, throws over, idle parking brake is on, transponders in auto. Before start checklist complete. November Mike Lima 28. I need you ready to go here. I got an aircraft on final. Roger that. November Mike Lima 28. Runway 2. Fly runway heading. Clear for takeoff. Runway heading. Clear for takeoff. November Mike Lima 28. Tango 8. Alpha 1703 is ready for taxi. I'm sorry, frequency is blocked. Can you say that again, please? Delta Tango 88. Delta Tango 88. All right, guys. Two, sorry. <coughs> we did, uh, just Delta Tango 88. We did have a, uh, engine failure, engine 2 failure. Is there a specific place you'd like me to go after, uh, landing? Delta Tango 88, uh, take the full length of the runway. Uh, there's a taxiway at the end of runway 2. <laughs> the head vote that never moves up. That's right. Also vote third leg. Yep. I'm about to take that sucker now. Purified Productions. Good landing, by the way. Awesome. I thank you. It's a little firm, but put it right on the uh, right on the landing spot. I can't talk when I have people in my head. Uh, one more leg. One more leg. One more leg. Throwback Spirit livery to that. Yep. Got that. Was rocking that Skittles. Too bad I already liked. <laughs> Sweet. Do you see anything at Charlie 2? Yep, sorry. You find two shack. Nice. Hurry, we're going to damn word in. Now, New Orleans head out to Vegas. Sweet. Cat Mitchell, what's your uh, call sign? Yes, come give me more traffic. Woo. <laughs> That's going to be on. We are ready to copy those with 2293. Delta 2293, clear to Orlando as filed. Climbing chain 4000, expect flight level 3710 after departure. Just 8x. Departure is on 125.5, got 2764. Okay, Delta 2293 is clear to Orlando International Airport. Rio! 4, expect flight level Back. Rio, if you're not busy, just come fly with us, man. <laughs> Feel good fuel? Yep. Feel good fuel. Fuel that uh, pilots want that don't need. Ah, sweet. Okay, I got you. 320 at Charlie 8. But nice. Got a little group flight going. Dude, we ain't never going to get out of here. Tango Tower, I think Mr. Aviation request taxi with Echo. 
November 872, Whiskey Tango. I didn't have anything here. You'd plan to do circuits today? Advise appropriate ground control for taxi and runway assignment. Tower, when you're not busy, uh, Spirit Wings 2868, ready to push and start. Spirit Wings 2868, uh, Roger, stand by one. November 872 Whiskey Tango, it's going to be a little bit difficult to get you on the pattern, but uh, we can make do, we'll have you on the runway 2 pattern for right course traffic. Um, do you plan to depart at any time during the uh, pattern here? If power gets too much, you could just do a westbound departure. November 872 Whiskey Tango, I would appreciate that a lot. Um, <laughs> if you'd like, we can set that up for you now. That'd be great, thanks, too, Steve. Whiskey Tango, uh, November 8th and 7th, too, Whiskey Tango, say aircraft type. Bro, this is busy. I've never been on VAT, so I'm going to be this busy before. It'll be fun when we get going, but that's going to be the question, is when the hell are we going to get going? American 1675, uh, what runway would I expect for takeoff? American 1675, it's in the Aedis, runway 2. Okay, thank you, sorry. November, oops, yeah, sorry, November 872, Whiskey Tango, uh, cleared into the New Orleans class Bravo airspace, maintain VFR at or below 3,500, it's Glock 2763. Clear into the class Bravo, maintain at or below 2,500, it's Glocking 2763, it's 872, Whiskey Tango. And 872 Whiskey Tango, apologies, forgot to give you departure. Departure is on 125.5. 125.5, thank you. Whiskey Tango, Spirit Wings 2868, clear of runway 2, currently on Taxiway Sierra, going to the holding bay. We might need uh, some maintenance out here. <laughs> uh, both of our engines uh, almost failed, so thanks. Or you ran out of gas. All right, go ahead and get over to that holding bay. We should be able to have aircraft pass through there. You're just a 8320, so we should be able to get people through. But uh, if not, just let us know. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Spear wing 2868, Scott Mo, Charlie, when able. Oh, let's go. Boom, boom, boom. Tower, Sierra, uh, November 342, Romeo Yankee at General Aviation. Request taxi with Echo. Uh, Sirius uh, 342, Romeo Yankee, New Orleans Tower. Good afternoon. No flight plan. Um, so Purified Productions, I said NOLA Tower. stands for uh, Roger, New Orleans, that. Louisiana. It's a nickname. Wing 2868, push and start on to golf is approved. Face east. Push and start on the golf approved. Face east. Spirit Wings 2868. Face east. Now I got to... New Orleans Tower, Delta Tango 88, currently in the holding bay. I'll be waiting all right. for a couple of minutes <clears throat> to get a status report on our Breaks released. Thank you for all the help, Delta Tango 88. Delta Tango 88, not a problem. New Orleans Tower, Frontier Flight 1967, we are ready for push start. Frontier Flight 1967, push and start onto hotel is approved, face south. Push and start on the hotel, face south, Frontier Flight 1967. Why ain't we going? Southwest 1703, cross runway 11 at Sierra, continue to activate Sierra. Cross runway 11, one, one, continue down Sierra, 1703. Got spurt wings next to us. Question starts. Seventeen oh three. It looks like the winds are now going straight down runway two nine. Um, can we take off runway two nine? Seventeen oh three. Southwest seventeen oh three. Technically, if we were simulating it, uh, runway one one and two nine are unavailable as they're currently extending them. Um, but we'll just pretend today. Southwest seventeen oh three, runway two nine, flag runway heading clear for takeoff. Clear for takeoff runway two nine seventeen oh three.
Pocket break set. Good morning, Star Delta Tango. Yeah, we had some technicians come look at it. Uh, they resolved the problem, uh, and they uh, cleared us to uh, resume our uh, path to Jacksonville. Uh, what would you ask me to do from here? I'm currently at the holding base. Delta Tango 88, let's get you back down to runway 2. Taxi straight ahead on Sierra, cross runway 11 at Sierra. Taxi to runway 2. Via Sierra, cross runway 11, Delta Tango, thank you. It was towered. Spirit Wings 2868, quick question. Uh, departure's not holding any more departures, correct? Spirit Wings 2868, affirmative. Copy, thanks. Alright, we're going to roll number two. If he would have said, yeah, we would have uh, done a single engine taxi. But I don't think uh, we want to do that. It's going to be a pretty quick taxi out of here. I'm going to go ahead and fire up two so we're not holding them up since they're pretty busy. Last thing I want is to be holding short of the runway while we're waiting on a three minute timer and all that stuff. So we're just going to fire them up. Sears November 342, Railway Yankee at General Aviation. Request taxi with Echo. I have a flight plan now. Sirius 342, Romeo Yankee, uh, Roger, standby one. I have our request number two. Roger, thank you. Oh, I see Shaq. Southwest 1703, contact departure. Good day. Contacting departure 1703. Good day. I could start on two. Spirit Wings uh, 554 IFR on request number one. Step by. Flaps one. Well, that's done. Tango at signature. Could you get a taxi for me too? Boom, boom, boom. November 872. Whiskey. Have to start flow. Engine analysis is off. Electric is on. Or correction off. Red trim is zero. Mini brief, real quick. Departing off runway 2. Gross weight 147.0. Fuel 13.3. Flap config 1 plus F. V1 is 120. V2 is 140. No flex. Top altitude is 4000. First fix is Alexandria. Flight controls check. Full up. Full down. Neutral. Full left. Full right, neutral, rudder, full Number left, three, four, two, full Romeo right. Yankee, VFR clearance, uh, ready, advice, ready to copy. Uh, ready to copy. Number four, two, Romeo Yankee, uh, cleared into the New Orleans class, Bravo airspace, maintain VFR at or below 2,500. We'll kind of turn our nose a little bit, maybe they'll see us and know that we're ready. Uh, Roger, clear in the Bravo airspace, uh, maintain 2,500 below. Thank you. November 342, Romeo Yankee, I need that squat code confirmation. You're in a Bravo. Uh, apologies. Say again, please. Uh, squat code is 2755. Roger, squat 2755. Two Romeo Yankee. No one's tower. Spirit Wings 2868, ready taxi. Spirit Wings 2868, uh, A320 traveling uh, uh, left to right on Sierra. Follow that A320. We'll follow that A320. Spirit Wings 2868. Here we go. And towers, uh, Quaker 2-3. <laughs> did you say you're ready for taxi? Yes, sir. Ready for taxi. Are you able to turn left on hotel there? Yes, sir. Okay, Quaker 23 left on hotel, uh, drop down via Sierra and hold short runway 11 for runway 2. Hotel Sierra will hold short 11, Quaker 23. Spirit Wings 554, I have for clearance ready to and ready to copy. Spirit Wings 554, ready to copy. Spirit Wings 554, cleared to Orlando. Uh, let's see Bob. Shaq. Climb maintain 4000. Shaq Lack. Finally, rolling. On we thought this was going to be the fastest and easiest flight we did today. Nope. Could you the squad code one more time? Clear left squad and right. Code is 
Serving 554, clear to Orlando as filed. Con 4000, expect flight level 37010. All right, Russell Compares Plate Pitch Trim is 29.8% uh, CG set, V1, VRV2, correction 29.1% CG set. These guys throwing me off. Because you'll be on golf. Call me for push and start. Call you for push and start. Serving 554. Pitch trim, 29.1% CG set, V1, VR, V2, flex, is uh, 120, 140, 140, no flex, flaps, config, 1 plus F, flight interest check, flight control check, economic uh, takeoff, all green, economic status check, bridge moisture is on, auto tick has code set TR, camera cruise about mini brief, complete, don't need no checklist. Affirmative, your flight plan seems to be old. Okay, we refiled. Is that correct? American 1675? American 1675 still says you're departing Houston Intercont and arriving New Orleans. Uh, that's how we're it says I'm departing New Orleans. I'll just restart the flight plan and give it to you again. Mm, give it I'll to you again. Me. New Orleans, nope. Tara, Delta Tango 80, holding short runway 2, requesting a uh, takeoff clearance. Delta Tango 88, uh, runway 2, flight runway heading, clear for takeoff. Fly runway heading, Delta Tango 88. Uh, runway 2, clear for takeoff. Thank you, Delta Tango 88. Tower, Cirrus, November 342, Romeo Yankee at General Aviation. Request taxi with Echo, West Departure. Cirrus 342, Romeo Yankee, Squawk Mode, Charlie. That's what Charlie, uh, to Romeo Yankee. American 1675, refiled the flight plan. Hopefully that's right. If it is, requesting IFR to Houston. American 1675, I still got the same old flight plan here from Houston Intercon to New Orleans. So <laughs> reconnect and reconnect. Yeah, what in the world? Okay, we will, American 1675. Right, a long way from home. Break set. All right, but, uh, before takeoff checklist bloodline, takeoff runway runway two is confirmed. Uh, min takeoff fuel was 12-1. We got 13-2 on board. Engine mode sector mode bleed packs are set. Before takeoff checklist bloodlines complete. Just waiting. Hello again, Tower America 1675. Uh, requesting IFR to Houston. Hopefully the flight plan is correct now. There we go. I see it now. IFR and request number one. Say bye. Okay, thank you. Fairway 2868, runway 2, line up and wait. Runway 2, line up and wait, 2868. Brakes released. Lights camera in action. Northern Tower, Delta 2293, ready for taxi information. Echo on the south gate. Delta 2293, runway 2, taxi Echo Sierra. Clear on the approach. Runway 2, Echo Sierra, out of the Clear down the runway. Delta Tango 88, departure, good day. Departure, Delta Tango 88, good day. Who's ready for some toga? Tower, Sierra November 342, Realm Yankee, at General Aviation, request taxi with Echo, West Departure. Sirius 342, Romeo Yankee, Row Night 2, taxi Echo Sierra. Runway 2, taxi Echo Sierra, to Romeo Yankee. Spirit Wing 2868, fly runway heading, runway 2, clear for takeoff. Runway heading, runway 2, clear for takeoff, Spirit Wings 2868. Here we go. November 872, we can change our cross runway 110. Man, Toga, SRS, runway, auto thrust, blue. Eight knots, thrust set. American 1675, I have our clearance ready, so I've been ready to copy. Uh, yes, we are, American 1675. American 1675, clear to Houston Intercont as far as. V1 and Rotate. Flight level 38010 after departure. Departure zone 125.5. Ah, the rig here. Romay track. We'll climb via SID 4000 and. Ooh, birds. Y'all seen that? 0420, departure 125. Point five zero zero American sixteen seventy five. American sixteen seventy five, my apologies, two squawk is two seven five three. 
Up and climb. Accelerate. American 1675, read back correct. Push the start at, uh, at my discretion. <laughs> Call me for pushing start. How's the trend? Okay, we will. American 1675. Flaps one. Departure, good day. Flaps up. Our departure. Have a good day. And did a great job. Three wings 2868. Okay. D. Departure Spirit Wings 2868 with you uh, 2,500 feet climbing to 4,000 on runway heading. Wings 2868, New Orleans departure, but a contact line in 15,000. 15,000, Spirit Wings 2868. Autopilot, 1, 15,000. Open climb, rocking and rolling. Have takeoff checklist. Landing gears up, flaps retracted, lead packs set, a few off. After takeoff checklist complete. Spring 2868, turn left, heading 300. Left 300, Spirit Wings 2868. Delta Tango ED, climb out of my space, use the centers off line, ready to service terminate, for exchange drives, group take care. Frequency change approved, Delta Tango ED, thanks for the morale, as I help you, have a nice night. Heading. Ain't never seen such a small airport so busy. Had to stop departures. <clears throat> FS Birds, yep. Yeah, I, I bought the Southeast. Uh, but I, I didn't. Oh, yeah, I, I guess it does come all the way over to Louisiana. But, uh, yeah, I, I don't really care about the birds on the ground. It's kind of weird to me a little bit. Think of all the times I've ever jump seated. I've seen like one bird on the runway or on the taxiway and it was like a cow bird. You know, one of them white birds you see sitting on the butts of cows out in the fields. Um, other than that, you don't really see birds just chilling like in front of the airplane. During 2068, climbing our mass base, Houston Center's offline, return service terminated, frequency change, drive secure, take care. Over to Unicom, thank you for your help. Did a great job. South or Spirit Wings 2868. Appreciate that. You're so welcome. All right, let's keep her up to our final of 30,000 feet. 30 blue. 30 blue. Line over Lake Pontchartrain. The man, the myth, the legend. Shaq. On freak. Cowbird. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's what we call them in, in Louisiana. There's cowbirds. You always see them standing on the asses of cows. I had one actually like swoop at me and uh, try to hit me one time while I was mowing the yard. Or I was mowing the pasture at my parents' house. And I guess I was like going over and they were trying to eat bucks and stuff. And he got pissed and he's like. He may have learned his lesson with old BB gun a little bit later after that. All right, <clears throat> Shaq, um, was it showing you like the correct airplanes? Like, have you did putting those models in? Did that help anything? Is your AIG working better now? You heard of the ways they? deter birds at Atlanta. Nope, I haven't heard. And it's just kind of crazy because I've flown in and out of Atlanta like probably a thousand times, not even exaggerating. But, no, I don't know. How? Kind of curious. But sorry guys that I was ignoring the chat for so long. Just trying to get out of there. Out of step. Great podcast episode. I work <clears throat> in the charter world and planning on getting my dispatch when I graduate college. You're sweet. Where, uh, where are you going to college at? 
Um, does your college offer dispatch as a uh, as like something you can get? I know Middle Tennessee does, and a few other places like Embry Riddle and some other places. But, um, but heck yeah, dude! It's awesome to hear. Should definitely go for it. And who knows? I mean, like again, I, I think I said this on the on the podcast, maybe not, but the the world. Um, oh, actually, I just scrolled up and saw that message. Sorry, you had to send it twice. I was busy. Um, yes, sometimes I got two planes for one person, but it worked. Okay, well, I guess I guess two is better than none. <laughs> but um, but yeah, um, the world of of aviation. Especially like the commercial aviation industry is so small, and the world of Departure, flight dispatch to to, uh, 9, is even smaller. So, man, I'm telling you, you go get your uh, dispatch Tuesday license. Hello. Are you following? Come on, thing. You go get your dispatch license. Get you a little bit of experience. There is a a strong chance that if you were to try to come to my airline, which I won't obviously say on here. But a lot of people can figure it out pretty easily who I work for. Um, if you were ever interested in uh, working there and came for a job interview, there's a strong chance that I could be interviewing you. Um, but yeah, man, <clears throat> I think you would uh, think you would love it. What now? Houston Center. Houston Center's online. They showed me that. 3442. Man, we're just getting everybody today. 3442. Which is good though, because most of the time when I'm streaming, nobody's online, and it makes me look like chicken to fly on the on that sound. Uh, 3442. If you do me a favor and fire one, that'd be great. We'll do. Hola, Houston Center Spirit Wings 2868 is uh, 197. For flight level 300, direct Alexandria. And we're currently squawking 2765. Better at peanuts climbing same flight level 300. Hate that. And Houston Center, or correction, yeah, Houston Center, Jeff uh, 68, uh, we are 15 outside of uh, TNV, flight level 300. Jeff 658, Houston Center, right, uh, thanks for that contact. Spirit Wings 2868, clear direct peanuts, climb and maintain flight level 300. Direct peanuts, climb and maintain flight level 300, Spirit Wings 2868. Peanuts! Houston Center, Southwest 710, level at 23,000. Nav. Uh, we are about uh, showing 30 miles uh, west of uh, Lake Charles. Southwest 710, Houston Center, thank you, mate. I'll contact Squawk 2406 and make sure you made Charlie Tumpley. LSU, baby. Them, look them go Squawk Tigers. Them my boys. If any of y'all like uh, college football, Southwest I am a Tiger fan. Them Cajun Tigers. But I'm from Louisiana, so to be expected. <clears throat> Thanks for the flight plan. Squawk 7423. Yeah, man, absolutely should. Do, um, out of step, do you, uh, do any flight simming yourself? It is, uh, it's been a huge, huge, huge help. And, like I said in the podcast, I would not be where I'm at today without being able to do this. It teaches you so, so much, and you kind of get, an, an, like, a good idea of what the guys are doing at altitude. And, uh, this is just a lot of fun. Really enjoy hanging out with all of y'all and meeting new people virtually. Houston Center, Delta Tango 88, maintaining flight level 330. Delta Tango 88, Houston Center, how do you think? Not sure where um, Flight Sim Expo is supposed to be next year, but uh, definitely want to try to go. And. No, that's fine. If you just requested, let me know when you're back. All right, thanks, sir. Maybe we can see if we can get um, Shaq to go as well. Might have to throw him a couple buddy passes to get him to wherever it is, but if I have to, I will. So, thirty-eight fifty-two. Thanks, radar contact uh, three zero miles north of the Umbla Bwa. 
deviations of the three zero degrees right of course are approved. Uh, when able, please direct uh, Meridian and advise. All right, deviation of 30 to the right approved, then Meridian will advise Alpha 2052. Uh, my wife told me I could travel to work with you, but no way in hell is she moving there. Miles oh. west of Waypoint Redfin at 37,000 feet. Yeah. I just can't talk while the radio's going. Um, well, then Jake, get you a knockout your two years at um at Republic, and then depending on what's going on with my con my company, uh, maybe we can get you a job where I'm at, and we can work together, sit side by side on a desk. That'd be a lot of fun. Maybe I'll be your trainer. <clears throat> no way in hell is she moving there. It's alright. Floor's got its pros and cons. Too hot, too humid for one. Uh, have you tried Pilot Edge? I actually haven't. They're like only West Coast, I believe. So I haven't tried them. Bat Sims always work just fine for me. I've always just stuck with Bat Sim. Plus, I think you have to pay for Pilot Edge too. But I'm not sure. Yes, I do, but not streaming. I am flying a charter flight from Colorado to Jackson Hole right now. Nice. Love, uh, I've done quite a few streams into Jackson Hole. Really want to go to Jackson Hole in real life. Um, definitely want to, want to see that terrain, want to see that approach. And I love Cowboys stuff, too, so go out there and we catch a rodeo. Go to a little honky-tonk, do a little two-stepping, a little waltzing. Oh, we going to the expo. <coughs> okay, so Shaq, the uh, the expo's in Houston. Is that, that's what you're saying, correct? If that's the case, man, well, I, we, can, we can think I can get you there. If need be. I like XP because it has helped. Yeah, oh, yeah. And so that's, the, that's the thing, too, man. Like, when you when you kind of learn the airplane, especially it's airplane that your company operates... Um, it definitely gives you a leg up because you can when you have issues and you got a problem solved with the crew knowing the airplane definitely helps as well as like just the performance um, stuff like that like for example uh, for us like if I have a 321 going somewhere and the software wants to put them at 38,000 39,000 not gonna do it I'm gonna put them at 36 uh, thousand ago I'm gonna put them at like 36 37 because you know just know that the Airbus being a much longer fuselage and a heavier plane but having the same wing as the 319 and the 320 um, although different fuel tanks inside um, I know that airplane struggles to get to that altitude um, stuff like that or like when when pilots have issues with like zero fuel weight in their McDo stuff like that I can kind of assist with that because I know the McDo now different things so yeah you are you're absolutely right um, You're absolutely right. That's the that's the best part of, of working in aviation and then also being a flight simmer is, is kind of giving you a leg up on just the general knowledge of airplane and operation and what the guys are doing and all that kind of stuff. Uh, okay, yeah, Houston, sweet. Houston's not a bad location. Geographically, it, it's kind of centered. Like, laterally in the country, it's centered. They were trying to go more geographic, like, better location for everybody. Two, Kansas two, City probably would have been the place to be. Uh, but uh, Houston's definitely a lot better than San Diego. A lot easier to get to. And I got a buddy in Houston probably be able to stay with, not have to pay for a hotel. Dude, I'm going. You can bet your <laughs> bippy I'll be there. Warden sending just me. So guess who's going wild? We're going wild. Let me get Jay to come too. He can jump seat down. He'll be a dispatcher. So he can jump seat down. Dude, we can all like, we can all share a hotel room, make the cost cheap, and it'll be a daggum bite simon party. Them. Better not crash. I'll be pissed. It was so hard to get out of New Orleans. Better not, better not die. Jackson Hole is awesome. Grand 
Tetan is spectacular. I'm not familiar with Grand Tetan. What is that? <laughs> Wet and wild in Houston. Yes, sir. Shoot. I'll throw as many buddy passes as I have to get to get uh, everybody to um, Flight Sim Expo. Although, Mike, I would imagine you're probably going to be a little busy playing dad, so you may not be able to go, but maybe you can sweet talk your wife enough. I'm not a pilot, but dispatcher's assistant. Gotcha. I always wish that we had assistant dispatchers. Just like, with all the flights that an airline dispatcher has, it can get pretty, pretty busy. And then once airports start holding and the workload starts going up, it's very easy for something to slip through the cracks. Like, dispatchers can get tunnel tunnel vision on whatever the situation is that they're having to work out. And then, like, kind of lose sight of what all the other airborne flights are doing. And it would be really nice to, like, have an assistant dispatcher to help flight follow in those scenarios. Which, me now, transitioning over to a dispatch manager, that's probably something that I can help my guys with now that I think about it. Um, if... They are getting busy with airborne holding somewhere. I can kind of keep a watch over the rest of their guys and advise them of anything else I see that maybe need they need to know about. So, thanks for saying that. Uh, just gave me a good idea for stuff I need to do at work. I am medically certified for pilot in the future if I choose. Nice. Well, either one obviously is not a bad um, a bad route to take whatsoever. South by 17, you got the frequency. <laughs> Flight sim gone wild, yes sir. Go. Nothing like a bunch of dorks going wild. <laughs> I just parted out of New Orleans, heading over to Vegas. Sweet. How long did it take you to get out of there? It was, it was busy for us. Oh, you're going? Hell yeah. Gonna get us a room. We'll be the coolest group of folks in all of the, uh, the whole expo. Got some passes to you. Tell your wife there's a really cool day spa for her. <laughs> no, she can stay here. I'm going by myself. Let her stay and keep the dogs. I have almost a year to play, Dad. There you go. Grand Teton is a national park between Jackson Hole and Yale. Oh, okay. That reminds me, um, a while back, I was on the beach, like I was driving on the beach in Daytona, sent my buddy a, a picture of the beach, you got all like everybody's vehicles parked on the on the left and everybody's like chilling in their beach chairs on the right, because in Daytona you can drive on the beach. Sent him a picture and I was like, dude, Daytona's popping today. He sends me a picture back of a whole bunch of... Uh, Purified. Were you tower or were you departure? But hell yeah, definitely enjoyed it. Always grateful when you guys are online to provide a little uh, ATC services for us. Yeah, which one were you? When we first started talking, right, you were you were still doing approach. Although I thought your icon looked different. Ah, tower. Okay. Gotcha. Oh, sweet. Okay, so Kiwi Controller was approach, and you were tower. Got it. Thanks to historical chat. <laughs> but heck yeah, dude. That's Man, it was busy. I have not seen a airport that small get that busy on Vatsim. That's a lot of fun. Oh, I should probably kill the seatbelts, huh? Let people move around. Um... But yeah, so anyways, I sent the picture to my buddy. He sends me a picture back, and he's in uh, the middle of Wyoming, trying to drive down the road, but got a, a ton of buffalo. Um, I can't remember if it was buffalo or bison. But anyways, one of the two were, like, all over the road. He was like, yeah, it's popping out here in Wyoming, too. <laughs> I was like, dude, I'm so jealous. So jealous. I really want to go out west. Like, I've been to Denver, and I've been to Vegas, and you know, some other places, but, like, I want to go, like, out west. Rockies and like you know, cowboy life type stuff. So I'm pretty much the only person wearing a resist all cowboy hat in the city of Orlando. 
I'm gonna go somewhere where like there are also resist all cowboy hats. Folks are a gajillion times more cowboy than I'll ever be. Just on see, June, June 23rd to the 25th. I'm gonna put that in my calendar right now. Houston Center, good afternoon, Victor Tango Mike 5504. Victor Tango Mike 5504, Houston Center, Hello, Squawk 7322. 7323 all right, we'll do that. That's twenty-two ninety-three. Boom. In the calendar. Fifty-two. We're direct to Brady. Southwest twenty-eight fifty-two. Roger. Thanks. Pictures speak a thousand words, trust me. Take a look sometime. Okay, I definitely will. A bunch of dorks going wild. Bunch of dorks needing feel good fuel. <laughs> okay, now 7322 Yeah, great job there. We kind of invaded you guys. We sure did. <laughs> and you said we'd like to start play for right around five minutes for two flight and then shoot him. Front to flight 1967 approved for back. <laughs> that thing gets very busy sometimes. Tower's fun. That was that was a lot of fun. It seems like most times when I go to New Orleans, we got tower and, and approach. Usually it's both. Although the last time I went to New Orleans, I had a female approach controller, which was uh, pretty cool to hear because I don't hear that very much on on the sim. And guys, real quick, if y'all could, I'd greatly appreciate it if y'all could. Uh, like and subscribe. That would be muy fantastico. I don't know why I'm a... There it goes. Bam! Like and subscribe, please. Definitely helps the channel. And uh, helps helps the algorithm to so show up in, in uh, y'all's feed more often. And less likely to miss one of my streams. Because I like hanging out with y'all. I like getting to know y'all. It's all about the individuals and... <coughs> teaching and answering questions and all that kind of stuff this is by far my number one biggest hobby and I love it so much but I love it even more now thanks to y'all well, I've been streaming for about a year or so and uh, now it's it's just hard to fly an airplane without streaming also if y'all want to get in touch with me directly hit me up on my discord the link is in the channel I do do some uh, jump seating every now and then so when I can I'll put um, Real, real cockpit footage um, on the Discord, takeoffs and landings and whatever else, um, stuff like that. Might also try to put some uh, dispatch footage on there or like pictures and stuff, just kind of show what a dispatch desk looks like. Um, although I have to be kind of careful with sensitive security information and all that, but try to put on there, um, you know, stuff that I can. Give y'all a little uh, sneak peek of what my uh, what my job looks like. Um, although it's kind of hard to do that without exposing who I work for, although on my Discord might be a little different. I might be able to get away with some more of that. But, uh, but yeah, if you want to reach me, directly hit me up in my Discord. Link's in the description. Also, if y'all go back and look through earlier parts of the, um, Quaker 23, you back up. Quaker, better be back up. Um. Anyways, um. Bearing twenty eight sixty eight contact Fort West Center one three five point one seven. Bye bye. Thirty five seventeen. Thanks for your help tonight. Love your accent. Spirit Wings twenty eight sixty eight. Thank you very much. <laughs> Man, I was about to say the same thing. <laughs> Is that Japanese? Uh, <laughs> Almost. <laughs> That's fine. All right, Fort Worth Center, 3517. Hey, shut up. Go ahead, Quaker 23. 3517. Uh, sorry, that Quaker 23 calling back. Yes, sir, go ahead. Brilliant, thanks. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure you're back. I have got a uh, hand up to uh, the next section for you in just a sec. Roger that, thanks. 
All right, now we got to turn on the country since we're uh, in Texas. So let's see. Whoops. Fort Worth Center, Spirit Wings, 2868. Flight level 300, about 24 miles from Peanuts. Spirit Wings, 2868, Fort Worth Center, good evening. Good evening to you as well. All right. <clears throat> We are in Fort Worth Center. Does Fort Worth ever cross your mind? That is a George Strait song for those of y'all who don't know. So, I don't know what's shown on y'all's end, but it shows me 38 likes. I've never hit 40 before. I just hit 30 for the first time like two days ago. So, let's see if we can get me up to 40 likes. That would be pretty dang cool. Super, super cool. And if you get 40 likes... I'll go grab a beer or whatever kind of drinks I got. I don't know what I have in the fridge. And I will have a toast in y'all's honor because I just greatly appreciate it. I don't know how it really shows that I appreciate y'all by me getting to benefit from a beer. But I would definitely have a toast in y'all's honor. <clears throat> go to South Dakota. Put a nice double rainbow in the sim picks over there. Uh, quicker, 23, I'll get back to you on that. No worries. Fort Worth Center, Delta Peace, when we have the, uh, do you have radar come back? Uh, I'm probably gonna let my dogs out real quick. They gotta... Roger, thanks, we didn't get the transition. Are you going to stream, are you going to stream Venture this year? Oh, man, that's, that's probably out of my realm. I'm, um, you know, I'm an, I'm a airlines kind of guy. I don't know how they feel about, uh, 320 coming in there, like, uh, Spirit, blah, 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 320, rock your wings. Stall crash. <laughs> um, yeah. I don't know. That's, honestly, that's pretty, uh, yeah, intimidating. Um, so the top is that, do, do we have enough time to step away for about 10 minutes? Uh, quick to 23, yeah, you'll be fine. I appreciate it, I'll report. Telex. We're going to see. We're parking at Echo 31. Echo 31. Uh, let's take a quick break from the chat. Let's get our arrival set up. Always want to stay ahead of that. Clues. Fix info. And uh, let's see. We want KDF dubs. Five mile final on there. Get my charts pulled up. New flight, sim brief, yep. We are on the B Re one. Approach. I'm gonna get charts up for one seven center, one seven left. Taxi airport is it's A and C, B and D, terminal E. That's what we want. Cool. Terminal E, Echo 31's on the south east side. Yeah, I gotta let the dogs out there whining. And my dog wants to come in here, but <laughs> look at this. Dog wants to come in. I don't know if you can see her much. But she's in the doorway. Um. But the other dog is on her bed, so she's standing there at the door whining because she wants to come in, but she can't because the dog's on her bed. <clears throat> Anyways, ILS, uh, we're planning for 17 Center as of now. Let's go Jiffy. And then opposite... This is going to be 356. Draw out that center line. There we go. Perf. Next, next. And arrival. That digital ATIS. Info Delta's current. Ooh, it is a little gusty now. 0 at 0 at 10, gusting 16, 10 satchel miles, feet at 7,000. Temperature's 38, dew point 15, 2981 on the altimeter. Simultaneous visual approaches to runways 13 right, 18 right, 17 center, 17 left. Landing runway 17 center, expect land and hold short, operations, taxiway Bravo, blah blah blah. Cool. 
2981. I think it's at 38. Yep. And then the wind. 0, 8, zero at 10. 200 on those minimums. Cool. All right, let's go let the dog out real quick. Be right back, guys. You want to go potty? Come on. Thirty-nine likes, one more. Uno mas. For those of y'all who don't speak Spanish, which is also me, that means one more. My roommate speaks Spanish. Don't care, don't care. Notorious, I got to check your uh, your comment on whatever you commented on. Just saw it on my phone. <clears throat> if I don't get dinner going, it'll be my backside. Uh, I hear that. I gotta get, I gotta grill some chicken tonight too for Crystal. You can do a private 8320 flight. Out of step, I actually did do that not too terribly long ago. Um, if you go back a few videos in the channel, I did, I think it was two flights. I don't remember. Let's see. Uh, let's see. It was this one right here. And so it's five or six videos back. Uh, I did an ACJ flight from Buffalo to uh, Charleston, West Virginia, then West Virginia over to Myrtle Beach. The Charleston one was uh, a little fun. Kind of landed on a a little like cliff face. So that was that was pretty interesting. Um, but yeah, did one right there. Feel free to check that one out. I don't think there's really anything much special about it, but. If private uh, Airbus flights is your thing, that's one. But I'll definitely do another one. It's always fun doing the private ones too because you kind of go to airports that you typically wouldn't go to. I like said y'all see 40. Let me let me look these. Let's see. Well, I'm showing 39. I just went and clicked on the video, but you know what? Nope, I'm not gonna do it. I was gonna say I like it my I like my own stream, and uh, that would give 40, but I'm not going to. That's cheating. I ain't a cheater. Hashtag I try to have integrity. Spirit Wings 2868, same Mach number. Mach 75, Spirit Wings 2868. Spirit Wings 2868, maintain Mach point seven seven. Mug point seven seven Spirit Wings twenty eight sixty eight. Alrighty, we gotta speed her up. For a good evening, American twenty two eighty one. Request IFR to San Antonio. American twenty two eighty one. Forward center on request. Standby. Specs PDC. Roger. So we just got center, uh, Delta center. On the ground, uh, forward, uh, with Fox, uh, but no tower. <coughs> Go let the dogs in. I think Shaq's getting a little too close. That's what's got ATC speeding me up. Come on, go inside. Uh, oh, I see 40 now. That means a drink. What do we got? Ooh, we got the Corona. And 
for a 1960 70 Matt Boost that boy for uh, a little over five minutes and need to go grab the food. That's proof. Up proof. Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, and to all the other miscellaneouses, to you, I cheers. I appreciate y'all for coming to hang out with me tonight. I mean a lot to me. Cheers. Oh, yes. Just yes. Pardon my future burps, but just yes. Mm. Nothing like a nice... Cold crisp Forward beer. I always, when I fly heavy, I always forget to say heavy. Roger, thank you. Hey, dog. It's just so weird how, like, there's so many, like, I get so many discrepancies between, like, what y'all see versus what I see. Like one day, I saw it was like 336 subscribers, but then like when I went to, like when I, oh yeah, like on my phone, on YouTube Studio it said 336 subscribers, but then when I went. 2868, descend via Barry 1 arrival, VSW altimeter 29081, transition to 310 knots. All right, we'll descend the Barry 1 arrival. Um, we'll, God, you have to say that again. It, Tricked my brain. That transition to uh, three one zero nine twenty. Go back to indicated airspeed. All right, we'll go to three ten. We we'll go back to indicated airspeed, and uh, Spirit Wings twenty eight sixty eight. Cool. So that'd be on the descent. <clears throat> Man, these when y'all controllers give me uh, multiple, like three or more, I'm like, my brain just can't. Um, but yeah, it was my YouTube studio was showing like 336, but then when I went to actual YouTube app, it said like 323 or something. I don't know. There's always discrepancies. It's weird, but yes, sir, it is beer time. That is a song by Justin Moore. It's a country song called Beer Time, about as stereotypical of a country song as you can get. <laughs> but it's actually a pretty good song. <laughs> Better have limes. Actually, don't think I have limes. I do prefer limes with it for sure, but <clears throat> uh, I'm not lying. We all see 40. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't not believe y'all. It's just weird how I just get the discrepancies, you know. Uh, dinner awaits, or I'm a dead man. Areas. And Fort Worth Center, Spirit Wings 2868, quick question. Is that Quaker guy the reason why we had to speed up? Yeah, he was going about 10 knots faster than you. Well, I'll tell you what, the uh, added fuel burn, just put that on his tab. Thank you. <laughs> you can actually blame my girlfriend because the look of dinner on her face, you can throw it on her car and I'll send it over. Mm. Oh man. <laughs> Love it. <clears throat> That's fun. Uh, or a shot of a. Ooh. Cardi Lemon. Five, that that sounds maintain pretty good. 5,000 back to her approach. C50 is going to maintain 5,000, Walker 968. So now we'll have a tipsy landing. Man, every landing I make, you would think I'm tipsy. Now, I don't know if you noticed. As soon as that autopilot disconnects, the airplane's doing this a lot. Might as well be drunk for every one of my landings. But now we got a nice long runway, so maybe, maybe we can float it. You know, Captain Canada says no floaties, but you know, if it's all about the frame or all about the uh, the fr uh, whatever you freaking call it. Um, landing rate, then we'll get floaty floaty. Top of descent coming up in less than 40 miles. And let's uh, brief up the approach real quick. Dallas Center uh, 2868. 
Any idea which uh, runway we can plan on? Fairwings 2868, expect a visual 17 center. Perfect. We'll expect visual runway 17 center, Spirit Wings 2868. Nice. Don't even have to change nothing in the secondary. I uh, like it. Which that means they might put Shaq on uh, 27 left then, which will give him a longer taxi, so he'll have to burn extra gas. And that'll be on his card. <laughs> Say goodbye to Shaquille. <laughs> he gone. For those of you who don't know, so we got Captain Shaquille O'Mill in the chat. Well, the warden is his wife. And, uh, you know, I guess if there's a missing persons report. <laughs> Warden's card getting used a lot, yep. For crumble and for gas. <laughs> oh man, Shaq, your mom said you gotta go. <laughs> oh yeah, I think I did. Dallas Center, yeah, it's Fort Worth. You are right. Thank you, Wes. Dallas Fort Worth Center. I don't know, it's really just Fort Worth. And for anybody who is not from like or familiar with the Fort Worth and Dallas areas uh, the Fort Worth area defies itself very much differently than the Dallas area so uh, I should never get those mixed up because I'll probably piss off a lot of people if they knew let's brief real quick ILS 17 oh we want 17 center Oh, right. So we are planning on the ILS from a 17 center. Frequency is 110.3. Final approach course is 176. Our final approach fix is Jiffy at 2300 feet. Uh, touchdown zone elevation is 562. That's going to make our stable approach by uh, 1,000. We'll just call it 1,500 feet. We have a standard three, three degree glide slope. Approach lights, Pappy on the left. Uh, so what is this? 3,000 or below. Okay, so we go missed. We'll climb 3,000 on a 176 heading and uh, just slide the published mist and then let ATC vector us back around. Planning on the standard Cat 1 ILS at 200 foot minimums, half mile visibility. Weather's plenty good for that. Only weather conditions we're concerned about is gusty winds, possible low level wind shear from those winds. Um, once we land, we have high intensity run runway lights, center line lights, approach lights, touchdown zone lights. Pappy on the left. Uh, the glide path on that Pappy is three degrees. It's grooved. Resume published speeds at Muzzy. Resume published speeds at Muzzy for Spirit Wings 2868. It's at Muzzy. Cool. Um, Right. And then uh, once we land, it's going to be a right hand turn off uh, with whatever one we make. There's a gajillion to choose from. And then we're going to taxi in to uh, Echo yeah, center, walk, nine, six, eight, the 31, I believe. Yep, Echo 31 is on the southeast side of the terminal. 10 miles to the top of touchdown, or top of descent, not top of touchdown, whatever the hell that means. And let's uh, get our bottom altitude on the Barry. I always thought it was Barry. 11,000. Uh, visual approach 17 center, Walker 968. Boobity bobbity America 2281, Fox 15, taxi to the market. And manage speed. American 4 Center, Spirit Wings 2868, vacating flight level 300. Spirit Wings 2868, roger. 
Yes. 43 likes. Whoa. Bro, if we make 50, I don't even know. That would be incredible. Incredible. You know, there's YouTubers like millions of people, millions of likes and stuff. Don't even care. They ain't got nothing on y'all. Because those are just people who just want some, you know, like entertainment. But they ain't learning nothing. I mean, well, I guess there are some actually like really good YouTube learning shows like uh, Smarter Every Day. There's another guy. I can't remember his name. He's a young dude. Does all those like glitter bombs against um, like people doing bad stuff. Stealing packages and stuff. I can't remember that guy's name. But he's got a, he's, he does some really good things for people as well. So I, I take back what I said. But nonetheless, ain't nobody, ain't nobody got nothing on the flight sim community. Let's see, Texas and <laughs> chuckles. I'm in danger. <laughs> Panda Express plus airport prices. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, Dallas Center is the least offensive thing I've heard. Personal favorite is Texas Center. Oh my God, Dallas Fort Worth Texas Center, Texas Dallas Fort Worth Center. <laughs> Central Controller, what's up, man? Welcome aboard. Glad to have you here. <laughs> oh, that's fun. Y'all are fun. Beer makes it fun too. He won't be streaming tomorrow. So, side note, um, whatever it is that Shaq's flying tomorrow, so Shaq, whatever you're flying, uh, I'm trying to make sure, what time are you planning on streaming tomorrow if you're still alive? Uh, I can snap a motherboard in about 12 seconds. 12 seconds is reasonable. But still, if I ask rookie numbers, you know, got to get them numbers up. <laughs> make it like three or five. Hey, I know that center. He is very good. Oh, yeah? I haven't... Like, sometimes I have a hard time, like, keeping track of the, the centers I talk to. Like, remember their their uh, voices and stuff. <coughs> Shaq, your wife sounds serious this time. <laughs> the NASA guy, I've watched him. Yeah, yeah, that dude. Yeah, he's awesome. He's not streaming. Well, okay, so if he... Why are we high? Parag. Uh, 600 feet. Okay, so if... If he... Binds you crumble. And soothes... Smooth things over with you. And if he's alive... And not chopped up in a body bag thrown into the middle of the Everglades, um, you know, from, thrown from an airplane. That's probably how I would do it. Um, San Jose to Miami. So I'm going to try to fly that with him. So again, guys, um, tomorrow, head over to Tampa to go visit uh, Jetline Systems. They got a lot of, of uh, new flight sim hardware. So I'm going to go over there and uh, take a look at that stuff, take some pictures and some videos, and if they approve, I'm going to put it on here for you all to see and just kind of spread the word. Uh, so I'm going to try to make it back by then. So Shaq, if you if you are live and you stream, what time are you streaming tomorrow? I'm going to try to make it back and uh, be ready to stream. Also per my girlfriend's approval because she may or may not. Not a good cookie lineup this week. Oh, gosh. Guys, we got to find out what else the warden might like to eat to, like, make her happy again. She doesn't like the, the crumble cookie lineup this week, so what else can we do? I'll send the whole set up. <laughs> can I get rudder pedals? <laughs> She's like, False dad joke to whoever stole my Microsoft Game Office I will find you you have my word that's funny stone on board alright info delta Quick 
Oh wait, that's probably uh no, that's Dallas. Quaker 23 Fort Worth. Go ahead, Quaker for Quaker 22. Check the visual approach 17 center. 17 center, or visual 17 center, Quaker 22. Man, my roommates are cooking something, smells good. 715, sweet. Yeah, I'll be home way before then. We'll be ready. But again, per my girlfriend's approval. She has to let me. Or I can just tell her to piss off and we'll just have a fight. But you know, y'all are worth fighting for. <laughs> So we went through transition altitude. Let's uh, get that seatbelt sign on. Status page check. And approach checklist briefing is complete. Approach stable by 1,500 feet. Ecom status check. Seatbelt signs are on. Minimums 200 feet set. Engine ice 1 and 2 are off. Altimeters 2981 set. Approach checklist complete. Bibbidi bop bidi bop. Bidi bidi bum bop. Hungry. I don't know what we're gonna do for dinner tonight. I ain't got no food at home. It's been spoken for, but how about I send you his document drive? I'll take some too. Midi, 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 bumba. I just want like Dallas Tower to come on. That'd be cool. Or Dallas Fort Worth Tower. For being specific, Dallas Fort Worth, Texas, south of Oklahoma, east of Louisiana. Tower. Is that specific enough? Atlanta Center, Chicago Center, Denver Center, Fort Worth Center, Houston Center, Jack Center. Man, who is KC94 Center? Oh, Kansas City. Duh. Jeez. Jeez, losing my mind. Uh, Walker 968 ready to taxi to the uh, gates. Walker 968, if you're parking Echo, it's uh, straight ahead, cross 17 right. Uh, straight ahead, 17 right, uh, Walker 968. I'm married, I don't need permission. <laughs> yeah, you know, the whole saying, happy wife, happy life, I kind of just, you know, if it don't make her happy, whatever. I'll just fight it out and then go on about it. Then again, I've got a kiddo do any day, so that Very may change. Short of one seven right ready for departure. Very true. I'm scared to get married because I'll have to get her permission to play flight sim. Boss. You just uh, you just play flight sim. And if she loves you for who you are, she'll stick around. And if she don't, then she can carry her ass, right? Go kick rocks, as uh, I like so, uh, to call it. Right, uh, RNF two, or runway one seven right, RNF two X, go for takeoff. Delta That's kind of what I told mine. Thrust idle. Mine told me whenever I, I quit commuting, and I first started, uh, like, was gonna be home all the time. She was like, "All right, well now that you're, you know, gonna be home all the time, I like, can't be spending all your time on the computer, like, you know." You gotta make sure you know, stuff gets done. And I looked at her, and I was like, "What do you mean? Can't be on my computer all the time." And I gave her like the biggest go to hell look, and she, I think I scared her a little bit. Um, I think I scared her a little bit, and she like uh, she didn't challenge me on it. She's like, oh, "Okay, I'm just kidding, just kidding." No, you don't, like. I'm the breadwinner. I pay for like just about everything of yours that we do for fun. So. Bearings 868, correction 2868. Gonna maintain 3000. Down to 3000. Spirit wings 2868. Speed all star. Here we go. Down the tree. I'm going down the tree. 
Which sounds kind of, um... Sounds a little harsh, but, you know... The way I see it, if I'm if I'm paying for all the things we do that are fun because you can't pay for it, then like let me have my fun. Captain Kali, is it Kali or Kali? Like you know, Colombia Kali. Which one is it? But thank you so much for subscribing, man. I hope I have earned your subscription and thank you so much. Welcome to the Wrong Side Simulations community. So happy to have you here. Thank you, thank you, thank you for for your subscription. It means a lot. Makes me feel like I'm doing something right. Alright, below 10. Delta 2842 radar, contact sale. Cali, roger that. Delta Just making sure. My airline, we fly to, to Cali. And, uh... I think I pissed people. If I, if I talk to somebody who's from Cali, and I say Cali, they probably get pissed off. So just cover my bases. But nonetheless, brother, welcome aboard. Happy to have you. It's kind of cool too, like hearing like different it's accents on the frequency. Like the Australian sounding guy in Houston Center, that was pretty cool. I just thought it was cool hearing different accents from all over the place. Like I was flying in California. I was flying the other day in California and heard a uh, like a German accent, like super German. That's pretty cool. Hello, welcome to Lufthansa Flight 456 of so Frankfurt. Yeah. Something like that. <laughs> I'll pay on sand. <laughs> Ooh, Thrustmaster yoke broke. The Boeing? The, T the TCA? Wait, that's not Thrustmaster, is it? Yeah, the Thrustmaster TCA Boeing, is that the one that broke? That would suck. You don't have to get permission, but just make the right choice and you'll be... <laughs> yep, yeah, pretty much. She's nailed on the head. Delta 1331, Fort Worth, sending you up. Thank you, Airbus. What is your next long haul? I would like to join if it's like a 12 or 13 hour flight or less. That's a long one. Nerdy. The Australian guy is Houston. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I told him that I liked his uh, I liked his accent. And then somebody came in and they're like, is that Japanese? <laughs> he was like, eh, close. <laughs> it's cool and confusing at the same time. There was a guy flying on VATSIM the other day that was speaking Spanish on frequency. Yeah. So in real life, like whenever like I jump seated down to Punta Cana not too long ago, um, it was just like that. All the Spanish-speaking airlines were, Spanish, were speaking Spanish to the controller as well as he was speaking Spanish to them. But then when he talked to us, it was Curry in English. Turn left, heading 270, vectors to final. 270, vectors to final, Spirit Wings, 2868. Nope, 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 nope. 270... Come on, airplane. Let's drop it down to 210. 28, correction, Spirit Wings 2868, DSW Airport, 9 o'clock, 10 miles, report in sight. Field in sight, Spirit Wings 2868. Spirit Wings 2868, cleared visual approach, runway 17. Clear visual approach, runway 17 center, Spirit Wings 2868. Alt Star! Stowed aboard. 3 traffic, 11 o'clock, 5 miles, turning southbound, a 320, descending out of 3000, report in sight. Oh, we got him on TCAS for Quick 2-3. Quick 2-3, Roger.
12 mile funnel. Slow her down to 180. That look star. Forward center, Victor Tango Mike 5504. The last measure uh, shows me a 090 at. Last look star. Not, uh, requesting runway 144 landing. Vinny plus 10. There goes flaps 10. Or flaps 2. Roger, fighting 360. Right now, mine says it says look. 306. We have been cleared. Okay, no problem. So fly left uh, 360, Victor Tango Mike 5504. Glass look. And we're going to maintain 170 until 5. Quaker 2-3 turn left heading 270 vectors to find. Actually, we'll go Quaker 170 to 6 miles just because of the gusty winds. It's a little bit longer to slow down. Bearings 2868, winds 07010, gust 16, runway 17 center, clear to land. Clear to land, runway 17 center, spirit wings 2868. Shut up! Who let the dogs out? Boop, 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 boop. My dog hates my roommate's boyfriend. Oh man. Fort Worth Center, good afternoon. Air shuttle 5251 with. Here we go. Manage uh, speed, gear down, arm spoilers. Well, shoot. That's a good way to mess up. Activate approach. There we go. Manage speed. <laughs> And flaps three. Flaps four. Flaps four. Number two. Oh, oh, oh. Clear the visual to our uh, one seven center. Clicker two three. <clears throat> Here we go. Landing so, checklist. Uh, Papa, right, Cabin crew is advised. Auto throw speed. Papa, auto brakes low. EKMO landing all green. Landing checklist complete. We're stable at 15. Good to continue our approach. Swig a beer. Captain Callie, I like it. <clears throat> my airplane. So guys, this building right here to the left, that's where I got my dispatch license. That's where IFOD Institute of Flight Operations Dispatch is located. We would actually like, watch out the window and watch heavies land all the time. It was pretty cool. Victor, Tango Mike, 5504, to send a maintain 3,000. It is windy. Uh, three, four, zero. Minimum. Five. Sorry, uh, who was uh, needing to step away? Raider 3 one. Dude. One thing I hate about the Phoenix, there's no rudder authority. Like, you get no yaw control one. until nose wheel's on the ground. Drives me nuts. Spoilers, rush green decel. Spirit Wings 2868, where are you parked? Echo 31. Spirit Wings 2868, cross 17 right kilo to parking, see ya. 17 right kilo to parking, we'll see ya. Did a great job, thank you for your help today, Spirit Wings 2868. Yeah. Clean her up. Victor Tango Mike 5504, the airport's at your 4 o'clock, 10 zero mile support in sight. Tango Mike 5504, cleared visual approach from a 14. 
do this first. <clears throat> Weather, predict wind shear, TA, RA, we're going to leave that for now. We'll do TA. Boom, 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 boom. 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 All right. Where in the hell are we? Daggum heel. Shoot, it's going to be hard to tell what Echo 31 is because nothing's labeled at this default airport. Shut down, too. All right, let's see. So 31 is going to be somewhere down here. Let's watch Shaq's landing. Nice. Yeah, you don't get, you can say the same thing with him. Went to the same side of the runway I did. And you get no rudder authority until nose wheel's on the ground. Center rear 3 one back with you. Which is not, just not Radio accurate. Radio 3 one forward center around here. Descent upon discretion maintains, actually, uh, descent and maintain flight level 2-3-0. Maintain flight level 2-3-0, Radio 3 one Oh, look at him making that turn. I thought I was going to miss it. So, uh, Valenta says negative 93 on mine. Finally got one under 100 on stream. They're always like that off stream. Quick here, 2 3, where are you parking? Uh, we'll park right next to that spirit that just landed. Roger, right, quick, 2 3, cross 1 7 right, kilo to parking, thanks. 1 7 right, kilo to parking, 2 3. Uh, let's see. His little the chart shows it'll be first one of by this overhang. That's twenty one. Thirty one. So wait. Got the other spirits down there. That's nice. Tango my five five zero four runway one four clear to land. Hey, we we'll have to wait for the AP to start. to wait let's go to GPU all right cool we got the GPU on so we do that kill that off engine one shut down confirm engine one engine one confirmed Raider three one is going to maintain nine hundred thousand beacon 
Yes, that was fun. I missed another pushback toolbar, but caused me some issues the other day, so I took it out. Baggage service. Yup. Catering service. Yup. Put those passengers up. <clears throat> Tell them to get off my airplane. Ready to go to the hotel and drink another one of these. Mmm. Nice, Shaq. Nice. Negative 75. Very nice. If only we could do that kind of stuff on stream every time. So we're going to put this airplane to bed. Leave this on until all the passengers are off. It's pretty hot outside, so we'll leave that on. Get that preconditioned air on. Man, I cannot wait to get IE engines and sharklets. <laughs> what a way to end an eight-hour stream. Jesus, has it really been that long? It don't feel like it. Time always goes by really fast when I hang out with y'all. You got a cutty. Sounds like IE engines too. Boom. You want to hear the sounds? Just go. No more engine sounds. So we're done with the iPad. We'll go ahead and stow that. Put it in our flight bag or our suitcase. And all that stuff. Get rid of this company message. It's just arrival times. Cool. Captain went to the pisser, so we'll just so it, get his stuff put up for him. He's going to go into the hotel with us. They have 98, 98% satisfied. I'll take it. Close this out. Basically, just put the airplane in the same uh, config that we found it. Or we would usually find it. And just because I'm anal. That dude. Like, right when it gets to where you need it, it accelerates. Boom. And yeah, we'll just leave that there. If we wanted to really annoy the pilots that come in and just shut off all these. Because these are not CRT screens, so. What's wrong?
it's flashing at us because it, something it wants to tell us on the engine page. Which is probably nothing. We're going to put her all the way to bed. Alright, I don't care. Go to bed. Boom, boom, boom. Well, guys, what a nice long day of some streaming. So much fun. Again, to Jay, congratulations, dude, on passing your ADX. That is huge, 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 huge. You are over the worst of it. Now I just got to get ready for your um, oral and your practical. Um, you know the flight planning part. You got that. You know what that is. It's not hard at all. It's very simple in in that um, in uh, that capacity or whatever. Um, the oral obviously is going to be a little um, you know a little more nerve wracking just because you're sitting in front of a very seasoned dispatcher more than likely um faa certified dude so uh but he knows what you're supposed to know he'll know where, what y'all covered in training so you'll be good um you just kind of buckle down and, and just make sure you're fresh and everything kind of go through notums just go through random big ass airports of notums like chicago and stuff like that and, and as you go through annotate anything you don't know and take it to your instructor um and ask questions about that I was asked some stuff on Notums that I swear to God we never covered. Um, he didn't really seem to care. Um, but, uh, dude, you'll be fine. You are almost to the finish line. Um, then you'll just have to go through ground school, pass your, pass your ground school stuff, which will just be probably a few tests, and then do some OJT with a dispatcher on the desk, and then boom. Like, you're now looking at just some weeks that like get over those and you're solo dispatching dude so congratulations to jay again awesome very very proud of you man you've overcome a lot with all the other stuff that was going on and still to be able to pass your adx that's that's crazy um let's see catch up in the chat real quick before we get out of here uh put that high speed exit to work daggum right you did <clears throat> what a way to end an eight hour stream i really didn't know it was that long uh, are the CFMs what you have on now? Yeah, we got CFMs on this airplane. IAE engines are coming, as well as Sharklets. Um, when we get those, then our Spirit stuff will uh, be 100% accurate. Wiley, uh, which is at least what I know him by, is the guy that painted this uh, this livery, who did an amazing job. He's got the cabin, he's got the, the grudgy wheels and stuff. Uh, he's waiting for the IAEs and the Sharklets to come, and then he's going to jump right on it. Get the uh, get the spirit completely done, as well as uh, whenever Phoenix gets us some Wi-Fi domes, um, he's going to hammer that out as well. He's got several other aircraft uh, that he's planning to do, but so far he's just been focusing on this one to kind of perfect this airplane, and then he'll be rocking and rolling to the next one. So, cannot wait for some IEGs, uh, IEEs, and uh, Sharklets. So far, two people haven't passed. Oh man, that's tough. Uh, we had I think one or two in my class that didn't. Uh, hey Blake, watch your interview with Blue and XP. I have a year left on my bachelor's, and then I'm going to be attending dispatch school with Jepson. Nice. Excited I found you. Well, dude, I'm excited that you found me too. Um, yeah, man, that's, that's huge, especially having your bachelor's and then uh, going to have your dispatch license too. That makes you a little bit more marketable and uh, more likely to get a job wherever you'd want to go. Um, and right now is a hot time for dispatchers. Hot time. Uh, you can pretty much just about write your ticket. If you got dispatch experience in a part 121, you can just about write your ticket to almost anywhere you want to go. Almost. Um, man, man, keep uh, make sure you subscribe. I want to stay in touch with you. I want to you know keep up with your progress and, and where you're at with things. And uh, um, you know, hopefully in a year we'll be uh, talking about where uh, where you got a job at. Uh, let's see, in your Discord, some screenshots. They they look sweet. Oh yeah, let me look at them. So Shaq, uh, so far I've only got the one of you at the gate. Is that the one you're talking about?
Let's see what else we got. <clears throat> Some money under there. Out to Metro State. So, um, Jake can touch more on this too. But Jake did the, uh, he did a, um, an apprenticeship with Republic. So, if you do the same, they'll pay for your dispatch license, and that'll be money that you save. You just commit two years to Republic, um, which is the typical like minimum that most would do at a regional. I did two years at a regional before coming to where I'm at now. Um, in your actual, oh, gotcha, okay. Um, so two years is is very fair, in my opinion. Although these days you could probably do a little bit less time and go somewhere else. Um, but if you want to save that five thousand dollars, if that's money that you don't have, then uh, then yeah, I mean, that's the best way to go. They'll pay for it for you, and you just commit two years to them, and then get your uh, at the same time you're getting experience in a part 121 operation, and then go to wherever you want to go, unless you're happy there and want to stay there. <coughs> Central controller. You have a good night as well. Thank you so much for coming and hanging out with us. Ah, gotcha. Okay, I did the same. I used uh, I used my military benefits as well. I didn't use the 911. I had um I had another program through the VA that I used for mine, the Voc Rehab program. But uh, yeah. Well, there you go. I would do that. That way you're not you know bound to anybody, and whenever you have the experience, want to go somewhere else, you can do that without having to hang around and and wait. So. Uh, let me check out these real quick. And again, guys, if you uh, if you haven't yet, please like and subscribe. Helps the channel and uh, helps show me in your feed more so that I can see y'all more and get to know y'all better and um, form this nice little uh, community that we got. It's a hell of a lot of fun to get to know y'all. Let's see. Some picks. Oh. Uh -huh. That's so uh, sweet. Oh yeah. So we'll just kind of show these off real quick. Next song is a very repetitive song. Check that out. That looks nice. What airplane is that? 7-3 it looks like, right? Would y'all agree 7-3? Um... Got the nice rain showers. That looks nice. Oh yeah. Check her out. If only I had some IE engines in, in real life. That's good looking. In fact, I downloaded um Shaq, I downloaded this livery today off of the Discord that you sent me. So we've got just got that installed. Oh sweet, yeah, I'm saying forty eight now. Dang we're two away. Two away from fifty. Breaking like thirty was the last record. And now I might just totally skip 40. If we can get two more likes, we'll be at 50. That would be unbelievable. Half of 100. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. So, it looks so good. It's just so fun flying with friends and doing friend stuff. It's even funnier whenever... Uh, when the warden's gonna be paying for uh, for my gas because I had to go Mach 7 7. <laughs> C49. One more beer should get it done, get it to 50. Yeah. Finish this off and then I'll go grab one more real quick. Y'all keep telling me what y'all see. We just need one more like. Uno mas. And then we'll call it a day here on the wrong side. So again, guys, for all those of you who were not here a while ago, whenever I was talking about it, um, tomorrow I'm going over to uh, Jetline Systems. If you're unfamiliar with Jetline Systems and you need a, a PC for your flight sim uh, setup, Jetline Systems is by far the place to go. Awesome, awesome, awesome set of people. Um, they have lifetime support, which has helped me out a lot because uh, I've had a few issues here and there with just some things that I kind of messed up in all honesty. And I um, <laughs> guess you need to do another flight for that 50, huh? <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to have time. My girlfriend's going to be home here pretty soon. i got to go grill some chicken for her. But, um, man, I like that song. Next. But, uh, yeah, so... Um, 
man, just the best people. Lifetime support. There's been times I've needed to install a new SSD. Like, I'm not the most computer like savvy person in the world. And uh, I can call up my buddy Tony over at Jetline, and he walks me through it on a Duo, Google Call, stuff like that. Um, very small group of folks. Super, super friendly. And I'm uh, going to go over there tomorrow and look at some uh, some new flight control hardware that they got. They recently started a partnership with a, uh, a flight sim and space sim um, hardware company. So they got like three brand new, very elaborate, sexy setups. Uh, so I'm going to go over there tomorrow and go take a look at that. Go have lunch with my boy Tony. If you've been around long enough, you've probably seen Tony in the chat. Um, but he's uh, he's always tipping, which kind of makes me feel bad because like he helps me out with his time when I need his help. I mean, he has actually like sat on like a stream with me for three hours. I was having frame rate issues with the sim, and we were going through and troubleshooting and doing a lot of stuff. And this dude sat on a computer for three hours, and we ran through a whole bunch of different things. I would like start the sim up, do a takeoff, okay, frames suck, go out, make some changes, do this and that. Like, so they're not just there for like hardware issues. Even if you're having issues with your sim, no matter what sim it is, Microsoft, X-Plane, Prepared, FSX, if you're still somehow living um, in you know prehistoric times, uh, they are there to help you out. So if you ever need a computer, Jetline Systems, I am not sponsored by any means, but there's just such awesome people with a kick-ass product. That's why I put their logo on every one of my thumbnails because they absolutely deserve it. So, anyways, guys, I reckon that's going to be it for me tonight. Um, again, please like. We're trying to hit 50. We're like one away if, uh, if you haven't liked yet. Please smash the like button. That would be incredibly huge. And uh, I'll have to drink another one for y'all. In fact, stand by. What we got in here? All right, <clears throat> so just for y'all, as a toast, and this is like, so the last toast was, it wasn't very giving because I really like Corona, right? Well, this toast is definitely more giving because this is ranch water, grapefruit, as you can tell. Now, the original grape water or ranch waters are really good. This sucks. Like, this tastes terrible, but for y'all, I will definitely toast a very bad tasting drink to show my appreciation for how much I uh, appreciate y'all coming to hang out all the likes the subscriptions um, just the the amazing company that y'all provided for the past eight hours very very much appreciate it and uh, can't wait to spend more time with y'all get to know y'all better hear more stories about those of you who are interested in dispatch or meeting more real-world pilots that kind of stuff so to y'all and the future of the Wrong Side Simulations channel and our family. This is for y'all. Terrible tasting ass drink. <laughs> oh. I mean, it ain't like the worst, but it it definitely ain't feel good fuel because it don't make you feel good. It makes you just. Ugh. I'm showing 40, 49 now on my side, so what y'all see? 50! <laughs> Holy shit, guys. We actually did it. That's unbelievable. Un unbelievable. Like, last week, I would be doing good to hit 5, and here we are hitting 5 0. What do y'all know? Y'all kick ass. Thank y'all so much. So, so much. Y'all are the best. Again, to y'all. Mm-hmm. So I think in the future what we ought to do is we ought to have uh, do some group flights, whether it's airline ops or GA, whatever, whatever y'all want to do. I think uh, I'm gonna have a chat with Hillbilly and uh, see if we can't start us another channel in the Discord, and maybe we can uh, coordinate some some group flights, stuff like that. Maybe we can uh, kind of oversaturate some airports again, like we did today, and uh, give them a good run for their money. Uh, so we'll look into doing that, and uh, yeah, I think me and uh, Hibble are gonna look at some uh, some T-shirt ideas. Um, that's probably gonna be a little ways off, but nonetheless, uh, we're gonna look at that. 
going to incorporate the feel good fuel. Um, oh, here's this is the song. I like this intro song. Um, but yeah, we're gonna look, we're gonna incorporate the feel good fuel uh, little thing that I said on the stream the other day that somehow I guess a lot of people thought was really funny. And um, yeah, we're gonna go from there. We're gonna make some we're gonna make some cool stuff happen here in the future. So, anyways, I hope everybody has a great rest of your night. Tomorrow again, I'm going to Jetline. Uh, I'm going to try to jump on stream with uh, Shaq tomorrow. Um, maybe I'll stream it. Maybe I won't. Depends on how quick I can get home and get set up and get approval from the FAA. That me and my girlfriend. <laughs> but, uh, alright, that sounds like a little intense-ish. It's like, I like this song, but then it's like too intense for where we're going. It's also about to play in the outro, so I, can't, I don't want to play it twice. But uh, anyways, guys, I'll let y'all stop looking at the butthole of an a of a Airbus, and uh, I will see y'all on the next one. Until then, whether it be tomorrow night or Wednesday, it's going to be one of the two, maybe both. Maybe we'll stream on both. Can't promise it's going to be eight hours, but we're definitely going to stream on both. Thank y'all again so much for coming to hang out with me, for making this such an amazing, amazing community to to be involved in. And until the next one, keep it on the wrong side.